All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the state championships here in Appleton, Wisconsin, WSPA. We are at the uh, Fox Valley Convention Expo Exposition Center, yep. Expo. Expo Center, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we got our first matches starting off here, 1 o'clock p.m. in the B Division. Um, so if you look down at the uh, little perimeter there, you got four tables. We'll be playing on that left table. And uh, new to the event this year, if you look uh, at the facility, all new diamond tables. Beautiful. All, all brand new tops. Everything was leveled just yesterday. Really pretty. Every one of these tables is brand new. So everybody that got in here this morning got to be the first ones to play on brand new diamonds. So yeah, I very was cool. playing on it. And, man, what a, it's so cool to play on a fresh brand new diamond table. Then so. uh, why don't we give everybody an idea of what's going on this week. we got Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, Thursday, we've got mixed B nine balls starting at 1 o'clock. And then uh, mixed A nine balls starting at 3. Mixed double A ten balls starting at 6 p.m. Mixed masters ten balls starting at 6 p.m. tonight. The women's B nine ball division is starting at 6 p.m. And the women's master slash A division ten ball is also starting at 6 p.m. And that's today's lineup. And then tomorrow, we're going to start the bigger tournaments, which is the Mixed Casual 8-Ball at 2 p.m., Mixed B 8-Ball at 4 p.m., and then Mixed A 8-Ball at 7.30 p.m. And then uh, Saturday, Patrick, you want to let them know what's going on Saturday? Yeah, 12 o'clock, we got the Mixed AA 8-Ball. And then, yeah, I got it all right here. We got Saturday at 12 o'clock, Mixed Masters 8-Ball starting off. And uh, Saturday at noon, we also got the mixed seniors eight ball starting off. Missing the women's, though. The women's start at 10 a.m. Yeah, the, yeah, that's all right here. B got, eight ball. Yeah, women's eight ball B division, A division, and masters eight ball all starting at 10 a.m. for the women. Yep. So uh, lots of action going on this whole week and uh, our weekend. And looking forward to joining you guys. We're going to probably check out here for a little bit. Matches start at 1 o'clock, but we wanted to make sure everything was up and running. Yeah, we'll just leave it stream. Um, so feel free to peep on in anytime. Stay with us. We do got a m match starting here at 1 o'clock. Uh, I'll probably Wait, hop in the booth for a little does bit. Does it actually still work? Hold on. If anybody's uh, watching, just peep in here. Oh, it just does. Say hi. It does work. Soundboards a go. Just say hi. Yeah, John look at that. Field joining us. You can see those two guys right there. They're chomping at the bits to start their match here. Oh, yeah. So exciting Ready stuff. We'll just run everybody through the camera views real quick. Oh, we got a real good view of our opponent coming up here, but uh, there's our dual view. Also, got our end view camera. And then into our overhead and side view. This gives a, an ugly shot of the booth. No oh, man, who are those two guys? I don't know. Booth only. We're going to make it even worse. <laughs> Holy cow. Ah. It's like a close-up. And then obviously back to this beautiful uh, view there. So, Got a few people chiming in. What's going on in the chat? Troy, hello from Arizona. How are you doing, bud? Uh, so we will be coming live to this. I'm going to put this thing on. Uh, Troy's probably looking for his buddy Kyle. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to ask him if he actually uh, is friends with Kyle. Kyle Drake. He'll be Kyle here in the booth Drake, soon. Yeah. Coming up. But all right, so uh, we got some stuff to do, but we'll be back. Ryan, yes, the brackets are on CompuSport. So. Do you know, do they got the eight ball up yet? I don't know if they posted the eight ball brackets. I'm sure they did. Well, that's another thing we're actually going to try to do here, which is going to be new for the uh, streaming on WSPA, is we're going to try to actually keep uh, the audience updated with the bracket. Yeah, we'll and bring it in every so often to show you the yeah, I think that'll be really cool. updated end of it. Yeah, so I'm not seeing the eight ball brackets yet. So, yeah, Compu CompuSport is where you can go and watch this thing roll out live also, so... Wait a minute, this doesn't look like the right game. Yeah, no, they're playing, what, nine ball? Right nine off ball, the bat? Yep. Yeah, 
making some announcements over the speaker right now, letting all the uh, players know that they do got to get on the AccuSport um, AccuStat. AccuStat app. But no, CompuSport. CompuSport, Man, yeah. Screwing me up. I'm all over the place. Yeah, CompuSport, C-O-M-P-U-S-P-O-R-T. It's kind of how they know to uh, see where their match is, what time, what table. Because if you see in the uh, overhead view, there's there's about 100 tables here, wouldn't you say, 100? Yeah, I can go back. I'll go back to the whole room while we're doing this. Everybody's standing still listening to the announcements. I'm pretty confident it's close to 100 tables. It's 118 to be exact. Oh, I was close. Yeah, you were close. Yeah. I was close. Cal's peeping in. Good man. <laughs> He's obviously familiar with our soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the new favorite, of course, is. Oh, man. He hit that ball terrible. <laughs> Nobody's even shot yet. <laughs> well. I'm sure I'll need that sound bite when I start, pl- I start playing tomorrow at 7. We could probably hit that. Shat that sound bite over and over if we counted all 118 tables. Holy you cow. could probably just hit it every like 30 seconds or so and it'd be accurate. Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody in the room hit that ball terrible at that point, I think. More than likely. Oh, the golden voice of Dean Raisler. Yeah, I'm trying to like listen to what they're saying, but I can't hear anything, so. Oh, they're talking about a forfeiture of a match. If you don't show up to your table within 20 minutes, oh. you're done. Forfeit? Who the heck forfeits a match? <laughs> it happens at every level. Okay, rules. We're using CSI rules with one minor exception. A nine ball on the break. Have you ever been in a tournament where you didn't know, like, where your match was or what time, and then all of a sudden you find out you're you're uh, forfeited because you didn't show up? No. Nope. See, it happened. happened. Every tournament I go to, it seems to happen to people. Yeah. They're like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to play. It seems to be the same people all the time. Yeah. Well, that's why you get the, uh, they got the CompuSport. Did I say it right that time? CompuSport? Get the app, tells you where to go, where you're playing, <laughs> time, table. All that good stuff. So, guys, we're really pushing for subscriptions. If you do uh, subscribe, uh, number one, you'll be able to chat with us here in the chat room. Uh, We have it off so that uh, we don't get a bunch of bots coming through. Uh, But subscribe, and we really appreciate that. That's also how we keep our stream running for free is your subscriptions. Because then, guess what? YouTube pays us, and we take that money, and we donate it to our juniors over at the Mad Apple and uh, do the best we can. We even got a player out in uh, <coughs> Iowa that we support there. Uh, so we try and use that money as much as possible yeah, for the, our juniors. Junior program seems to be growing. Every Sunday I come in, it's there's a lot of a lot of youngsters in well, there. I think that I think the way that we set it up, uh, leaving some leeway for being able to make it some weeks and not make it other weeks, uh, definitely. I think has increased the volume of players overall. So it's good. Yeah. That's another thing we should let everyone know too. Um, because of the uh, WSPA tournament here this weekend, we will not be streaming King of the Hill or our King's Court matches this weekend. So yeah. we will be broadcasting all week, starting today all the way through Sunday. Well, I think we're going to step away here a few minutes while they finish up announcements and uh, be back for the match about one. Yeah, hang out. We'll be back.
All right, folks, Patrick Lynn here with you for a little while. We have started our first match. We are playing nine ball in the B division. We have Mark Wilson facing off against Derwin Hendrickson. Uh, Derwin is up right now, one to zero. And it looks like Mark is at the table on the one ball with a pretty good path to the two. So see how he negotiates the table. It looks pretty open. Um, as far as the brackets, uh, someone was asking about the brackets. Uh, let's see. Uh, Andrew asking about the brackets for eight ball. So those brackets will be posted 24 hours before the start of the first match. So should be seeing them roughly around 7 o'clock tonight, I would think. Um, since they start tomorrow. So. One nine combo, I must have missed it. Um, I was setting some stuff up, but back at the table now. Watching what's going on. He's on the three ball. Looks like he's playing the three eight here. He's got to be careful that three don't leak up to the top of the rail. Yeah, leak to the top of the rail. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble here. See what Mark can come up with. Looks like he's trying to play a little bit of a safe here. Get behind the nine. Don't think he got there. He's going to leave a shot for Derwin. It's not a give me. He's got a little bit of slice on it here. It's a missable shot. Cue ball is parked tight up on the rail. He's got a little bit, a little bit of room off the rail, but not a lot. Didn't miss it. How did he leave it? Let's take a look at the overhead. And I think he's got room to get at the three. I tried slicing the three the other way. Just going to leave a little bit of a cut here for Derwin. So those that are just joining, we are just kicking off uh, WSPA with our uh, nine ball mixed B division. We are racing to five. And uh, on the winner's side, and then on the one loss side, it'd be race to four. Have 178 entries in this division, so it's going to be a fairly deep bracket. Not as deep as the uh, mixed B eight ball, over 320 entries in that one. So Mark at the table, he has a look at the three. Should be able to pot this. And get decent shape on the four. Eric is asking if Kim Bussin has played yet. Well, we just started, so... I don't think there's any matches complete as of yet. Um, you guys can always go to the uh, CompuSport app. If you download that on the phone, you can get all the brackets. Uh, minus the eight ball brackets, they're not out yet, but pretty much all the nine and 10 ball brackets are out. Um, and you can follow along. We will try to update you folks at home when we get a little bit deeper. Right now we're in round one. Um, and we'll try to let you know who's still in 
Uh, you know, it's going to be our first time doing that this year and maybe even try to screenshot a few of the brackets and put them in there at, uh, on the screen for you folks. So Johnny is asking, what skill level is the tournament here? It's all skill levels. So we got uh, B division, we got A, 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 and we got Masters. Um, the Masters division is, you know, probably obviously 600 or above. We got 700 level players. Uh, we do have some semi-pros playing in that event. But it's all levels, and they're all different divisions. So, for example, the B division, nine ball, there's 178 in, uh, entries. As you go up to the A division, the entries go down. There's 104 entries. Uh, when you get to AA, there's – well, we're not – doing AA for nine ball I don't think we're doing mixed AA for 10 ball with 48 entries and then the mixed masters for 10 ball is 45 Mike check saying hello what's up Mike So right now what you're watching, uh, Johnny, is the uh, mixed B division for nine ball. So we're uh, B division right now on the stream currently. Ooh, rough miss by Mark there on the nine ball. is going to leave it sitting pretty for Derwin and uh, drops this. He's going to go up two to nothing in a race to five. So, yeah, if you look on our scoreboard, you can see uh, what the race is to and what division. It says B, race to five. And if you look uh, on the outer portion of the scoreboard, you'll see what the score is. And uh, – All right, Johnny is asking, when will the Masters start? Let's see here. Uh, the Masters 10 ball will start tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, and the AA division will also start at 6 o'clock, AA 10 ball. Uh, it's a pretty high-level pool there as well. And then the women's Masters for 10 ball will start at 6 o'clock tonight as well. And then for eight ball, mixed masters will start Saturday at noon. And the women's masters will start at 10 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> Not friendly. What are you talking about? There you go. Andrew said he'll be your friend. All right. Derwin at the table. Looks like he's on the one ball. He's got to be careful he doesn't get hooked behind the three here. Well, thought he was going to play that in the side and float up a little bit, but elected to go up in the corner. A little bit of a tie up there. Looks like uh, the seven six. So really, only one issue to work out on the table. Not a very easy shot on the one here. I like back cutting it all the way up in the corner. You could try to float it past the six. A little risky.
I think that's what he's actually going to try. Yes, like Mike Clark said, please hit the like button, um, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Um, it helps us out. We run this stream for free. It's free pool to watch. Uh, we just actually just started streaming right now, so it's kind of like our test run for the state tournament. I'm kind of by myself in the booth, which is uh, not very easy to do. It's kind of hard to talk to yourself. Generally, we have two people in the booth, and uh, I'm sure I'll have someone joining me later at some point today uh, we may just uh, stream a match with no commentary um, until we get down to the you know the final tables the final brackets and we'll have some more commentary hopefully better than just me sitting here running my mouth all right derwin coming off the rail but getting hooked behind the three. So we have a decision to make here. I mean, he could, if he does jump, he could jump. There's enough, looks like there's enough room to jump. There is a kick shot available. Ain't a whole, ain't a whole lot of good that can come from kicking at the ball other than just getting a good hit. And the real problem is the table is going to be pretty open after the shot unless he makes the ball. So he's going to go for the one rail kick here. We got a good hit. And he didn't leave it too bad. I mean, this is a, a, a tester for Mark. He makes his three ball. He'll be in good shape to run the rack out. You got to bear down and make this shot. Everything else is wide open. Okay, good good stroke there. Re rest of this rack should be able to mop it up. Well, thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. I hope your uh, ball and hand safeties are pretty good. <laughs> Oh, he came a little high, but he'll be okay. Might be a little tricky getting from the eight to the nine. We'll see where he uh, leaves a cue ball here. Could be a little tricky. I like kind of coming three rails around here. You got to put a stroke on it. Looks like what he's doing, he's loading up with some top here. One, two, three. Look at that shot. Do a replay on that shot. See if our replays are working here. Because that'll be the shot that gave him the win. Yes, and our replays are working. So he makes this. We'll take another look at that shot. All right, so Mark gets on the board. Let's uh, take a look at the shot that got him there. Taking this three with a bit of top, coming three rails around. One, two, and three. Actually, four. He kind of bumps this rail, too. So nice shot there by Mark getting on the board. We want to take a look at the venue here. This is it. 118 brand new diamond tables at Wisconsin State Pool Championships here in Appleton, Wisconsin.
Andrew said, you left me out on Tuesday with one, and I forgot already. So we, you, were, you were the one I was playing Tuesday night? Yeah, I don't got a very good memory. Tuesday night, that was with uh, Andy and my good friend Tom. Um, yeah, because I play in three leagues. I just I just played, uh, well, what day is today? Today is Thursday, so I played Tuesday, Monday morning, and last Thursday. Was it Tuesday night? So, yeah, I don't, I don't remember too. Who did we play? I forget. <laughs> my my long term memory is okay. My sh- anything that happened in the last few days or the last hour, um, I probably don't remember. I know I did have a break and run on Tuesday. I remember that. Those are always fun. Wait a second. I think I know what shot you're talking about now. It was up on the side rail. And the ball rocked out of position for you, and I was able to get out. Is that the one you're talking about? I think I remember that now. Yeah, Andrew, it's coming back to me now. I am I know what safe you're talking about. This, I think, uh, yeah, the, the cue ball... It kind of a ghost or something touched the ball and kind of it didn't work out and I was able to get out. I know what you're talking about now. All right, Mark taking a look at the table here. He's got the three. There might be a four-seven combo in his future. Or wait, do we got the t? No, the TV balls are not on the table, so that is the orange five. Yeah, four seven is going to be tough. Might want to play safe here. I think you play a pretty good safe here and get behind the seven if he wants. Hey, sub kiss, what's up? Welcome to the Wisconsin State Pool Championships. So for those of you that are joining, um, we are streaming all weekend here. So our King of the Hill match is on Friday. Uh, That will not be going along with our King Court matches on Sundays will not be going. We will be here at WISPA all weekend long from now until Sunday. So got nothing but pool coming at you for a few straight days. Um, Some with commentary, some without. I'm going to try and stay in the boot as much as possible. Um, I will be playing starting tomorrow, and uh, we're going to try to get some guest commentators in here maybe. I know when I watch pool, I I like listening to somebody, you know, jacked or jaw in the background. Seems to be a little nicer. I mean, you can put, you can put me on mute if, uh, if you want. <laughs> it might help. All right, Derwin looks a little hooked on the five. No easy way there. He could come two rails at it, or possibly on the right rail. He could flirt with it and try and get away with one, but I don't think that's an option. And the one rail off the left, that's going to be a tough hit as well. I kind of like going two rails at it here. He's going to go one rail at it. Uh, and he missed it. So that will be ball in hand for Mark. And again, we are playing nine ball in our B division. So as far as divisions go, we got B, A, A, A and Masters Divisions. Kind of an interesting starting place here. Looks like he's just going to try to roll forward. 
I think I'd be playing this five in the upper right corner there. But that's going to work out really good for him. He's got to figure out where he wants to play that nine ball. If he could, I'd like playing that nine in the lower left corner. So find a place to get on the seven where you can get up there. See what he decides to do here. Oh, he got a nice push on the nine. So now the nine goes in the side. It's a little more difficult on the seven here. And this is actually going to going to have to come back and forth with the cue ball here a few times. Uh, he, he needed to put more inside spin, but he's got it down in the corner, so that's going to work out really good for him too. All right, Mark ties things up at two apiece in this race to five. Uh, Carl is asking, how do you determine who plays on the stream table? We really don't. Um, the directors here decide they it's kind of randomly chosen at this point. We're really early in the brackets, but as we get towards the end of a bracket, I'm sure we'll have like the second, third, and first place matches, you know, streamed on the table. We'll get some uh, higher level matches, um, AA and Masters on the table. But uh, right now, we just started. Uh, we're in round one of uh, the B division. The mixed nine ball A division will start at 3 o'clock. And then uh, tonight at 6, we got the AA division starting uh, with 10 ball. And then the Masters at 6 o'clock, 10 ball starting as well. Eric asking if I can post a link to the bracket. Um, the brackets, actually, the best way to look at the bracket is going to be through an app. Um, if you go on your phone or your smart tablet or whatever device you got and type in CompuSport, download that app, uh, and then you just bring up the WSPA 2023 State Championships, and you can find all the brackets there. It takes a little getting used to to kind of navigate the app. But once you figure it out, it's pretty easy. Uh, the eight ball brackets are not posted. All the other brackets are. And it But Eric, uh, I'll try to. I will try to post a link in the chat here, if I can, to uh, CompuSport. Um, I'll try to do that here in a little bit. If you want to hang out, uh, give me a chance to look it up and everything. Um, Andrew's asking, are there, are, are there booths here? Uh, venue, you know, booths. Uh, we have Jacoby Custom Cues. So if you need some cue work or want to purchase a new cue, buy a new case, they got a very nice booth set up here. We also have um, the Wisconsin Billiards Hall of Fame ran by John Kramer. He's got a, a pretty good booth down here. Uh, Nate Mindum with Cue It Up, um, one of our sponsors. He's down here. He's got some tome chalk, some tome gloves, uh, some cool apparel. So he's got a, a nice-looking booth as well. And then uh, the Magnet ran by Kendall. He's got a T-shirt uh, uh, printing press set up. So if you want a T-shirt, you can get a design on it. Um, really cool. Uh, get some good, uh, cool gear there. I think Brad is running that from um, Cutthroat Q Sports. And no, there, Subkiss, there is no nine foot tables here. This is all bar box, seven foot diamonds.
Mike Smith asking, when are they going to release the eight ball bracket? So what I was told by the tournament director is that they will be released 24 hours prior to the start. And if I'm looking at eight ball, uh, mixed casuals starting uh, Friday, uh, two o'clock. So sometime this afternoon for that. Four o'clock mixed B uh, is Friday. So sometime around four. And then 7.30 tonight um, is mixed A, eight ball. And then Saturday, AA, uh, eight ball. So probably tomorrow for the AA bracket. So pretty much 24 hours prior to the start of the matches when those brackets will be released. Yeah, Andrew, stop by. Um, Stop by the booth and say, what's up? I'm going to be here pretty much all day, so. Wait a second. You're watching the stream at work? I want your job. What do you do? I wish I could watch pool at work. It's got to be a cool job. All right. Mark's starting to get back in the groove. Um, he was down 0-2. Let's come back to tie things up on the four ball with a good path to the five. Five to the six could get a little tricky here. And uh, Eric, I'm looking up the link right now for CompuSport. Oh, you have us up on the showroom? That's pretty cool. What uh what showroom? Like what uh like uh car dealership or like uh where where are you streaming us at? I'd like to know. Andrew Bundy, yeah, I know who you are. I've met you quite a few times. Okay, Eric, there you go. I just posted a link in there for CompuSport. Um, that'll take you to the web page, but I highly recommend the, that you download the app on your phone. It's a little bit easier to use and navigate. You guys can get all the brackets there at CompuSport. I just posted it in the chat. Mark, two shots away from taking the lead for the first time. Just got to find a way to make this eight ball here. Oh, I just hit it a little off. And he is going to leave a shot here for Derwin. This is definitely makeable and pretty natural to get on the nine, too. Just got to float over to the right side of the rail. 
Well, that's if he plays it all the way up to the left is where I'd play it. He's going to play it all the way up to the right. I think that was going to be a little tougher. You got to make that one. So pretty easy eight in the side here. Might want to follow it, get that cue ball down the table to play a nine in the side. Should be pretty natural. Nothing, nothing funny about this shot. Other than it is on the rail, so it kind of makes it tough. And looks like he lost a little control of the speed there. That's going to put him on the 50-yard line with this one. Uh, he is able to cut this down, but you got to watch the scratch in the cross side, I think. He just went for the bank. And he's going to leave Mark dead in here. And this is to take the lead for the first time. Drains it. So again, I'd like to welcome everybody. Appreciate you guys joining us at WSPA here. We are at the Fox Valley or yeah, Fox Cities Expo Center in Appleton, Wisconsin. And we are going to be live all weekend. Thursday running all the way through Sunday. So if you guys want to like, share. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you subscribe, you're able to chat in our chat room. So what I can do at home is kind of show you folks how the brackets look. Uh, I'll pull one of the brackets up right now, and I'll try to transfer it in for you all, as long as I don't mess it up. Brian said he just racked a number order. I wasn't even paying attention. I was actually trying to bring up the bracket on my phone. Um, yeah, I don't think that's even legal. It's probably falls under pattern rack pattern racking, I would assume. But uh, I didn't catch it. So the one thing on the break here, the nine ball will count if it goes unless it goes into the two pockets up by the rack. So well, I was going to be ball in hand there for Derwin.
Yeah, if you guys are just talking about the rack, uh, one and nine are the only thing that matters. Um, there might be a rule about putting the two in the back. I don't know if that rule is being applied here. But other than that, the balls should be random. They should not be in any type of order. Subkiss, you say, you're saying you chat with the Filipino players over there in the Philippines. Um, do you speak Tagalog or are they speak in English? I mean, how are you communicating? I'm assuming they, the people you're talking to are speaking English. All right, sorry, folks. I'm messing around my phone trying to figure out how to drop in the brackets. It's going to take me a little more figuring out um, just to show you what they look like if you're uh, on Compu Sports. Rick White, what's going on? How you doing? All right, so it looked like ap after game two, it's been all Mark. He's been on a 4-0 tear um, in this race to five. And, again, we're in the first round of the mixed B division here at the WSPACA tournament. What's up, Kiss? Appreciate that. Getting our name out there.
Well, that'll wrap things up, folks. Looks like Mark takes down our first game. And, uh, I'm going to sign off here for a little bit, but we're going to keep the stream running. I'm going to take it to the, uh, the overhead view of the whole room. You guys can take a look at uh, what the tournament looks like. And I'm sure we'll be back shortly with another match. I'll let you know what's going on. Um, in the meantime, I'll try to find a way to bring up the brackets, things like that. But uh, hang out with us. We're going to be here all day, all night. Um, we'll try to update you on the tournament, what round we're in, and uh, maybe get uh, some of the brackets actually posted up here. But they will have to be posted in multiple layers because the bracket is so long it would never even fit on the screen unless we shrunk it down to the size where he wouldn't be able to read it. But um, we'll be here, so stay tuned. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, what did I miss? Uh, match is not over. I guess the nine ball was still on it. I thought the match was over. But I'm back. <laughs> My bad, guys. Uh, still trying to get organized here. It's our, uh, our first uh, stream here at the tournament. And all by myself, I was uh, messing around with some of the stuff, trying to figure out how to drop something in. But yeah, Mark still at the table. Score is four to three. So Derwin got a, a game in there. All right, can you see enough of the six here? Let's see. Got a hit, but didn't really get safe. I think uh, Derwin should be able to play safe here, get that cue ball hiding behind the nine. Derwin gets another win. We are Hill Hill, race to five.
Well, it looks like the players are having a conversation about something. Don't know what they're chattering about. It is, looks like they're shaking hands. So come to an agreement on something. I don't know what the discussion was about. So if y'all want to take a look, uh, that's what the brackets should look like on Compu Sports. That's part of our B Division nine ball bracket. Um, if you look in the middle, that'll be uh, round zero basically. As you go to the right and move on, that'll be the winner side. And then to the left is the one loss side. Um, can't show the whole bracket on there. But those are just a few of the names uh, on the top half of the bracket. Um, but again, it is a long bracket, uh, 178 entries in this one. So back to the game. So I did figure out how to get the bracket on, so that's kind of cool. All right, Mark getting on the three and should be pretty natural to get to the four here. Doesn't want to hit it too hard. He's going to get pretty close to his work. Got Mr. Kyle Drake coming into the booth. Been MIA all day. Be nice to finally have someone here. What's up, Kiss? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of entries. This is just a mixed B-ball for nine division. You know, for every division, there's different entries. Like uh, eight-ball B-divisions, 320 entries. So, I mean, altogether, I mean, there's there's hundreds of players uh, in different divisions here. We've got over 100 tables, so it's a pretty big event, one of the biggest in Wisconsin, if not the biggest. Um, I'm guessing it's probably one of the largest events. What's up, guys? We got myself, Kyle Drake, jumping in the booth here. Yeah, man. Where you been? Where you been hiding? I've been working. I got. I had work this morning. Oh, okay. What time did you guys get started? Uh, we just went live at 1 o'clock. It's our first match, so kind of like a test run. Um, we got Mark Wilson and we got Derwin Hendrickson. Uh, racing to five and nine ball rotation, which is your game. There we go. And uh, we're Hill Hill right now, four apiece. Got a good hit on the four. And where's that nine ball going? He almost double kissed that four ball in. Well, I'll tell you what. If he can get a good angle on this five, he should be able to get out. Yeah, this is a key shot of the rack, huh? I would think so. That looks pretty good. <laughs> That's going to be really good. The key to this is uh, just keeping the five in front of the pocket if he can. He's got to keep this five in front of the pocket. Don't let it leak out. It's going to leak out. Yeah, he still might have a cut on this ball, but it's a lot thinner than he would have liked. Yeah, and you know what? This cut actually works out for him because it's kind of natural to get to the six, just come two rails, Yeah, and, and it'll feed into the six. So he should be fine. He's looking at it like he's in a lot of trouble, but he really just has to cut it. But speed, you know, you got to watch because you are thinning it. That cue ball could be tough to control here. So, And you also, it is thin enough to where you want to put a little outside spin to avoid the nine. Avoid the nine come around those balls. 
Oh, he hit it too thick. Way too yeah. thick. Yeah, and see, I think uh, even if he did make that ball, because he didn't put any spin on it, he might have clipped the nine there and ended up over by the uh, right side rail. Uh, so let's see. We got Derwin to the table here. And uh, pretty easy path to the six. I think you just draw it down. I think the toughest shot in this rack is going to be from six to the seven, which should not be an issue as long as he gets this cue ball in the right spot. Get off the rail. Yeah, he probably wanted to come down a little more if he could have. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. I don't think he caught the uh, underside of the bottom of the ball like he wanted to. All right, he got a good stroke there on the six, but where is he going to end up on the seven? It's pretty good. Yeah, it's good enough to get out. He's just got to make a good shot here. Right, and that's because of he uh, he lost shape a little bit on that six, so he kind of just had to take that six and, uh, you know, take what he can get on the seven. So this it's, is a big shot. It's a fun shot, too. I like it just is. drawing this off to the side rail and coming back out. You got to put a lot of draw on it, though. And he overcut it because he tried to go uh, around the nine ball instead of that draw shot. Yeah, I like that draw to the rail. Yeah, yeah. and that left that inside spin, it would have been right side. That right hand spin is going to throw that ball overcut. It's going to make you overcut that ball. All right. One good shot to take this match down. He's got to get good on the nine. That's and there it is. Fine. All right. So it looks like our first match. This is our first match. This is our very first match at WSPA. And it goes hill, hill. All right. Mark Here we go. Wilson. Both players shaking hands. Let's take a look at the shot that got him the win. I think it was uh, this draw shot that got him nice on the nine. But congratulations to Mark. Derwin's still in it, though. He'll be going over to the uh, one loss side. Nice little draw shot there to get on the nine. Um, are we playing eight ball, nine ball, and ten ball this weekend? So I'll go over that here in a second. So for those of you that are uh, joining with us, uh, I'm going to go over kind of the schedule of what it looks like. So today, Thursday, 1 o'clock was start time for mixed B division nine ball, 178 entries. And then starting today at 3 o'clock is our mixed A division nine ball. 104 entries and Thursday today six o'clock tonight we got our AA division so getting up there in skill level have 48 entries and then also at six o'clock we have our mixed masters 10 ball so that is going to be your premier I think uh, division as far as uh, rotation going um, we got 45 entries there and then the women's B division for nine ball starts at 6 o'clock as well tonight. And the women's master's 10 ball starts at 6 o'clock as well, 26 entries for that. Now tomorrow we have uh, 2 o'clock, the mixed casual 8 ball, uh, 71 entries. And the big one is the mixed B division 8 ball starting at 4 o'clock tomorrow, 320 entries and then also tomorrow night is the mixed A division, eight ball, 188 entries. So that's a pretty big field for that division. Then uh, Saturday, we're moving on. We got uh, 12 o'clock noon. We have the AA eight ball, um, 52 entries. Also at 12 o'clock, we got the Masters eight ball, 56 entries. Uh, also Saturday, 12 o'clock, we have the Mixed Seniors 8-Ball. Those guys are always fun to watch. They've been playing a long time. Um, and you got A, 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 and B, so it's all mixed. Uh, 30 entries in that. And then Saturday, we got Women's 8-Ball starting at 10 o'clock, 80 entries there. And then Saturday, 10 o'clock, Women's 8-Ball A Division, 49 entries, and then also starting at 10 o'clock on Saturday is the Women's Masters 8-Ball, 
30 entries. So you can see we got a lot of pool coming this weekend. Um, stay tuned. We're going to bring as much as we can. Um, in between matches, we're going to step out, take a break. Uh, we may not commentate all the matches, but we, we'll be in the booth as much as possible. Um, if I'm not here by myself, Kyle will be here or we'll be here together. Um, we also have some other commentators coming in, peeping on in. So, Yeah, and if you guys want to go ahead and peep on in yourself, man, this is a sight to see. I mean, look at all those tables, you know. Great environment out here. But um, Okay, guys, um, I'm going to step out, take a break, and uh, we'll be back soon.
All right, folks, we already got our second match going. Um, looks like we got Nick King, who's at the table right now, uh, facing off against Robert Leonard, and we're still in the uh, nine ball mixed B division, and we're at WSPA in the Fox Valley Expo Center in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm Patrick Lynn, and in the booth with me is Kyle Drake. Well, I can't even hear you. Where are you at? My mic was off. Now oh, it's on. What's up, guys? There you are. So, yeah, we got uh, Nick at the table right now. We're 0-0. Zero, zero. They, just, they just broke, just started a match here. Um, Not sure where uh, Nick is from, but I know he knows Randy. I was just talking with Randy. Um, Says he plays with him, and I know they play up at one shot uh, in the uh, Owen Withy area. I believe it's in Owen. Really nice place they got up there. They run some tournaments. Yeah, so it looks like he just had the edge of that three. Not much to do there. Probably tried to play safe behind the six, but let it creep out a little bit because of how thin out it was. So we got Robert at the table. Nice shot there in the three. Makes its way nicely to the four. You should be able to just draw back nice and easy, get on the five. Wow, no issues at all on this table. Should be out. Yeah, that was really a nice touch oh, on like the three ball. Looks like he's following this for some reason. Yeah, I kind of would have wanted to draw. Yeah, that's one of those real touchy shots if you're going to hit it like that with no draw. you got to put a lot of outside to hold the angle. Yeah. And that throws that ball off way way off of like a clean hit he didn't leave nick much of a shot i mean he's gonna be able to get a hit but where's the cue ball going probably see him arrange the furniture a little differently yeah left a pretty good table here for robert yeah but this is the same kind of shot he just missed on that four ball so we'll see how he hits this one There, see, he didn't have to really worry about holding the cue ball too much that time, so he hit it with a little bit more of a center ball, got a real nice clean stroke through that. Ended up real good on the five, and now he's looking to get out. Let's see if he puts a little uh, inside right-hand English on this shot. Get a feel for his style. It looks like he's not going to worry about it. Yep, and see that's why I was interested to see if he was going to play right hand side to get a little a little cuter on the eight ball. A lot of people will just take the cut, or and a lot of people will also just try to get real nice, which makes that six ball a little tougher. And uh, he's got a cut on the eight here. Yeah, Ooh. it was never easy, but he's also not going to. Well, you know what? That ended up with a pretty good angle to get back to the nine. So we'll see uh, how hey, look, Nick holds his nerve. Yeah, a little bit of distance on this shot. I mean, this is really going to test your nerve, like you said. Um, see where your stroke's at. But, yeah, you're right. Natural to get back to the nine. Yeah, you hit that real good. Hit that really, really nice. Yeah, he even came two rails to kill the kill ball, cue ball a little more. So if that's any uh, show of how he's going to play for the rest of the match, Robert's yeah. going to have to bring his A game. Let's see. Uh, nice replay on the 8 to the 9, and then the 9 for the victory here. Let's take one more look. Uh, I think we missed the, the shot from the 8 to the 9. Hit it really nice here. Set up the win. Get him on the board. Sometimes yeah. we say that's kind of the hardest one to get is the first win. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And uh, last time we were in the booth, I was with Ray. Uh, he was talking about how the first one's probably harder than the last one as well. Yeah, I you know, I, I heard you guys talking about it, and I used to think, you know, maybe the last one is the toughest, but I think I kind of switched my opinion. Um, 
the first one is probably because that's the one where you got to get rid of all the pressure. Like, you know, you yep. could you could be down by two, and then it just keeps, oh, man, when am I going to get out? When am I going to get a win? Um, once you get that first one, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Right. Start stringing some things together. So, yeah, I think the first win is probably the toughest, followed by the last. Right, yep. And then all that middle work is just work. All right. All right, so let's take a look at our overhead view. Doesn't look like he has a look at the one. Well, he's got a look at it, but not a good home for it. Yeah, he can't he can't see enough of that one ball to make it in that uh that top. Yeah, I think he just kind of banked the one back behind the uh 85 or towards that direction and kind of take what you get, try and play safe here somehow. Or you could actually play the cue ball, thin the one and get the cue ball up there behind the 5. Yeah, I like that one better. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could probably get the cue ball all the way in that window up there. Just got to control it nice off the one here. I think he went for the bank. Yeah, he did go for the bank. That was a tough shot. He almost got it lucky with that nine ball, too. He was flaring with the right side. And flukes count nine ball. That would have been two nine balls in a row. Uh, apparently, they don't count on the break, though, correct? It counts on the break as long as it does not go in the two pockets by where you rack. So okay. the bottom of the table yeah. or the top of the table if you're looking at the screen. So those two top pockets, the nine ball goes there on the break. Then it spots. It gets spotted or possible re-rack. Um, but, yeah, if it goes in the side of the two bottom pockets there, it's it's good. That's it's, a dinger. That, that's a game winner. What's going on with the one four nine? It's looking weird. Let's take a look at the overhead. See, is there room for that nine to go in? I don't think there is. Yeah, and even if there is, it's it's really risky, you know. If you hit it light enough speed to drop it in the side, it, if you don't make it, obviously it's not going anywhere, hanging over the pocket. So he'll probably play the other side of the one ball. Maybe get a double kiss on the nine. No, he flew at it. Yeah, he definitely took a shot at it. But... I probably would have tried to carry him into that ball, nine ball and see what happened. Cause sometimes you can create a little distance with the one ball yeah. and uh, double kiss that nine ball in or double kiss it to where the cue ball jumps down to the other end of the table. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Subkiss is still with us. Uh, I haven't, sorry, Subkiss. I have not uh, <laughs> caught up with all the chats here. So. Ooh. He went for the cross corner bank, that back cut bank. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, lost the cue ball on the side. She was asking about, yeah, put the nine ball back on the break because it, it went in one of the upper two pockets by where you rack. So if it went on the side or the lower two pockets as you're looking at the screen, it would have been a good, would have been a game winner. Nine ball break. All right, so Nick starting off with ball in hand here. And a pretty good looking table. We got a little funny angle on the four here, but it still floats over nicely for the five. Yeah, you know what? He's jacked up with a nine, which is going to be the big issue of this shot. You, you can let the cue ball get away because you're jacked up. You got to put a little bit more power into it. Mm. He's going to miss it, but he's not going to sell out anything. We're probably going to see a fly at the nine here. That's all he's got, really. Might play a two-way shot uh, trying to park the cue ball behind the seven ball at the same time, which is probably a pretty good option. Or he could end up playing the safe, but it looks like he's flying. Nine ball is a pretty big ball when it's just off the rail like that. And oh, caught the point. Was he going for the 4-9? It looked like it, yeah. It looked like he was trying to play a little bit of a rail first with the 4-ball. A 
he ran into the six, but it did not hold enough for the five. So we'll probably see how aggressive this game is. See if he wants to bank it in the side or try to play it safe behind the eight. He's lining up that cross side right here. And it'll be interesting to see where the cue ball ends up because he could run into the nine or if he gets between the six, eight with the cue ball, it's going to run up table and play pretty difficult. Yeah, not a not a very easy cut to the side, but it is there, and it does lead to the six. Kind of two rails if you draw it. If you do top or middle, you might get really close to the six here. Yeah, and with like a low outside ball, you can hit that ball a little thicker. See, he he could have put a little more outside on that, and uh, came two rails short to the other side of the six, so that he doesn't play short side. And he would have made that five ball with a little more throw, but it was a good it was a good attempt. Probably just low roll this, and you'll be good enough on the six to get to the seven. Yeah, that's that's perfect. This is fine. Yep. Yeah, and everything else is pretty much connected outs here. Six to seven, seven to the eight, eight to the nine. Nothing, nothing tricky about this. Yeah, when the balls lay like this, I always well, just like to uh, he yeah. Did get a little straight here. And he got a little long. Yeah. I like to say I always like to get back to the middle of the table when the balls are laying like this. Yeah, he would have won a little more angle on the seven. That's a good stroke. That's about as good as you could have hit that ball. He could have drew it two, back, two feet back and ended up dead straight on the eight. But so this is an interesting shot here. This is. Because you could, you could almost run into the nine here if you wanted to. Otherwise, nope. you got to find a way to get on the nine. I'm thinking that the natural path is kind of wanting to go to the nine, so. The natural path, yeah. See if he can see what he does here to avoid it. And there he goes. Yeah, right to the nine. With with when that, I mean, he hit it at a pretty good speed, right? He just he really got a little unfortunate with where that kiss ended up because anywhere else that kiss happens, you uh, you kind of end up pretty good. The weird part, even if he tried to avoid it, like draw and come yeah. high on it. Then he leaks out, and he doesn't have a. He's got a bank shot anyway, so there wasn't much he could could have really done with that weird angle to get good on. I'm I'm sure there was, but it would have just been tough. Yeah, and a I, tough shot. I did like his decision to go into it, um, but that's when you need to worry about how fast you're going to go into it. You know, if uh, you hit that ball any harder, that cue ball kind of launches at that speed. Even if you double kiss him straight like that. You might get a little favorable roll out of the cue ball with a little more speed. And so if I know I'm going into the ball, I like to separate the balls. But he got a real a real unfortunate double kiss angle there because there's a lot of different ways that ball could have double kissed. And like I said, he would have been fine. So, And that's unfortunate because that's going to tie the match. So, yeah, we're playing five ball or <laughs> nine ball race to five. I said playing five ball. I'm down to play some five ball. Let's do it. Hey, I actually just saw, they were talking about this uh, speed eight ball. Have you ever played speed eight ball? No, I have not. So it's uh, four stripes and four solids and an eight ball. And it's basically eight ball rules. You're just playing with less balls. So it basically makes the game where you're just running out really and, fast each game. Oh, you know what? I think I have. And that's a, you rack them like a nine ball rack. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there was one guy back in Arizona who really liked to play that. It's, it's, it's fun because it's quick. Right. You know? It's super quick. You only got to make four balls to run out. So, folks, if you're joining us, uh, let us know where you're watching from. Get a shout-out in the chat. We are located in Appleton, Wisconsin at the Fox Valley Expo Center. And uh, this is WSPA, Wisconsin State Pool Tournament. All right, so it looked like he played aggressive with that one ball, but left a cue, go cue ball good, and the one ball kind of ran into traffic to uh, end up behind this cluster here, so he's going to end up pretty fortunate there. And he's busting out the jump cue. So if you guys look down at the bottom left table, um, that's our streaming table. We got four tables within the perimeter, pretty much where all the final games will be played is uh, in this little arena. Um, 
And it looks like uh, Nick is getting ready to take a jump shot. He's really got to clear a lot of distance here. Yeah, he could lose the cue ball here off the table if he's not careful. Wow. How well, about that? Yeah, he might, might not want to put it away. This one's probably got a little too much distance, to be honest with you, but... I mean, do we look at that one again? I think we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Let's check it out. Look at how much distance he had to clear and keep the ball on the table. That's not an easy shot right there, folks. Just drilled it. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to try it again either. He yeah, didn't get much love. He did get a good hit on the two. Yeah, oh, he's he going to end up real guys. He fluked the ball in. Oh, well, that's so, unfortunate then. Yeah, so still shooting is... Uh, one of my favorite players, Alex Peggy Lyon, would say, still shooting, still shooting. <laughs> <laughs> like he doesn't care where he's at on the table yep. as long as he's at the table. Still got something to do about it, you know, that that's the thing. Looks like he might hit another jump shot here. Andrew Bundy, what's up, man? Andrew's watching. He's at work probably. He might stop by later on. Um is there a practice room here? There's not a practice room, but there are tables that are probably free to warm up on. Um, how you find where they're at, I guess. You just look and see. Is anybody playing there? Oh, we got Randy peeping on in here. All right, so he's going to uh, go ahead and hit this jump shot. They had to go get a ref to double check the hit. And he he had got a good hit, and he kind of <laughs> got away with it. Randy there, peeping on in here, trying to figure out how the stream works. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, so he was watching from like twenty minutes, thirty minutes ago, and he's like, "Hey, I'm not seeing what you guys are," and I'm like, "You got to go live." Uh -huh. So yeah, if you guys look on YouTube, if you're watching. You know, there's a live button, or you can rewind, you know, um, get up to speed with the match. All right, and uh, we had Robert playing his safety there. He kind of caught that two ball a little thicker. It looked like he wanted to go, like, two rails behind the nine with the cue ball and got too much of the two ball and unfortunately scratched there in the bottom right. And now we got... Nick back to the table. He needs to decide where he needs where he wants to play this three ball. If he's going to draw it straight back, play it in the top right. It does have a cut to the top left, but that's tough, tough shape, tough to get back to your next ball. See, yeah, uh, I like. I mean, I like the draw play, right? But uh, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, now he's probably running into the six here to stop the cue ball. Yep. Or, yeah, you can play the four on the side, so that works really well, too. But yeah, now the, the six is in a funny spot for him. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's real straight on this four ball, so he can play the six in the opposite side if he wants and roll through this four ball a little bit. Do yeah, you think he can roll up past it? Yeah. Without scratching. He looks straight. Let's see if he can do it. A little bit of right. Yo, no, he doesn't. He came out of, he came out of it okay. He's going to have a cut. Do you try? Do you try to run into the seven here? Or do you avoid it? Well, uh, that depends on how hard I want to hit it. If I want to hit it, kind actually, of float it in, then I'm okay with. Yeah, he's uh, gonna draw right out of it. Oh, and he's good right in the side. Just a stop shot or uh, roll, roll forward here a little bit. Yeah, you want to be careful hitting it with any speed in those sides. That's when you start yep. kind of closing the pocket up. And so he'll just roll that ball in, and he still oh, catches no. the side. He hung it. Yeah, that's, that's – uh, those shots look a lot easier than they really are after you get down on them. I know I have a lot of trouble with them. You call that selling the farm on the stream. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, <laughs> Bray was talking on the stream the other day, like, sold the farm, sold the kids, <laughs> sold the car. <laughs> yep. Sleeping outside. Yeah. Yeah, there ain't no getting back to the table after leaving one in the jaws like that. Robert's got this straight in nine ball. That's going to be 2-1, Mr. Leonard. 
in a race to five. So these fairly quick matches here, you don't want to get too far behind too early. Yeah, so Cal's asking, uh, do we have a two-second delay on the right side? So that's the way our stream works. Um, we have a few different views. Um, like we could, we could just set it up here um, from the end view, you know, watch the break. We have our overhead view like so. Um, we also have a we have one side view. Looks just like such. And then this is like I think our bread and butter. My favorite way to watch pool is, you know, with a, a break view. And then on the right-hand side, you have an overhead view, which is a two-second delay. So basically every shot you watch on the left side, you're getting an re instant replay two seconds later from an overhead view. And you can also look at the table from a different perspective. And that's the thing about watching pool or even commentating on it. You'll never see the table like you will if you're at the table. So we can look at shots and kind of predict what they're going to do or what they could do. But it's really hard to judge what the angles are unless you're actually at the uh, table or you have like a thousand camera angles. So we'll watch the break from the side here. And then we'll go into our overhead view. I don't think I saw a ball drop. No, it doesn't look like it. He got a pretty good pop on it. Uh, lost the cue ball. Cue ball is getting kicked around a little bit as well. He's going to give up a good cut on the one with the two ball pretty much hanging. You do want to be mindful of your angle that you're coming up with this two ball so that you don't run into the eight. Okay, hey, that's a good point. Um, Brian Smith has just pointed out something. I didn't. That's not how it's supposed to be. So our overhead view is actually ahead by two seconds. It should be the other way around. Right. So okay, I'm going to have to go find Mr. Chris G, our technical wizard, um, and he'll be able to fix that. But, yeah, generally that's how we watch the stream is, you know, take a shot on the left side, and you'll see the instant play on the overhead on the right, but it appears to be backwards right now, which is very odd. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, we're definitely going to get that fixed here shortly. It doesn't seem to be bothering Nick out here. He rolled that ball pretty sweet. He's going to end up with a good angle to come down on the five. Now, that five is pretty limited on where it can go, though. Look at that cue ball. Yep. All right, Kyle, can you hold the fourth down for a sec? I'm going to go step yeah. out and uh, see if I can take care of our little issue. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, that it was tough to uh, play shape on that five. got to determine whether you want to come into the eight ball, which the nine ball was blocking the path for that pretty, pretty heavily, or kind of go around two rails like he tried and go between the eight ball and the, and the pocket. So it was real thin, and getting good shape on that five was real important because of where that six sits. It actually is going to block the pocket a little bit instead of help the five ball go in. Uh, there's a lot of little funny kisses when the six ball isn't um, out of the pocket. It's pretty, it's pretty close to being center and pretty fairly deep in the pocket. So he's still going to have to squeeze this five ball by and not do too much with the six here. Yeah, see, he got a little thinner on the six than he wanted to because he did clip it with the five. But he's okay. He can still come two rails to the middle of the table here. And that's real nice. He's a little straight. It looks like he has enough angle to roll forward, but this is a preference shot. Your cue ball is going to travel a little less if you draw it. It does bring the side pocket into play a little more, um, but it requires a little le less of a stroke than if you were going forward. Oh, he tried to draw it. That's going to stay up, but it's going to be blocked by the nine ball. So he... I don't think he can see any of this eight ball. Robert's kind of in a tough spot here. He'll probably be kicking off the end rail one rail. Um, he could come off the side rail and try to make the eight ball in the top left pocket. And uh, if you make that, you actually got a good chance of getting off, getting to the nine as well. So.
Yeah, he hit it with some speed. He hit it with some speed, and that's going to allow Nick to have a pretty easy two-ball run here. Let's see if he plays for the nine ball in the left side pocket. Or probably the top right as soon as the eight ball. He just stopped it. This is fine. Play in the bottom left. You just got to hold your nerve. We got away from him a little bit, but it squeaked in. He likes it. He likes it. You got to take those. And uh, the thing with those is you don't let them get to you mentally. You got to make sure that you know you hit that ball good enough to make it, and that's all you needed to do. And just keep on going. So we're going to have a 2-2 two -two tie here. I think Nick won the first one. Robert won the next two. And then Nick won that last one. So we'll see Nick hit this break in the fifth rack. All right. See where he breaks from here. Pretty sure he made a ball on his first break, so he'll probably stick to what he's what's working for him so far. Fairly good pop. Cue ball got away from him a little bit. He's got to look at the one, and it it looks like it's gonna go. Oh, you know what? It looks like he actually came up dry. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's going to bring Robert to the table with a shot on the one. It was always a tough shot, and it was never guaranteed to get, uh, get to the two ball. If he uh, intended to play that thick like that he hit that really really well and played good cue ball speed with a little check to keep the cue ball down at that end of the table ended up on the end rail as well so that's real good Nick's gonna try to kick at this I was thinking he would go around it two rails and he ends up making it in the side it was a great shot it was a good kick. I think even if he misses that, he's not selling out too much because those, that top right pocket was pretty blocked off too. And it looks like this two ball is going to cut by the six if he wants to go for it. Ooh. It looks like he played a safety there, and he almost made the two ball because he just stuck the cue ball real well. Could have been a two-way shot where if he makes the two ball on the side, he gets a clean shot at the three. Stop it behind the six if you miss it. But that two ball came off the five and caught that point. So that was a real interesting way for that shot to turn out because if it doesn't catch the point, he's, cue balls, or the two balls probably ended up pretty hittable. That's going to be a foul. I'm not sure if he clipped that shot with his stick or if... Uh, if he meant to, or if he clipped it with the cue ball, I'm sorry. Yeah, he might have came up and hit it with his stick on the way on the follow through, or it might have clipped the two ball, or the the six ball, on the way to the two. Either way, the cue ball comes back and hits the six ball, which is going to make it a foul. Okay, so I'm not sure if he was playing for the three in the bottom left and he overran it. So this is this is gonna work out real good. You just gotta make sure you bury this. The the problem with this rack is gonna be the five ball. Do you hit the five eight combo or do you play short side? And uh if you hit the 5-8 combo, you got to do something with the cue ball to make sure you get a shot on the 5 afterwards. 
So that's what it looked like he was doing. He's trying to stop the cue ball from that other end of the table to hold shape for the 5-8 five, five, combo. Makes that shot real difficult, but he did end up hooking Robert. And so he did kind of get away with that miss. And Robert's got a tough look at the table. And uh, do you kick one rail under the four ball? Kick it up towards the eight, possibly making it, separating the balls? Looks like he's going to kick side rail, one rail. Yeah, if you go by the seven, you got to put a bunch of spin on it. This way is probably a little more natural. You just got to hit it with real good speed and not too much spin. Yeah, that ball, it kind of arcs when you hit a little bit of top spin and then grabs down. And so if you hit it with a little top spin, it can always end up a little short and kind of change the angle of that kick. And it, that's what happened there and unfortunately that's going to sell out ball in hand we're going to see if um, Nick can go come to the table and clear him out though he still needs to worry about this combo a little bit he's on a good angle he just wants here he doesn't want to make doesn't want to get behind the five ball make sure you stay away from the nine and he hit it a little hard and he's going to end up behind the six yeah, that was always the problem with that is determining whether because if that five ball ends up on the end rail, he would have been OK. But that five ball kind of crept out to the side rail and that's going to bring that six, seven into play much more. And he's made one jump shot already. It looks like he's going to try for another one. No guarantee shape for the six either. Hit it great. So as you guys can see, Nick's pretty prominent with a jump cue. He doesn't mind taking them. This is the big shot of the rack though, right? A lot of the times when you make a jump shot, the next shot is just as hard. Yeah, he's got the cue ball on the rail. He's got to roll this pretty straight. And he might come into the seven ball a little bit here too, which could end up funny. Yeah, he tried to hit it a little full to make sure he missed that seven ball. And that's going to cost you the uh, the pot on the six. And so, because that seven ball is going straight to that side rail, so you got to hit it with some speed to get it off of that rail afterwards, which makes that six ball pretty tough either way. So, a fairly routine three ball out here. He probably could have came two rails there, or, or hit a little harder to come off the rail, but this is still a real makeable shot. He's still just got to bear down and make this ball. Oh, and he just bobbled it. And it looks like he's going to get away with it, too. He might have an edge. He might be able to uh, see an edge of this seven ball. But if you're looking if you're looking to make it from there, you got to cut this real hard. And it looks like he might even play a jump shot, jump bank here. I think that's what he's going to go for. It. He did pull out a short cue. And so... This is a, this is a, a risky shot, this, I mean, but I kind of like it because there's not much of a safe either. Oh, is that going to make it to the side? Yes, sir. So it kind of pays off. He's going to, he hit it a li little full, and so the cue ball didn't quite get under the nine like it would have, but he uh, he's definitely got a bank on the nine as well. That's a good shot. I don't know if we got that replay or not. Yeah, you definitely want to take your time on this nine ball. It's a pretty big scratch if you hit it bad, too. You definitely got to get through this cue ball 
good to make sure you stay out of that top right corner and hold a good angle on the bank. Yeah, yeah, that sh that bank is never it's never as easy as you would like it to be, even though it's still on the correct side of you know it's not a back cut bank. When uh when you're putting that much draw on it, it almost plays like a back cut bank, and you gotta you gotta really hit them a little thinner. So just a a nice smooth nine ball stroke here. He caught it a little thick. And watch out, side pocket. That's kind of a double whammy. That's never what you want to see. That's going to give game number five to Nick, and he's going to take the lead right back. We're playing in two game swings, starting with Nick. Nick had one game and then two, two, two. And they're alternating breaks here. So uh, we, uh, we're going to see Robert hit these next ones. And guys, let us know on the, uh, on the feed. It looks like we got Kendall, our engineer, down here fixing it up for us. He, uh, it looks like he was able to flip them. No, I think it's still uh, the other way, Kendall. Yeah, yeah, it's still on the right side a little late, or early. On the right side is early still. All right, either way, we got Robert breaking in the, uh, we got Robert breaking in the six here. He makes the wing ball, so he hit the one ball square. The cue ball got away from him a little bit. Not dead center, but good enough to make that wing ball. That's usually how you know you hit a pretty solid nine ball break. But he kind of he didn't come up with much on this break. We might see a. A one nine carom playing like a safety on the back end. Oh, you know what? That squeaked right by, and he hit it real sweet. He had to uh, cheat the pocket a little bit by that eight ball, but he hit it real good. Unfortunately, he's not going to come up with shape though, because you can't hit that one ball any harder than he did, which you would have to do to get all the way around table for the two. So he'll be kicking here. I think I like the two rail kick coming under it. You just got to be wary of the scratch. And that's another, yeah, see he might have been going one rail. One rail is a lot safer there because if you come under that two ball, two rails, you could scratch in that bottom right pocket about 70% of the time. Um, but that's another one rail side kick shot that Robert has hit long. So he definitely wants to Think about adding a little more speed and hitting the cue ball a little more uh, dead center. No, not as much spin. And Nick's got a good chance to bring this match to the hill. It's a good stroke there. He's off the rails so he can see enough of the cue ball that he needs to, but... This is real touchy because that six ball lays between the nine and eight. That's where you're going to want to play shape unless he plays triple speed. He might be digging into this ball. Yeah. Oh, that that's going to go. Yeah. Oh, we would have liked to see that one go in for the fun. <laughs> that would have been a quite the fluke there, but it's going to give Robert a real good chance to tie this game up, really. Should make sure he gets a good angle on this six ball to get to the seven. And then there's not much work to do left in the rack. Oh, and he lets that one get away.
All right, so he can be aggressive or he can play a safety here. You can clip the, either side of the six, really. You probably want to clip the left side of the six to keep it away from the pocket. Or you can do this, kick at it. This one, you can go two rails without scratching. Oh, and just as I say that, he gets right under it. I should say it's harder to scratch in that six ball You, if you hit it real full. It's hard to get real in between that uh, six and and the rail. He's just having a little trouble with his one rail side kicks. Can't quite find the, uh, the speed and the spin on those side rail kicks. Which... Uh, these tables are, are new, so it's uh, not your normal wear and tear cloth where the cue ball's gripping. It's, it looks like it might be sliding on them a little bit. And that's going to give Nick another real good opportunity to come back and put it to the hill. He got a little more angle than he wanted to, but that's real, really not any issue. He still just needs to make this ball. He's going to get automatic shape to the nine. Don't overhit the... Oh, yeah. Or hit it three rails, but you're always sacrificing a little distance. He's real straight and nice on this, on this nine ball, though, so that was a good shot. With that angle, it's hard to kill the cue ball, too, so... Don't fault him for that that pattern, and that ended up real nice. And that's going to put him on the hill. And Robert probably, you know, should have decided on what to do with that fly ball a little more. He definitely had a chance to hit the uh, the very edge of it and clip it and play the six in the uh, same pocket, but it looked like he was trying to just hold it for the op opposite corner pocket, and it just kind of ended up right there and right in between them where you, you don't really commit to where you want the cue ball to end. You know, you really got to commit to where that cue ball is going to end up so that you don't end up on the 50 there. And we got Nick breaking for the match here. That nine ball was tracking towards that pot, top right, and the cue ball is tracking towards the top left, and the cue ball falls. So Robert's going to come to this rack with ball in hand. He's got to win three in a row. All right, Kyle holding it down, man. Appreciate it. We are, we are trying to figure out just one little technical difficulty here in the booth. Um, our delay, basically, it's reverse, so... I know a lot of you folks are familiar with our stream and uh, how the overhead works in the side-by-side -side with our dual view. Um, typically, on the left side of the screen, you'll see a shot and a replay on the right side with the overhead. Well, right now, it's kind of reversed. You'll see the shot on the overhead, and you'll see the replay on the left side. So uh, we might have to shut down for a little while like when we have a break, get that taken care of, but uh, no big deal. Still able to watch the match, and where are we at anyway? Looks like Nick's on the hill. Yes, sir. It's 4-2 Nick. 4-3, Robert. 4-3. Robert play. did just make a nice combo there. Nick uh, scratched on the break and kind of hung the nine ball, so it made a pretty easy decision for Robert. And really, that was a, that was a big, big time to happen because now... Instead of having to win three in a row, you feel like you only have to win one more in a row to get to get yourself like in a good winning position, you know? Look at that replay really quick. I guess uh, Nick had a two-rail bank shot a while back on the seven ball. Oh, yeah, it was a jump. That was a jump shot, huh? Two rails into this. Uh. Yeah, I mean, he was trying to play it in the top or in the right side hand, but he jumped right over the nine and got the two-railer. All right, so we got... Robert here to break. We, he's hitting them dead square, so we'll, we'll probably see one of the wing balls go in. There's a six ball right there. How he's going to end up on the one, though, that's a big issue in this match, actually, so far. Not, not many people are getting a good look at the run out after they hit a pretty square, solid break. So I think we'll 
going forward, if anybody's watching the stream playing, definitely want to start taking some notes on how the break is working out. He can see it. He actually did have a real nice combo there. He hit real good. Still nothing on the one, though. Yeah, he's got a cross side bank that he can open up with a little bit of inside. Uh, put this cue ball behind the 7-5. Yeah, Just play safe. Even float the cue ball behind the 9-3. He could do that, too. He could get in trouble. Going to leak out a little bit, but yeah. he got the uh, opposite side snooker where the you're pretty much as jacked up on a cue ball as you can be in the game, you know? All right. Were you able to keep up with the chat at all? I don't know if you read any of the no, chat. No, no. Yeah, he was yeah. over there working on the computer. All right. So uh, David is asking what division. Right now, this is the B division, uh, nine ball. I think uh, we're still in round one here. Do we uh, know if there's a bracket these guys can follow? Yeah, there is a bracket. If you go to Compia Sports, um, download that app, or you can even go to their website. Um, if you scroll all the way up, uh, I did post it. I'll actually put a link again for our viewers at home. I'll drop that in the chat um, where you can go to view all the brackets. Um, we got, you know, multiple different divisions, multiple different disciplines. We got 8-ball, 9-ball, and 10-ball. So uh, I'll try to uh, drop that in the chat here. Oh, he comes short. Yeah, it's uh, you can still tell Robert hasn't quite dialed in how these rails are reacting. You know, he's he's still not kicking the ball as well as he would like to. So there is the link uh, to Copy Sports. You go there to the website, but I highly recommend or yeah, their uh, their app uh, for your smart device, whether it's tablet, phone. Um, you can look up all the brackets uh, pretty easily. Some of the brackets are big. We are going to try to post some of the brackets, but, uh, for instance, right now in the B division, you know, the bracket has 178 entries, so we could never fit that on our, our telescreen here. Um, I could put portions of it on there. Um, but when it gets down to, like, you know, I don't know, a few players, we'll be able to yeah. show that bracket. Quarterfinals. Like yeah, we'll, we'll be able to show that bracket a little 16s, bit easier. Probably stuff like that. All right. It's never an easy shot. Looks like he might get away with it. Oh, no, that cue ball's going to die on him. Basically giving the same shot to Robert here. Yeah, but not very natural to get back to where he... He needs to get back to right where he's at, basically. Yep. And it's not very natural. No, nah, this is one of those low inside spin the ball around three rails. Yeah, inside... And that makes the shot tough. But look, he uh, he actually uh -oh. really caught that uh -oh. really thin. And with that low inside three railer, that's never there. He hit that ball real good to make it. Yeah, that's for this is for the match. I mean, the seven goes up and the nine's right there. It's just a few stop shots here. Well, he wants to leak out a little on this one, create some separation between yeah. the Q and the seven. Yeah. Maybe not that much, but he's going to be just fine. Yeah, I think he'll be able to kill it still here. Just, just a dead roll. Slow roll it, or if you're really confident, put it all the way to the side rail. Yeah. Some people what... some people will do that. They'll just nail it all the way to the side rail and back. He just didn't nail it hard enough, but well, still still has a shot. He's probably glad he didn't nail it harder, any harder than that. He probably would have found the drink. Yeah. Chris G just peeping on in here. There we go. Looks That's like he's match. won his first two matches. Now he needs to fix our computers. Hey, tell him to, tell him to peep on in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anybody's uh, watching, just peep in here. Just say hi. Our ultimate sound bite. Chris G, just peep on in here, man. <laughs> oh, you're muted. <laughs> That's 
Peep, peep. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> there he is. I'm just here for technical support. 2-0. and oh. Bees. Having fun. Yeah, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a little bit of a break. I'm going to see if Chris can fix our issue really quick. But uh, we'll be back. Just hang out. Um, we got more matches coming. But uh, congratulations to Nick taking down that match and moving on. And uh, we'll be back here shortly. All right, we got an A division match coming up shortly. There's gonna to be tons more. It just started. This is gonna be going 
pretty much all day, all night for the next four days. We'll be right back with you. We got an A match starting in about 10 minutes.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And we have our first match in our A division. Uh, and this is round one for men's nine ball. And we are racing to six on this one. And we got Brent Lucas facing off against Tim Bast. And that was uh, Tim that just broke. So uh, we got Brent just waiting to get to the table. And again, this is round one for uh, men's nine ball starting off at 3 o'clock today. So very first uh, round. What separates the uh, – the, uh class of like the divisions the a the b okay that's a that's a really good question actually like what does separate what class you are what what you can play in so it's your tournament director that will make that call um based off of how you're playing in the league that he's running and he'll make a determination on your winning percentage or however that works i don't know the exact algorithm um but they'll classify you whatever if they classify you as a b you can still play in the a yeah you can always play up but if they classify you as an A, you ain't playing down into the B. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, and the way it works is uh, the lowest division is the C casual, and then it goes from there to the B division, then to the A, then to AA, and then the very top division is the Masters division. Okay. All right. So Brent. Walking around the tables on the four ball with a good shot and a good path to the seven. Should be out of this rack, you know. Yeah, this is the key shot here. You don't want to end up too far from the seven, but you don't want to end up on the rail. So he's going to take the distance here, put a little more of a stroke. He's nice and straight, though, enough to come off the rail but not have the cue ball get away from him. So this is a good shot to settle your stroke into the match and really take an early initiative. Looks like he's playing with a, one of those keelwood shafts there. Yes, sir. That's how you know he hits him sweet. That's a great shot there. Uh, it looks like he's a little off angle. I'd probably draw and play this nine in the same pocket. Or you can go forward to the end rail. You how could. It's preference. Well, he's just stopping it. He, I guess he didn't have as much angle as I thought. Yeah. So he's good there. And this to take the first one down, race to six. If he can reach it. And we get we did get our technical difficulty figured out. So now if you're watching on our split screen here, you'll see on the left side of the screen, you'll see the shot. And on the right side, you'll see the overhead with a two-second delay. So basically an instant replay. Um, so everything's back to normal. Again, you know, first day working out some of the kinks were a mobile stream at this point. Got everything all set up yesterday, so... I'm curious, how, how are you guys all hearing us at uh, home? Uh, we sound okay? I mean, they do got that loudspeaker that keeps going off and blowing my eardrums out a little bit. Yeah, probably a little bit of background noise, too. It's loud in here. Yeah, I just I hope you guys can hear us clear. Um, we're not a fully soundproof booth, but we did as much as we could to minimal, minimalize the noise from out in the arena to what you're actually hearing as far as commentary. Great. All right, so we got Brent here at the table breaking. He's breaking from the side. It looks like he's going to come up dry here. He didn't make a wing ball like you expect. Yeah, I might see a push shot. You know, we um, in our lower division, in the B division, we didn't see one push shot, I don't think. And I'm thinking here you might see a push shot. Yeah, there's no obvious kick. Uh, you could kick between the 4-8, but it's kind of a small window. You're going to have to play a little closer to the 8 on the way in and spin it towards the one ball, which really brings that side pocket. Um, that point of the side pocket comes huge at that point. You're trying to avoid it with that spin. You end up overspinning that ball. That's what he's talking about doing. I think he is playing a push shot here. Yeah, I I don't mind that. He it looks like he might even tie up the nine ball and make it. Well, yeah, just putting the nine on the spot here, um, that alleviates any fluke nine in that corner, or a two nine combo or whatever could have happened. So, good choice there. 
Interesting. Uh, he might have left a carom from the five nine, depending on the angle you end up at. Possibly. Yeah, where the four ball is, it's going to be tough. It. I really think that was a pretty smart play there. It's just going to make Ooh. this run out tougher. I think he kind of fluked the uh, one in there, came off the four. Oh, absolutely. Now the question is here is do you try to draw into the five ball, opening up that five nine now, and then hopefully not hooking yourself on the three? As long just... as you can stop the cue kind of on the five if it acts as a stopper. Otherwise, if the cue leaks up high... I would not try that. Yeah, so he strayed away from it. He kept a good angle on the three here to get to the four. Yeah, that 5-9 is, you called it a little earlier, could be a little weird. I mean, I don't know if you could play a carom. You could, but you would have to get on the uh, underside of the five ball yeah, I don't... to where the cue ball's coming up table off of the nine. You're not going to be able to try to... Yeah, see, that's the angle he played for as well, to come two rails under the five. No. I'm thinking the five almost might go past the six. Right between them? Yeah, maybe. Hard to tell, you know. You got to be down on the table looking at the angle. Yeah, if it goes, then there's no real issue in this rack. Good touch safety there from Tim. Yeah, this is no easy kick, huh? You might just have to come off the end rail one rail. Yeah. Can you get at it two here? And probably not. No, I don't I really know. Yeah, you gotta kinda come one rail. So this is tough to it's tough to hit. He he uh hit a short there, but even if you did get a good hit on the three ball, it's tough not to sell out from where you had to kick at it. And that was his only real option. Yeah, and four to the five again. That's going to be key. He's got ball in hand right now, so. Yep. I mean, he actually doesn't even need to move the cue ball. He could just leave it right there. Yeah, that's how I like it. I mean, maybe maybe move it up just a little bit. Yeah, like right there. Yeah. He'll stop this ball and, and play two rails for the five. Ooh, he got straight or kind of straight. He's got enough. He's going to have to force the issue a little bit here, but he's got enough to come pretty pretty stun stun outside here. Might have overstroked that ball a little bit. So <laughs> now we might see a 5-9 combo bank. I like this dude's name. Why is Gamora? <laughs> um, he says the tables to pee in pristine condition. Well, that's because they're all brand new tabletops, diamond, seven foots, uh, all just reclothed, all professionally leveled, 118 tables. Um, so very, very. I played on them today. They just play like a dream, man. They do run. They're running a little fast, I think, um, just because the cloth is really, really slick, you know. So you just gotta really keep the speed of the table in mind. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, our stream table is the only one with lights over it, so in a couple of days, this table is going to be playing drier than the rest of the room, no doubt. Well, and that's the thing, too. The only thing about the venue here is, yeah, the lights in the ceiling, they're up, right? So we don't have table lights over the tables, and I'll, I'll take you guys to a, a, a pool room view, but our stream table that you're looking at, we do have a light above it, which is really nice. Yeah, it really does make it a nice little arena we have here, honestly. Yeah, so that's the look. That's where we're at. The Fox Valley Expo Center in Appleton, Wisconsin. 118 tables, brand new diamonds. Got nice on the nine. Yeah, get off the rail a little bit. Yeah, I did enough. So you can see enough of that cue ball and really get at it comfortably and just bear down, stroke it good, and take a 2 nothing lead. TJ Anderson watching from Ashland, Wisconsin. Ashland, Wisconsin. Hmm, trying to think of where that would be. Brent smiling about that one, man. That one really, I think he four-rail banked that ball in. Because it away, but I missed it. Yeah, yeah. Must he rattled it in there. But uh, like I was saying in the last match, see if I got the replay on one it. of those things where uh, 
I did get the replay. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. It it bobbled pretty good. Let's take a look at this nine ball. But See. He uh he doesn't want to let that get into his head too much, man. I I don't think he will. He's kind of smiling about it. He's up two nothing, so he's not too too worried. Oh, it did wipe his feet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about three or four, huh? Wow. Yeah, okay. they definitely had a chance to stay up, so it definitely fell in his favor. But like I said, you don't want to let those get to you too much, and just keep trucking. He's playing pretty solid. And we got Tim here breaking to uh, make a little comeback if he can. He makes a ball in the top right. And it looks like he's going to see the one, but nothing too offensive. Might be able to get a bank between the 4-3. Um, but other than that, I don't see anything too much offense. Ashland is east of Superior? About an hour? Wouldn't that be in Minnesota? Superior is way at the top. Man, that's a ways from here. Oh, he tried to play safety around the two, and he ended up catching the two on the way in after the one-one ball, and he really kind of sold out. He can bank this ball. He's got a good safety option either way with the cue ball. Play the one ball, two rails, or the cue ball, two rails. Thomas Bond says war. <laughs> Don't know what he's referring to. But Brent's been playing pretty solid early here. We'll see how he how he comes out with this safety. Played the cue ball two rails behind the pack there. He hit it real, real nice. He's uh, left an edge. This is not an easy return, though. This, cue, this one ball leaks out to that top right really fast if you try to overhit it. So he hit it nice and soft and played a good touch. Kind of nice. Yeah, that's that. That's one of those where you want to play a big distance shot, but it's just not there because the one ball leaks out too much. So he played the good shot there. Kept See. it simple. Oh, okay. Yeah, Taylor's right. Yeah, Minnesota's west. What am I thinking? I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, th I don't know what I was thinking, but I know Superior is up there the tip and then thomas boone is watching from uh leesburg florida so that's just south of us a few thousand miles don't don't ask me 18. about any of this dude i'm not a geologist not a few thousand florida's about 1200 miles south of us but uh and then tj anderson says he's playing in the eight ball tomorrow a division well i'm in there maybe we're playing together tomorrow i haven't seen the brackets come out for eight ball but they should be out 24 hours prior to the start of the first match. So if you're playing in the A division, that starts tomorrow at 7.30, 7 o'clock, something like that. So we should see those brackets coming out by 7 or so is what I'm thinking. Nice little kick um, by Tim. Get some separation here. Uh Brent's got some options. He can clip the one and use the five ball to hold and try to play like behind the two. And then if you don't end up good, you at least get distance. James Rockwell is uh, watching from Coldwater, Michigan. Looks like the uh, southern part of Michigan, not too far from Indiana. And Thomas is asking, are we live all weekend? Absolutely. We are going to be here. Yes, sir. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, will we have commentary the entire time? That's going to be tough. I'll be in as much of the booth as I can, um, but I will be playing tomorrow, so that'll be tough. Kyle, he's going to be in the booth holding it down as much as he can. Yeah, you guys should hear a lot from me this weekend, so uh, hopefully I don't get too much on your nerves annoying you. Yeah, he might be in the booth by himself. I was in the booth earlier. Um, you get pretty good at talking to yourself when you're commentating. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I talk to myself without being in the booth, so I should be fine. <laughs> I should be just fine. So it's Tim got two, three, two, three, six combo. Uh oh, and it needs to stop. Actually, this did. works because he can play a three all the way up and yep. kind of stun up and over to the five. Yep. Is that the four? That I think that's the four ball on the oh, right side yeah, of the, the table. Four, yeah, the four is on there. So he'll Either be way. playing for the four. 
Yeah, either way. But yeah, you don't need to mess with that combo and have the three ball end up funny. So Ooh. he also just didn't want to end up married to his work. If he could have just creeped up another inch or so, but he's still good here. Yeah, this is going to be all about the hold. Do you want to try to shoot the gap in the 5-9 and play a super touchy shot or play a super touchy shot and kill the cue ball? I like the pocket speed. I'm, a, I'm really soft like that. Yep, yep. But the smart shot would probably be like you're saying, go back and forth here. It's still tough to aim that cue Ooh. ball with that angle. Or go completely pro side. Yeah. And could take the five all the way down. Why not? Yeah, he this had, is fine. He had five inches to work with there. Nice shot. No, it depends on how straight he is here because if he's, he it, might have to draw into the seven. It don't even matter. Six is sitting right oh, in the pocket. Oh, I forgot about the six, yeah. Yeah, six is just sitting right so there. So he's okay. He's still doing good. He's fighting through this rack. This is all speed. This is a tougher shot than everybody likes to give it credit because of the speed. He underhit that ball a little bit and tried to work to that side with spin instead of playing a middle ball and coming down on the other side of the uh, side pocket. Rush Crush Gaming. Um, I'm sorry, Don or Dan is asking if they're uh, playing with uh, diamonds up at the WSPA in Rothschild. I believe they are. I mean, they'll have an event or two in between, but uh, I do believe there are diamonds coming back for that event. I could be wrong. I you know don't take whatever I say with a grain of salt because I'm not playing in the team event up there. And this is the first year they actually are separating the. Oh no! Ooh, that was always a real Sold tough shot. The farm, as they say, on that one. That's a huge miss. That's going to make it three nothing instead of two one. Yeah, and that gets Brent halfway there. So big, big miss there by Tim. Um, yeah, and he hit it pretty good. You know, he hit it as good as you can without making it. But that's going to give a three nothing lead to Brent, and we'll have Brent breaking in the fifth. Or the fourth, I'm sorry. But we'll see how Tim uh, bounces back from that. You know, we haven't seen any breaking runs yet. Randy Sargent, 23, asking, do they go by Fargo rate for a cutoff between A and B, or what's the range? So the range is actually determined by what their WSPA rating is. And that is usually done by their league operator. So typically to qualify, you play in a league, you get sanctioned or whatever, and you pay your fee. I believe you can play if you're not in a league. You just got to pay a little extra, and you have to get a rating from somewhere. Not exactly sure how that works. I got to get more educated on that. But uh, your league operator will determine what your rating is. Now, if he says, hey, you're a B player and you want to play A, you can do that. You just can't play down. Yeah, and that makes sense. And that's cool. I didn't know that you could play without uh, being in a league. I believe you can. You just I think it's a, an extra admin fee or charge. And then you got to find a way to get a rating. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure how that works. I'm uh, sure whoever is uh, determining your rank can go off of a Fargo, right? Again, I got to get educated on it. Yeah, I think it we'll might be that you had to have played in a previous league and had a, uh, an established rating through WSPA. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to actually go talk to uh, Jeff Gerald Martin, one of the tournament directors, and kind of get educated on that um, so I can let the folks at home know. It's a good opener um, by Tim. He's got a good chance to get himself back in this match. Yeah. Doesn't want to overhit this ball. You can pull the two ball off the rail. You just need to draw a little bit and come Care miss the side pocket. Careful with the scratch in the side because it just always finds its way. When you're drawn off the rail like that, you, you really do find your way into the side pockets quite often. Yep. But look at the table now. It looks great. He missed it. Oh, man. He uh, put a little too much draw and hit it a little fat. And that's one of those where you don't want to hit it with a lot of speed. And yeah, he's going to have to put a little bit of a stroke on this one. Yeah, he's pretty straight, too. He's going to have to cheat the pocket. He hit it good. Watch hit outside. It. It's going to creep by. Nope. Point. It's going to hit the point. Just fine. 
that's going to work out well. But yeah, that shot when you're kind of all the way along the table and the object ball is sitting in the pocket, a lot of the times you saw that cue ball bite off that first rail because it has so much top spin, it doesn't react until after it bounces off the rail. So it's always tough to judge where the cue ball is going to end on the that type of shot. Oh, man, do you go for the 5-9? I don't think so. I don't particularly like it, but you know there's yeah. a really good two-way shot there too because you can play behind the 8 at a light speed. That's what I'm saying. It might be worth it. But if you play it at a light speed, you're gonna have to, if, he's going to you know, risk, risk hanging it. Hit it nice. He hit it real nice, and that's exactly what he did. Played a good cue ball too, but if he hung that nine ball, he still had a chance at a kick nine, kick five nine. Let's but, take take another look at it. Yeah, he he didn't have to worry about it at all. He hit it good. Yeah, I only like this shot because you're right. It's a two way. You could lock it up on the eight, you know, just in case you miss. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the only reason you take that shot. Otherwise, you just, you know, try and complete the run out five in the side. Yeah, so. definitely. But it was it was there, and he took full advantage and hit it good. So he's he's actually, that's going to put him up 4-0 here. He's pulling pulling away. I got I got to ask him, um, why is Gamora? Uh, <laughs> what, what, are you a Marvel fan? Is that why that name is, why is Gamora? Are are you a, a Drax fan? <laughs> okay, we got Tim breaking here. I always thought that was funny in that movie. He gets the seven in the side, oh, watch the cue ball in the corner. So we are playing alternate break here as well, so if anyone was wondering. So ball in hand here for for Brent. Yeah, and it looks a wide open table. That four or five at the bottom of the table is the only problem. It's going to be real hard to get shape on the four. Yeah, three uh, to the four could could prove tricky. Maybe the trickiest shot on the table because one absolutely. to the two, two to the three, it's all pretty routine right now. Yeah, you might even consider going into one of those balls, the four or the five, in order to create a little bit of better of an angle. Because it's going to be, or, you know, you can always play for, like, a cut up and down the table. The middle of the table is going to be nice and wide open. So he'll have an opportunity to play a, a real thin cut on the four to get to the five pretty easily as well. That, again, like you said, all comes to, down to how he gets on the three ball. <laughs> Why Gamora says, that's right, the line by Drax. Yeah, I think I like his sense of humor. Because that's, I mean, that line in that movie... It's it's just funny to me. I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's it's, so, it's like so corny. It's kind of funny. Yeah. But Drax is always like with these off-putting one-liners that are just totally obscure and they're just funny. And they're all talking about like, who is Gamora? Where is Gamora? And Drax <laughs> like, I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Why is Gamora? <laughs> and it just makes no sense. <laughs> but kind of funny. So he does got a shot here. Ooh, no, maybe not. Yeah, he has a shot on the three. To get to the four, though. Yeah, you're tough. just going to want to roll up to the middle of the table and take a cut on the four and go two rails up and down the table for the five. You're going to want to make sure you get thin enough. You know, he could leave an angle to run into the five. I think he that, hit that, that really well. And he's to slow down. So he's got a he's, good angle to come into the five here. He's really good there. But this is still a touchy shot to hold for the five. He, it looks like he's got an a angle to hold, but... Comes a little Hold bit touchy. Or he can come off the rail and bump the five mm -hmm. up table and play it up, or try and spin around it. Yeah. Or he's he's, he's doing what you're saying. He's gonna come out the other way. Hold it. Yeah. And this is a thin, thin shot, though. You know, and now you gotta consider playing short side on the six. Yeah, he's gonna have to play just pocket speed here. I think with the five, just kind of float it over to the pocket, come off the bottom rail, and it. You should have a shot on the six. Right. Or you could play double speed, come off the second, the top rail to the middle of the table, but that makes the five ball pretty missable. Yeah, I don't like that. That's You're really stroking it to do that. Oh, and he does it. Yeah, and that's going to fall well short. He might even hook himself on the eight ball here. Yeah, see, pocket speed there, that ball stops in the center of the table or even shorter. Yeah. You're wide, you're wide open on the six. 
where you still come up with a bank if you ever hit it a little bit. Yeah. But he played it a little extra. He's got a kick in the side. Yeah, if he was doing like you were saying, coming up and down, he really would have had to kind of slide that ball. stroke out. And then, like you were saying, you do that, you're you're a little more apt to miss that ball. Yeah. You end up catching it a little thin a lot of the times, which actually usually works out because cue ball or the object ball at least ends on the end rail. That he almost made that kick in the side, and oh, it almost oh made two god. rails in the corner. Oh my god! That threatened two pockets in one shot. I almost want to take another look at that shot. What do you think? Yeah, let's look. Let's look at it again at the end of the rack. It looks like yeah, well, that's going to give Tim here a good chance to get off the board. Yeah, I think he's going to get on the board here. Got perfect angle mm -hmm. to float over for the nine. Yeah, this is one where you want to commit. If you end up in between strokes, you can end you end up scratching that top left just because you don't know how you want to hit the eight ball. So he chose to roll, roll through it and just roll real nice. You know, hit it real so soft and light, and uh, he he made a good decision, made an easy out there. Yeah, I just want to take a look at that shot. Like, what was he lining up? Was he trying this shot? Um, yeah, I think he was probably trying to kick it in the side it looked like it i mean because it would have been a two rail kick bank I mean, if that was the goal i mean he came awfully close but i don't know if that i don't know if that was intended or not if it was bravo nice attempt yeah he you threatened know? it either way he threatened the side pocket and the uh the yeah. bottom right but uh man the viewers are just pouring in appreciate you guys hanging out with us here at WSPA. Um, do us a huge favor. If you're new to the channel, like and share. It helps us stream for free, um, and that's what we do. Uh, and we normally do live matches every Sunday. Uh, we do our Queens Division, Jesters, and Knights Division. Those are our King's Court matches because every Friday, 7 o'clock, we have King of the Hill, which is you know 600 players and above. Uh, master level players, really good matches. So it helps keep the stream going, and you know all the money we make goes to the junior program uh, at the Mad Apple here in Appleton, Wisconsin. So we appreciate the support. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for tuning in. And like like you said, this isn't the only event we do. If you guys like watching pool, tune in. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. And whenever we're going live, it's because we're streaming streaming pool. Ooh, kind of sounded funny. Yeah. Like, that was really weird. It's like, he got a bunch of power on the cue ball, but he also oh. miscued it. Did he? He got hooked. He might end up in the gap. Oh, he's in the gap. Look at that. I don't know if he can. He's in the gap enough to see the edge of the three ball, though. He might have to play a safety. It's tight. Yeah, he got fortunate he didn't get buried to be honest with you but yeah back to our our matches that we stream every week we will not be running king of the hill or our king's court matches the next two weeks just because we got this week wspa of course and we'll be streaming live all the way up to sunday and then uh the week after that we have the badger state games which will be hosted at the mad apple and that's always a really awesome event as Watch well out, corner pocket it's gonna be dropping oh and he did have enough of that three ball to make it, so he just overhit it, trying to play shape for the four. I'm not sure if he had to play a little swerve there, and that's why he hit it so hard, but I feel like a, a middle-of-the-table shot, if you could see the three enough to make it, would have been pretty safe. And so that is going to bring Brent to the table with ball in hand. He's got the... Uh, I mean, the seven seven nine is really not too much of a problem. Or is that the 8-9? The 8-9. Eight, 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 the 8-9 eight, is not too much of a problem. You can always kind of bump that 9 if you need to. Or uh, play an angle to get away from the 9-ball. The yeah, just, I just think just rolling up here, taking the long shot on the 6, then you can float over to the 7 pretty pretty easily. So there is a path out of this rack. Yeah, absolutely. There it is, and pretty much perfect there. It's a longer shot, but it definitely leads to the seven. Yeah, he might even consider just rolling this ball dead dead flat, coming to the end rail just like that. 
Just don't get straight here. And on the rail, so oh, he is man. a little straight. Yeah, that's that's the hard part is when you get straight, there's just no good path to the eight. Yeah, well, it looks like he might have enough angle to go forward, but that makes this shot's very rattleable. You need to hit it real smooth and pure, and with enough speed still to get it all the way out to the middle of the table, which when you're coming through a ball that fast, it's tough to... Uh, it's tough to keep it that that smooth and get the the correct power. So he just kind of chose a duck. Yeah. I mean, what what do you kick off the end rail, play the nine ball where the cue ball sits? Yep. I mean, that's all you really got. Why is Gamora is asking? Are there any carom billiard tables and matches? No, nope. there's no three cushion tables here. It's just all seven foot bar box. All day. That's all we have here. WSPA. This is questionable. This makes the eight ball harder to hit, and you uh you don't get too you, much of a safety out of it. I uh, tell you what, though. I mean, it 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 didn't make it easy here for Tim. So no, not at all. I mean, that could have been as probably good as you could have got. I mean, he did get a right. hit. He didn't really sell out. Does the eight go past the nine? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That, that yeah, if it uh, does go past the nine, he's going to be in trouble here. If it doesn't, yes, absolutely. You might have to play some kind of weird combo. We got Kendall Cock peeping on in here. What's going on? What's or Kendall <laughs> Cook. Where's my brain today? <laughs> oh, he did clip the nine there. Did touch it? Yep, he clipped it. Uh oh, Kendall's about to overload our system. What's he doing? <laughs> okay, so we got a cut ball on this eight. You probably play it with low and play it to the side rail. Yeah, this is not an easy shot by any means here. Yeah, I don't like going forward here, flirting with that bottom right. I almost like pocket. banking this. Uh, that's, I think that's getting a little too too perfect on the nine. If you draw this to the set and rail, yeah, oh, see, that's see. exactly what I was saying that's, earlier. That's why you go with the bank shot. That's that's going to hurt. That's going to cost him another game. So Tim's able to get back in the match here. No, I think the prominent play there was just drawing it off the side rail and coming back to the middle table. You don't have to hit it too hard. Uh, you play a lot of draw there. Just really dig into the cue ball, and it always comes out for a shot. And you don't really have to flirt with a with the uh, that corner pocket, and you also don't have to hit a pretty difficult bank. Yeah. So now we are at two four race to six. Tim kind of clawed his way back in there. Yeah, I I should have hit the replay, but that shot that Brent took, I mean, it just looked like it was going into the corner. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, you could have banked it either way. Really, you could have back banked it. Or just took the natural bank and probably would have been pretty tough on the nine, but there was, I mean, there was no easy not, shot there. You're not so. going to scratch. You yeah. know, you're, you're taking that risk by a, just for the pure fact of eliminating the scratch. Yeah, exactly. And, and making sure that you don't give ball in hand because he made the eight ball as well. You know, he hit it good, but there's just no easy way to avoid the scratch unless you play some kind of bottom there, you know whether you bank it or or hit it. Rush is asking, is this the A division? It is. This is the first round in uh, the A division for nine ball. Oh, it looks like that cue ball is going to stay safe this time. And it's going to pop out for a shot. Now he's moving away from the two ball here, so this is not quite an easy rack. He's got a chance to hold it for quite a cut on the two because the three ball is on the other side of the table. So he'll be able to make a decision i should say he, he'll be able to make a decision whether he wants to play this one ball or play a pretty good safety is off uh, available as well but watch out watch out for ball he's good he's got a shot on the two and it's yeah. got a path to the three it's not a very open path i mean you either got to come i like coming between the four and the five because if you're going on the other side of the four you could scratch yeah right in between the four and the five 
That's nice. He gets a real nice love bump there on the five. Ends up real sweet on the three. That was a good bump. Yep. The seven eight is set up. You don't got to move that really. Yeah, you just want to be uh, at a good angle. Yep. To uh, control the seven and the cue ball. Yeah. So three to the four is pretty good. Four to the five. Five. I mean, everything is looking pretty good right now. I mean, this is when you get a table like this, your your eyes start to get big, you know, because. Yep. You can see the path. Yeah, and a lot of times you get ahead of yourself because of that. So. Oh, I do it all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm out, and then I miss my next shot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Trying to get too cute. Yeah. He's looking pretty good here. Yeah, this is good. Probably play the four in the side, so you got to be wary of the six ball. The six ball is a pretty big ball coming yeah. up and down the table. As you say, it's a beach ball it's right now. It's a beach now. ball, yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could hook you so many ways. You just got to, I like personally getting over to the right side of the table under the six because it's really easy to do. Yeah. Anything else is you're trying to get fancy. Look at that. Right side of the table. Oh, look at that beach ball. Look at that beach ball. He got there. Now he got a, there. Now it's a ping pong ball. It stopped. <laughs> yeah, see, now you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. But I did like that path because it really kills the cue ball a little bit. You know, as long as you hit that one with good good touch, you're not going to hit it too hard and end up behind the six. Oh, man, Dirty Dumper says, Pat misses a lot of shots. Okay, Dirty Dumper, you can't you can't make that accusation unless we know your real name. I probably know it. I probably <laughs> just forgot. That's why I don't like these, like, call signs they got. We can't see who they really are. No, yeah, they're, they're screen names. But he ain't lying. I do miss a lot of shots. But that's because I play a lot of shots. So, All right. So this is really important that he gets an uh, angle that he likes to control the seven ball. So here I would – this this can actually get a little touchy because you can end up behind the nine. The seven ball wants to track towards the end rail off the cut of the eight. And so you probably want to play this real light and leave both the uh, seven, the cue ball and the seven on the end rail. Yeah, play real light. That was nice. We'll probably take another look at that because that got him probably the out here to get on the hill. Yeah, any thicker, and he's kind of ended up weird with that with that seven ball. Well, Rush out more. Rush Crush Gaming is asking: Is this a OB Phoenix shaft? Um, oh, you're from Phoenix. I don't know. You probably know better than me, but I know. Uh, I think it's Brent right now that is playing with a Keelwood shaft. Yeah. I'm not sure what type of Keelwood. Yeah, he's asking if it's an. I actually play with a, a OB Phoenix. It's just the Keelwood shaft that OB produced a couple years back. They did make a new one. I forget what it was called. Maybe it was like a Firebird or There's something. There's that shot that got him out. That was nice. But. It is a killwood shaft, and you can tell by the color. It's been heat treated, so he's playing with a with a cue. What I like to say is between the carbon fiber and a standard maple. Man, dirty dumper, where you at? Are you gonna let me know like what your name is? I I don't know who I'm talking to. Put me on the spot. Come on. Yeah, so, man. It's easy to talk mess from the crowd, right? <laughs> yeah, for real. So this is a view of the WSPA state tournament here in Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin. All brand new tabletop diamond tables. Just refelted, all leveled, plays like a dream. Yeah, it's it's awesome to walk in here, man. It's like if you've never been to a state tournament or something like that, it's just you walk into this massive room filled with pool tables, just filled with them. Yeah, like you said, this is like one of your first big venues. Yeah, that I actually got to go to live. I mean, I always watch, you know, I've been playing for five years. So for five years, I've been watching on the stream. And, Maybe you know, you next hear year. break after break after break. And you just got to wonder, you guys got to come see it for yourselves. It's, it's quite the spectacle, you know. Maybe next year you get to come to Derby City with us. Yeah, oh, that's, dude, I'm not missing that. <laughs> that's really cool. I'm not missing that at all. One, is he going for a one nine here? That's that's yeah. Look, oh, oh my god, it's sweet. Holy cow! There's a lot of distance between Q and object, and the one on the nine. 
Yeah, he almost made the one ball, too, so that just tells you how pure he hit that. Yeah, let's take another look at this one. I mean, this is not an easy shot. you got to hit this dead square. Yeah, he couldn't have hit that any he better. kind of wiping the sweat off his forehead on that one. Yeah. I mean, because what could have happened is the one could have stayed a little shorter and the nine sit in the pocket. And, and then, then you're selling out. And then you're selling the farm. Selling out the match there. Yeah, that's but a nice shot. Yeah, uh, I believe that's his third rack, right? So I think that takes him to three. Um, yep, so five to three. You got Brent on the hill because we're racing a six. So And so you can't really blame him for going for that nine ball. You know, when you're down five, two in a race of six, you feel like you got to get something going. And really, a shot like that can turn turn the tides to your favor, especially as far as uh, momentum in your mental game. So definitely can't fault him for going for that because that put him right back in the match if he can get one more game out of it. Well, I got one going in the corner there. But again, here's the thing. No shape on the one, really. He can see it. So he might be able to play a pretty good save here. If he can yeah. get that one ball kind of on the other side of the four and and leave his opponent hooked, that might work. Yeah, he's going to clip the left side of the one ball that we're looking at now and bring the cue ball two rails past the five and uh, try to keep the the one ball on the end rail in the middle of the end rail. Let's see what it does. He hit, yeah. it, he hit it quite thick. Might have been playing behind the five, which is tougher because you only have that one blocker to rely on, whereas if you play it real thin, play the cue ball with a little more speed, you got a bunch of balls on that top left side of the table. TJ uh, Anderson said this will be his first time in a state tournament. Well, good luck, TJ. I think you said you were playing the eight ball A division, I think, if I remember correctly. Let us know in the chat. That's a good touch there from Brian to uh, kind of put one back on Tim because he kind of did the same thing where he was relying on one you know one what, ball. You know what else? I'm, I wonder who is actually watching the stream right now that's here at WSPA. So if you're at WSPA, you're here with us, let us know. Say hi. Yeah, peep on in here and say hello. If anybody's uh, watching, just peep in here. Just say hi. <laughs> uh, we love that bite. Try to refrain from you as, as much as I can, but every hour or so maybe. Throw yeah, it you know, here. it's still the first day, so we got to get everybody out here. Yeah. And that's going to – Tim uh, hit that two-rail kick pretty short, and that's going to give up ball and hand the, uh, Brent to run out. He'll probably play the two ball on the same side as the one because of how much traffic there is. He could play short side and play in the top right, but it's a little bit smaller of a window for the cue ball. So I like him using his his space if he falls under the two enough. The cue ball lead back to the middle of the table nice for the four. Yeah, the only semi-issue is the six, seven right now. Everything else is... Negotiable here. David Wall, hello, welcome. Appreciate you joining us. Yeah, so he'll play this this with top to make sure he gets down there. He still hit it a little light. So this is a little funny, you know, you're gonna probably wanna hold up for a cut on the four, and then you might have to play the five on the side. Ooh, playing the five on the side is never fun. Yeah, it's it's off the side rail pretty good. So as long as you come two rails for the four, off of the four, I should say, to the middle of the table for the five, you should come up with some kind of shot, even if you hit it short. But this is where you, you probably, he'll probably bounce this off the side rail. Yep, he overcut it a little bit. Mike Gaines says, feels like a Sunday. One of our reigning jester champions of all time. And also uh, won a few matches in our Knights division here just recently. Had to step away. Yes, yes, Mike. It does feel like a Sunday. I'm in the booth, so I'm feeling good. Uh, my brother-in-law is out there asking what time I need to be picked up. It's hard to say. I'm, I'm going to actually try to find a ride home 
if I can't because I might be here late. So it all depends. Uh-huh. He's actually my brother-in-law is playing in the state tournament as well. He'll be oh, starting tomorrow. So he could give you a ride tomorrow, I guess. All right, big shot coming up. Dave Wall saying, glad Chris fixed the delay. Yeah, it was, you know, we're working out all the kinks. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot to setting up a live stream um, when you're going from, like, location to location. We got to get a light set up, cameras, got soundboards, monitors, microphones. I mean, there's just a myriad of things. And Chris does an awesome job. And Kendall also does an awesome job with the tech. I'm just kind of like a... I don't know, monkey on a keyboard. <laughs> hey know? man, I like <laughs> I'm pretty simple behind the mic myself. I just yeah. like to do the talking. I'm I'm actually learning quite a bit though, like hooking I I learned to hook some of this stuff up and Yeah. I'm learning. But I'm just I'm not what you would call a tech guy, you know? Absolutely. All I'm right. like one of those guys the files are in the computer. What? Yeah. <laughs> How do I get them out? This is a big shot. He decided to play the carom with some speed. Joe Menina's is asking if they have the shuttle. Yeah, uh, if you're down at the Mad Apple or you're staying at the Clarion, which is attached to the Mad Apple, um, there is a shuttle that runs, I think, all day and most of the night that goes from the Apple to here, and it just keeps going back and forth. So don't know what the time is from, like, you know, shuttle to shuttle, but I'm assuming there's, like, one every – 30 minutes or something like that yeah 30 minutes to an hour probably like a bus schedule i don't think it's i think it's more like 30 maybe even 15 minutes because the mad apple is literally like five minutes down the road yeah you know so which is awesome i mean you play all day at a tournament and then you go back to the hotel and you get a pool hall right there yeah you keep playing pool you jump in the pool and then go play pool after playing pool rush saying didn't look at his target line Oh yeah, for that uh for that combo for the uh for the carom I should say. It was never never easy. He is, he's pretty off angle on that carom too. I'll tell you what, if Tim gets another win here, it'll kinda have pushed the pressure onto Brent and that was a nice shot. Yeah, look at look at that shot. It was beautiful. Yeah, really nice shot there by Brent. Just I mean, kill the cue ball and play the uh A ball in the opposite bottom bottom yeah. corner and this is one of those shots where you can find your next shot is like on the 50 yard line if you're not careful yeah don't over hit this ball oh he hit it nice hit that really nice so two nice shots here yeah this is gonna be for the match too he's he's running out to, to try See, to take now, it this shot do you get aggressive and come two rails out or do you just follow and come one rail and up you know, what do you I like following one rail up. Just yeah. like that. He See, liked it. That's a nice shot. Yeah, he made it look easy. That was probably the right shot. I mean as long as you make the eight ball, you're always gonna end up with a shot on the nine, just how close. And that's gonna that's gonna end it for Brent. He took the took the match there. All right, folks, we're gonna take a bit of a break. We'll be back here in a few minutes with another match. I'm sure they keep the matches coming and we'll bring some more commentary with you. So just Hang out. We'll be here. Update you maybe on some of the brackets, things like that. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Thank you.
All right. So uh, between matches here, we'll go ahead and watch our production crew beat the rails around and see what they got going on here. Three rails in the side. This is Kendall. He's the uh, owner down at the Apple and head of our team. And we got Patrick down there messing around. He's in the booth with me. He's, they're going for a six railer, he said. Six rails, yeah. Two, three, four. What do you guys think? Should we do a, a trick shot competition between matches? Oh, he got the point. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty cool three railer. Be a good one pocket shot. Oh, he let that one open up. I don't got a chance at the side. <laughs> there it goes. What was that five in the side? That's a three railer in the side. The one Kendall was trying was a four railer in the opposite. Just warming up the rails for the tournament, you know. Looks like they're practicing for a bank by the rail ring game. Oh, and now he's giving them a little window to go through. Gonna try to kick this ball in. See if Kendall gets three in a row. All right, Patrick, if you don't get out here, you owe me 20 bucks. That was a good break. Uh, I believe Kendall's playing later this week. So if you guys uh, are interested and in see how how he does in the booth compared to how he does on the table, definitely tune in later in this week. He'll he'll be out there. I think he's playing the eight ball division. He's in trouble here. He's going to have to stiff this three ball to make it. 100 miles an hour. Hit it 100 miles an hour. Just blast her in, bud.
What'd I say? What did I say? Now that six ball is a problem, he'll have to do something weird with this. Maybe three rails between the eight and nine would be cool, but I think that eight ball is cutting it off. Yeah, he played the carom. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give the table back to Kendall here. They're they're messing around, uh, Kendall and uh, it's a uh, Kendall and that other guy, that other guy that sits right next to me most of the time. I think Kendall's playing with Patrick's stick too. Yeah, sometimes it pays a right, pays to stick around with us between the matches. You know, you get to see a uh, see a little bit of the action that goes on behind the scenes and see what we do, see how we play. We're here to have fun. Hope all you guys are enjoying it. A little sneak peek and uh into uh Patrick's brain while he's in the booth. So hopefully he doesn't play like garbage, right? Nah, Patrick's a good shot. He still owes me 20 bucks if he doesn't get out. Oh, <laughs> ball took a weird spin off the uh, off the point. He's calling the nine. All right, so I guess we're even. Yeah, he's wondering if I'm in here talking. I should have told him, though. <laughs> All right. If you guys want to make some side bets, let me know. We got... Mr. Uh, Kendall Cook and Patrick Lynn on the table here. Two of the production team. Both pretty good shots. I know uh, they call him Kendall Quick Fire. We won't see him. We won't see him think about anything too long here. Especially because it's just for fun, you know. Even even when the money's on the line, he's just. He don't he don't take much time to get out. Yeah, that's real nice. He's going to get out of here, guys. Kendall, I think, is actually playing uh, playing the event as well. I'm not sure if he's playing today, but I think he's playing in one of the events. All right, Kendall with the big break. Smashes him. Just obliterated those balls. Now he's got the hand flip going because he broke them broke dry. He's got to hit them harder than that. <laughs> All right, so I think it's tied up right now. One to one. Might even get a whole race to five in. Oh, 
Oh, he almost scratched. He almost gave that one away. Well, it, it actually ended up pretty good, too. Might see Kendall kick this ball in or play the 2 9 kick. Let's hear it. Who's going to win this one? We got our two guys in the booth playing. Well, Patrick's not going to be rattling any from the booth like that, but down there at the table, he's definitely got a little more chance. I'm the only one who rattles him from the booth. Yeah, it looks... Kendall's a quick player, man. He's not going to think about this at all. He got a little weird. He's still just going to get right down on it. No problem. Watch out, corner pocket. He's short, he's short of it. He's good. And he's got some angle. Oh, he almost ended up on the 50, but it cuts on the side. I might go try to sneak onto an open table myself here in a minute. Getting kind of jealous. There's nothing that makes a pool player want to go play pool more than watching pool. And there you go. He buried the cue ball. Cue ball took Kojak down to the subway. Patrick's got to shoot that ball where it lies, though. Shoot it from the trap. Okay, commentator versus owner. Probably feel like the owner has an advantage, huh? He he owns owns pool tables, so that makes him automatically better at pool. Short, that's going to be a two rails never fails if it makes it. Is it going to run out of gas? Yep. Just needed that extra, extra point to make it. All right. So I'm, get, I'm betting the owner's going to take a 3-1 lead here. Push through this just a little bit. Short, short on the nine ball. Bank City. Oh no, he cut it sweet. Kind of jealous because uh, in my seat, the monitor is in the way. It's harder for me to see the pool table, but in Patrick's seat, he gets a nice view of both the table and the monitor. What are they trying to do to me here, man? Just because I'm a young kid or what? I always got to bully the little guy.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what we got. There it goes. What a shot. <laughs> saving his own highlight reel here. All right, he's going to cross bank this four ball. I think you can see an edge, enough of an edge. It's close. There it goes. Off the nine for shape and the five. Squeaking by the seven. It's got plenty of room. I'm looking down the barrel. He's on the rail, though, so this isn't easy. <laughs> that ball, the cue ball went in the side as quick as the four ball, huh? <laughs> Man, we're having a blast out here. We're all out, out here at the WSPA. Thank you guys for joining. We're uh, in between matches right now. We just finished an A-side match. Now we got the production team out here. Keeping the balls warm for the players. Making sure that table doesn't get too too frigid it did start snowing outside so if you guys are out there be safe patrick's gonna get one back here watch the scratch it's the scratch in the top top right here let's see what happens. oh he hits it nice and soft I know you guys that we are between matches, but still we love, still want you guys to be liking, sharing, subscribing. If you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and do that so that way you can let us know in the comments where you're watching from. And if you're not subscribed, though, it won't allow you to comment. It kind of helps us keep the bots out. So we do appreciate and hit that bell notification, especially for these next four days. If you guys got any loved ones or any friends out here playing, you won't miss a uh, you won't miss us going live and see if you can catch your your friends and family on the stream here. Oh, there you go, Patrick. There you go, Patrick. He knows I'm giving him crap right now. <laughs> All right, we got Mark Bell. Hey, Mark Bell, uh, our first couple of matches have already started, but right now we're just waiting for our next one. I'm not exactly sure of their whole schedule. Um... I know that we just started the 3 o'clock round match. That's the last one we got done. So we might be waiting for uh, that round to finish. I know that we got... That was an A-side match. And we also had the first round of the B-sides start as well. So I'm not 100% sure when the next match is going to start. But I can definitely uh, see what I can do to go check on that. And Joseph, as far as the uh, the cut of the pockets, I'm pretty sure they are pro cut. It's not; they're not shit like uh, they're not shaved down or anything like super tight. I, they're still gonna be four and a quarter. Um, but yes, they're they're a pro taper. No, no, Mark, it doesn't cost anything to get in here. Just uh, peep on down, peep on in here. Power draw.
playing one pocket. One pocket nine ball. All the bottles have to go in one pocket. My turn, I'm going to jump in there. Okay, let the beat up begin. I just got destroyed by Kendall. But I did win a few games. Made some good shots and missed some ducks. So now we got Kyle and uh, Kendall going at it. We're just kind of messing around until we get a match back on the table. Kendall's at the table. Looking at some crazy shot here. He did get a good hit and totally hooks Kyle. But Kyle can see the two. The ball in hand for Kendall. Mark Bell, do you even play pool? <laughs> Andrew, thank you. Yeah, I missed some duck shots, but that's okay. Hey, Mark, are you playing in the uh, state tournament? Where are you at? You should be here. Or are you running the shuttle? I bet. Are you running the shuttle again this year? Oh, it looks like Kendall's going to be out. Ask Kendall, you're framing his 40. He must have gave you like 10 games, I'm guessing. Oh, I wonder who's running the shuttle. I'd like to know how often the shuttle is coming to and from. It's one thing I wanted to let the folks at no home, at home know. But again, folks, we're just messing around here, waiting for our next match. So. So, Mark, you played Kendall, and you beat Kendall four to two. I'm guessing you got like some type of spot like ball in hand every shot or what was the uh I'm just play Mark I'm just playing with you. Well, congrats. Kendall is uh he's tough. 
Oh, as you just saw, he just whipped my butt. Wow. Let's look at that. Let's look at this shot by Kendall. Goes, uh, does he kick three rails at it? Let's take another look at it. He kicks the one in. Maybe just two rails. Or did it hit the third rail? I think it hit the third. Yeah, it came off the third rail and hit it in. Ah, there it was. So he had to go to four, and you had to go to two. So you got two. Well, if it was four to two, who got to two first? Who got to four first? I don't get it. Are you saying he had to go to five and you won? You beat him two to four when he had to go to five? Because if he had to go to four and you had to go to two and it was four to two, Sounds to me like you guys tied. Uh, I don't know how that works. Oh, look at Kyle fluking. Fluking the ball in. But all right, folks, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go find out when our next match is and uh, whether it's going to be A or... We might have uh, Ten Ball Masters coming up. What time is it? Ten Ball Masters starts at six o'clock. So we might be going into round two of A or the B. Uh, I gotta find out what our next match is. So hang out for a bit. I'll go find out. I'm gonna put us on mute. Um, we'll just leave uh, Kendall and Kyle play at the table for a little bit. Uh, again, they're just messing around. So I'll be back soon.
All right, folks, um, I just got word our next match will be at 5 o'clock, so we'll be uh, going at it, 5 o'clock. <laughs> Kendall just said something. I couldn't make it out. But, uh, yeah, we'll be back in about 15 minutes, so just hang with us, and we'll have another match.
<laughs> okay, so uh, there's Kyle making, I don't know, what is it, three rail bank shot, four rails. We're just messing around. But look at that score, 17 to nothing, even though I gave you the last game there, Kyle. <laughs> hey, I did have a break and run, so there, miracles can happen, ladies and gentlemen. Miracles can happen. Um, are we getting close to 5? It is 5 o'clock, so we should have uh, a match up at the table here soon. But uh, thank you all for sticking with us. We are at WSPA, Appleton, Wisconsin, in the Apple or what is this? The um, Fox Valley Exposition Expo Center. Exhibition. But I think everybody fell asleep. Oh, we got this running on loop. Oh yeah, that sweet two railer that I called. Yeah, I don't know if you called it, but oh, I definitely walked up to the pocket and pointed. <laughs> I made sure everybody who was watching knew that I would. I wasn't fluking that one in. Fluked about every other ball I made in. <laughs> Let's take a look at our uh, overview here. WSPA, all new diamond tables, brand new tops, brand new felt. And actually, if you zoom in, if you look at okay, so our table is the bottom left table there. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see it, but look, uh, bottom left pocket underneath it, there is a ball holder there. Uh, I think it's made by Bad Boys. So I'll go zoom in on the side view, see if it, uh, see if you can see it. So if you're playing one pocket banks or what, you know, you need to take some balls off the table, kind of real convenient holder there to keep the balls out of the way. Um, so you can use the tray to like keep track of your banks or, you know, whatever you're playing one pocket. Yeah, those are good ball counters. Um, also good for like, yeah, like you said, if you're playing a nine ball and you don't want to put the balls on the ground, you don't want to have them mixed up in the trap. Yeah, nice little, nice little tray there. Oh man, look! As soon as we came on, uh, we started dropping viewers. Maybe we should get back off. <laughs> or get back on the table, huh? Yeah. I could go hit another sweet two railer. <laughs> Shot's not as easy as it looks. I can't believe I scratched at the end there. That was ridiculous. But I played um, bad shape anyway, so. I was just messing around. I was just, like, beating them around. Why is the cloth a different color? So our cloth is not a different color. If you look, we got a, uh, a streaming light hanging over the table. And if you look at all the rest of the tables, the lights are hanging probably you know, 30 feet up at least. So we just got a a brighter looking table. That's all. Yeah, you can see our table light there, and we also have a camera right uh, right in the middle of that as well. So that's another reason we bought brought our setup out so we can give you guys a a straight overhead view of the table as well. Yeah. So to give you guys a um, update on where we're at, I think we're going to be moving into round two here for uh, mixed B and mixed A ball soon. Um, but starting at six o'clock is going to be the mixed AA 10 ball and the mixed masters 10 ball. Also starting at six o'clock is the women's nine ball B and the women's masters in A for 10 ball. So a few more divisions starting up here at six o'clock round one. Hopefully we'll have one of those matches. And then currently we're playing mixed B nine ball, mixed A nine ball. Uh, we'll be in round two here shortly. So some people already have two matches down. I know Chris G. I uh, think he's playing in the A or the B. I'm not sure. I think he said the Bs. He's in the B division. So he's won his first two matches. I haven't seen him in a bit, so I'm not sure what, what his status is, but he seemed to be playing well. Yeah, it's a beautiful sight, man. Don't you love it? The state tournament. Bring all the pool players out. Yeah, we got some, uh, we call them vendors here. We got uh, Nate Mindham and uh, Q It Up Network. They're here. They got some tone chalk and gloves, uh, some other apparel. Uh, we got uh, the Magnet um, with Brad. He's here that's selling T-shirt apparel. Uh, we got Jacoby Custom Cues. Yeah, Jacoby um, just raffled off a Q, actually. If you uh, are interested in possibly winning a Q, head on down. 
Yeah, and they also got Q Repair. They got cases, sticks, you name it, gloves. They got everything. They got a really nice setup. And then Wisconsin Billiard Hall of Fame, John Kramer, he's got a setup down here, which if you're all watching, you should definitely be a member. Awesome organization. Uh, keeps the history alive here in Wisconsin. I mean, if you're elected to the uh, Wisconsin Billiards Hall of Fame, your name is forever cemented here in Wisconsin, which is really unique in the pool community because we are one of the only states. There might, I think there's another state or two out there, um, and I think John Kramer may be working with them to uh, start one. But we're one of the few states with the Billiards Hall of Fame, so it's really, really kind of cool. And they host an awesome banquet every year. Um, and basically everyone who's a member, they get to vote for who the inductees are. And then uh, at the banquet, they kind of reveal or, you know, who actually made the Billiards Hall of Fame. And there's also a, a really big tournament that they do. So Yeah, I know we got one in Arizona. We got a Hall of Fame in Arizona. You guys do well. have one? Yep. Yep, yep. Nice. Yeah, and I knew there was a few other states out there. I just wasn't familiar with. Which ones? Yeah, that one's run out of the pool hall I worked at. It was uh, Bull Shooters. And we had a whole committee and everything, you know. They always have inductees every year, so. Yeah, and if you guys want to update on the actual bracket, um, I've been posting it, you know, every few hours or so. But a link to uh, where you can get the brackets, it's at CompuSport. Um, you download the app on your phone, or you can go to the website, uh, whatever's easier. So, Oh, look look who is at the table. We got the people's champ, Ray South Strip Skinnador. He should have peeped on. Tell, tell Ray to peep on in here. Who am I talking to? Kendall's talking to me. Hold on. I don't said he's just, he's just messing around. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to have a match at five. Yeah. yeah, just talking with Kendall here. He's peeping on in. <laughs> and uh yeah, we got Ray just practicing at the table. We should have a match here coming up soon, so see what's going on. I should go play Ray and get dusted. Yeah, I know. I I was pre playing with Ray after we got were done commentating uh, last week, and he definitely laid a couple on me. Did he drill you? Yep. <laughs> Go watch uh, Raid get some warm up in. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's playing in the Ten Ball Masters tonight, starting at six. Wishing him the best of luck. Yeah, he'll he'll be in the Masters division if anything, I believe. Yeah, Ray. I mean, he's awesome, man. He sits in the booth with a uh, with a uh, uh, with us um, whenever he can. He's usually playing the Sunday eight ball and usually taking first place. Solid player. He actually was at uh, the Moscone Cup this year, oh, and uh, yeah. he was, like, hyping up the crowd. He had American flag draped around him. It was pretty cool. I saw some pictures. Yeah, I actually have a goal to go watch that this year. The Moscone Cup? Yep. You have to travel overseas. I think they're going Absolutely. back to uh, Europe with it. I, I decided when if I was going to watch it, I would like to, to go overseas and get the whole experience, you know. <laughs> Instead of just making the road trip down to Vegas. Yeah, it'd be interesting going to Europe for the Moscone Cup. And play and root for the Americans, right? I wonder whether I think they're louder in Europe, I think. I'm not can't remember. They're definitely a little more uh uh where they uh they'll hack heckle. They'll heckle the, the players more in Europe, whereas I think the crowd just kinda gets involved in America. They don't uh necessarily try to get at the players as much. Look at Ray going with this super draw <laughs> all the way back down the table. Just letting his stroke out. Feeling these tables. 
Again, brand new cloth, so they are running a little slick. Nice bank shot. Man, did you see that bank I had on the one when I was playing Kendall? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was actually playing a two-way. I was like, man, I can bank the one and drill it and possibly pocket the nine, and the nine almost went. Yeah. I drilled the one. It was kind of a cool shot. Yeah, just it's easier when you make them two at a time anyway, right? Yeah, I was doing that quite a bit, actually, today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Twofers. We call them twofers. But it usually does not uh, go well in your favor. I know, yeah. Usually that's the ball that messes you up. Yep. Well, here we go. Looks like we got our match. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go out, set up our scoreboard. Kyle, you wanna hold down the fort? We'll be yeah, yeah. we'll be back streaming here in a second, so All right. So yeah, if uh you guys don't know, Ray's a, a quite the high rated player. He plays here local, and we'll see how he does in the tournament. I think they're about to kick him off, and we're about to get started up here. Down here at the Fox Valley Exhibition Center in Appleton, Wisconsin. This is actually downtown Appleton. It's a cool little area. Lots to do. You guys want to pop out and watch some of the uh, some of the tournament? Maybe go hit a restaurant. You won't find yourself bored down here if you're in the uh, in the area. So definitely come on down and have some fun with us. Let's see what the the rest of the room looks like right now. There we go. Yeah, and as you can see, there's not really an empty table on the on the floor there. Might pick one or two up, but probably get kicked off pretty soon too. I know they're trying to keep this thing going. Probably a good four or five hundred people here. If you like if you like pool, man, this is the place to be. We should be getting started here in a minute. We did have a match scheduled for 5 o'clock, but this many people, this many brackets, you almost got to expect a little bit of a time delay. So thank you guys for sticking with us. Yeah, they're getting ready to enter their information in for us. And Get this thing kicked off when we get both players down here. His math just doesn't add up. Is that because of his hat? Yeah, there we go. We got both guys here. All right, there's the coin flip. We are ready to get this one underway. Okay. 
All right, I'm back. We got our match set to play here. We got Jack Coghill versus Adam Swenson. Don't really know too much about these players. Uh, see, we got Jack in the green, and then we got Adam in the, what color is that, gray? Yeah, we'll call it gray. We'll call it gray. So they just flipped the coin. I don't know who won the won the match, but you can see uh see you can see Jack, he's uh on the right sitting down. And then you got Adam, he's at the table right now. Giving a little wave to the overhead there. Yeah, it looks like uh he won the coin flip and will be set to break. So we are in uh, the third round of the B-side nine ball. So round three. So that means, uh, I think, uh, let's see, where am I at? I believe Adam has won his first three matches. And then Jack had a bye and won his next two. So we got round zero, one, and two out of the way into round three. All right, here we go. Here's our opening break. All right, so yeah, Adam breaks and... He made the wing ball right in the corner. With a shot on the one. Yeah, so that's a good start. So what's going on on the chat here? Sean Wilkes, are they selling any of the tables after the... I believe they are, actually. Probably around six grand. I'm not sure. I asked that question, and they're like, yeah, I mean, some of them are for purchase. Uh, I don't know exactly how to coordinate that. Maybe something I should find out. A lot of the times they end up raffling them if they if they know a lot of people want the tables. But I believe they do get rid of a, at least a couple of them. <laughs> Two Stroke says this guy shooting his math just doesn't add up. Yeah, He's that, talking about Ray. Yeah, he his must hat. Know, yeah, he must know Ray pretty well. But uh, yeah. So what I know is like uh, Diamond has 400 tables. Um, with them in their inventory, and they got an additional 200 on standby. And then some of them are for sale because they do got to kind of go through the tables. But all these tables here, all brand new table tops, brand new cloth. So tables are in really good condition. And Two Stroke says, yes, they're selling for $1 million. <laughs> All right, so a, a fairly difficult starter here going between the balls. So it looks like he just elected to play safe, safety, and that was pretty solid. I'll tell you what, the directors are on point here at the tournament. I mean, they were supposed to start this match at 5 o'clock, and I think it was like 5.15, and they were over here like, where, where's every, you know, start the game, and they just called it over the loudspeaker. Like, if you don't have your opponent at the table, you need to call a ref because it's going to be considered a forfeit. Yeah, they'll put them on the clock, and then you have 10 minutes to be however long, 10, 15. Okay, so there's a foul. Mark Tether, you're on the clock, table 94. All right, so who do we got? We got Jack. He's got ball in hand right now. Got the two ball to the three ball. It's kind of a could be a tricky table. What's he looking at though? If that two ball passes, that two ball does not pass a five. Right. This is so. This is the this is the prudent play. I think you just roll up and play the short side for the three in the top left. Where is he going on the side? Does it go on the side here? Yeah, it's got to go on the side. The two ball should go on the side. It just doesn't look like he's playing it in the side. The Might be playing good. safety. He, he did get a safety last Okay, uh, yeah, it go, goes on the side. They are playing three foul, correct? Yes. Yeah. And so he, he definitely... Uh, Adam is on one. But it looks like this is more of a run out. Well, it's done now because yeah. Jack's made a ball, so... Oh, and... 
is going to get hooked on the five. He had a funny angle there to get to the five, so I don't know what the plan was there. Yeah, it was it was tough uh, to hold up. It looks like he is getting down like he has an edge. He might be kicking behind it. Yeah, spinning into it, it looks like. Yeah, he, he was able to spin into it. Actually, did he hit it first? No, no. He, he kicked at that ball. Oh, look at it again. It almost looks like he hit it first. Oh. Um, and he actually hit, got a good hit there. Let's good look at separation. That again. It's yeah. so close. He had to come off the rail first. And then it had that top spin off the rail that made the cue ball die a little bit. So this is not an easy kick. You can maybe squeak it by the nine with a bunch of, a little bit of mass A to come off of that side. Or you can come to the end rail, which is what he's aiming up right now. I think that's a little easier of a hit. Um, still going to be tough to get a, a real clear safety, you know. You're going to have to hit at a medium pace to get a little separation and hopefully end up behind the seven somehow with the cue ball. What is that? Oh. Yeah, that's what he did. He hit it with a little pace and that shortened that cue ball up. The uh, the rails are really reacting pretty well. They're really live, you know, and they're not super grabby, so it spins off of the rails real nice, and that kind of causes the cue ball to have a reaction after contact more than simultaneous with contact the cue ball's acting a little different so if you're not really familiar with playing on real new felt all the time it can be a little tricky to dial in yeah and th these tables were supplied i be believe by diamond so they are going to the next venue but when i was talking to the gentleman that was setting them all up um he's kind of in charge of the show uh he says he told me that yeah i mean there's a possibility of buying one um there, there's not a whole bunch for sale, but I think there's something that you could work out is what he was explaining to me. I just didn't go into details with him about how to do it because I'm not in the market for a table. I, I got an old housing, eight foot that I enjoy. Um, but the diamonds are nice. I actually, if I had to do it all over again, I'd, I'd, I'd actually get a diamond. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you had your table, though? Uh, two years. Two oh, years. yeah. Yeah, and the last five or six years, I think diamonds really become super prominent. I mean, they've been around for a long time, but they've really, really taken over in the last two or three, five years, you know, five to ten. Well, one of the great things about diamond tables is the leveling system. Yeah. It's got an interning leveling system with, I, I can't, I don't know if it's shims or something, the way that you can screw the shim over. Mm hmm he was explaining it to me like you can't shim it in to the slit, but you can sl shim it out, which is a little bit easier. Um, and you can get a really precise level on the table. And they're all the way around the table, which is really nice. Yeah. And uh, another good thing about diamond tables, too, especially for traveling and, like, setting up, you know, professional tournaments, is the ease in which you can take them apart and put them together. I mean, it's... Really nice. Yep, yep. Construction's quick. They move easy. It makes these events really easy to coordinate, you know, and we really get the best equipment. Oh, Sean says he'll be able to play Kings come March. So that's awesome, man. I'll make a note, uh, and I'll hit you up uh, probably the end of February or maybe the beginning of March. Um, be awesome to have you back. So he's talking about our King of the Hill match. Uh, every Friday night, 7 7.30, we, we go live uh, streaming master level players. Uh, we won't be going live the next two weeks just because of WSPA and the Badger State games. But typically we're streaming pool every Friday. Uh, it's uh, King of the Hill. And then Sunday as well, we got our King's Court matches, which we got our Queen's Division. That starts at 11.30. Our gestures, which starts at 1.30, and then our Knights division starts at 4.30, and that's every Sunday as well. Watch the scratch on this ball. 
He avoided it real nice. He rolled that a really good pace to where there's no deflection. He got all the way through that cue ball and uh, made sure it didn't hang up on the one ball to find the side pocket. He was able to get through that point real nicely and pop out from the middle of the two. So just because a player makes a shot doesn't mean the opponent isn't on a foul. Yeah, I get what you're saying. But it does got to be three straight consecutive, correct? Yeah. Yeah, but, three straight. Well, um, well, what I was saying, though, it was Adam that was on one foul and Jack was at the table. So if Jack decided to make a ball and play a safety when he comes back up, that's he, still going to be two if he, he gets Adam two. again. Yeah. But making that two ball would have really taken away any good safeties. He, you're really shooting for the run out, which he got, so no arguments. And he's powering through this rack as well. Oh, you know what? I don't think I taught him how to use the scoreboard. I'm going to run right back out because the first game's already done, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna Jack go, won the first one. I'm going to go teach him how to run the uh, scoreboard after this rack because I don't think they know to score it. That's my bust. I should explain that to the players because, uh, again, remember, everybody that comes to play on this the streaming table, they're, they're new to the stream probably. So, yeah. So they don't know that there's a scoreboard. <laughs> and that our scoreboard out there that they keep track of is a live scoring. They keep track of the score, and you guys see it translate straight to your screens. Actually, I might need to check the battery on that thing. Oh, yeah, true. We do have tablets on backup, though, I believe. All right. So 7 to the 8 seems pretty easy, and 8 to the 9 shouldn't be a problem. Right. This is holding your nerve. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna work out nice. And this is a B side match, guys, so they're racing to five. On and the it, winner side. Yeah. Uh, on the on the one loss side, they're racing to four. And right now we're in round three. Yep. Just probably roll through, bounce off the rail a little bit, and make sure you don't have to hit the nine ball off the rail. He's seeing about how thin that angle is coming off the rail. He can come all the way across or just bounce off it. I like just bouncing off it. A little easier to control. Yeah, Sean says diamond leveling wedges are the key component of state-of-the-art leveling system used on diamond tables. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say offhand, but I want. I know there's quite a few of them wedges in there. Uh, I'm not going to say how many. I, I believe it was upwards of like 48 or something. I, I don't know what the exact number is. I know it's quite a few. They go all the way around the table. The only other table I know that is unique is the, the Razan table. Um, they have like... Um, oh, yeah, Ras Rasson. Yeah, Rasson. they got like... Uh, it's a ratchet system, like, and you can dial it into like a, a thousandth of an inch. You can elevate it mm -hmm. with like a clicking system or something. So that's pretty cool, too. But diamonds are really nice because you can get them. They're just, you ain't got to worry about shimming it with, like, you know, a piece of wood, then a playing card, then mm -hmm. a piece of paper. Um, it's got a really nice shim system. And it's it's like, it's kind of like, I guess, backwards almost. Like, you know how you, you would pound a shim in? Yeah. This is set up so where you can, like, pound it out, which is very unique. Yeah. Probably, it's much more precise that way. Yeah. Oh, man, I forgot to go tell him about the scoreboard. I'll be right back. Nonetheless, that's going to be 2-0 for Jack. We got Adam breaking because it is a alternate break. He did let the cue ball go a little bit. And unfortunately, comes off the table. It's going to get ball in hand to a very hot Jack. He's, uh, he's stroking the ball really nice, getting out. When he know when he should, so he's got another good opportunity to increase his lead to three nothing. Probably start with the one in the bottom right. It's kind of a decision on what he wants to do with the three ball. He can. I don't like moving the cue ball too much, so it's just like a you play a three in the side or three in the top left corner. I think three in the top left corner naturally leads to the four ball the best up there by the eight. But uh, we'll see what he decides on. All right, got the scoreboard figured out. So 
Jack's up 2 nothing at the table. Looks like with ball in hand, huh? Yep, yep. He let the cue ball get off the table there, Adam. Yeah. Oh, wow. I wonder why he didn't try to get, like, just straight on the three and then play a stop shot. Like, up up to the bottom left. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Now he's got kind of an angle. He's got to go back up to the top rail, maybe, and come back down. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to have to really yeah. smooth this ball in because... Table oh, man, I left my tom quick. chalk out there. I got to go grab that. I'm going to blame that on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I think he went for the bank there to try to hold the cue ball. It was a real thin cut to the side from that, from that angle just because... Uh, the cue ball can get away from you off that end rail because of how slick the table is. So he was trying to hold the cue ball with a bank, and he hit it short. That was not my chalk. <laughs> I had it in my pocket. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, it looks just like my chalk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he got it from the same place. Yeah. Just missing the four ball there. That's a nice touch. And now the, that opened up the ref to this rack. He's just going to be one. Be a little careful about how he plays the seven to the eight. Now, do you slow rule this, or do you bang it off the right side rail? I'm like draw. I'm bang. drawing this. I'm yeah, drawing draw and bang it. This. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that too. You could just slow roll it too, but then you're gonna have a steep angle on the seven. Yeah, it's coming off the side rail. That's nice. Yeah, he ended up real straight on that seven, but he's still floating towards the nine here, so you still got a decision to make on what side. I think I draw actually. Yeah, right. I don't, don't want to come on. Yeah, exactly. Just like that, because if you're on the inside of the nine, then you could get straight and get weird. This way, he can come out and play the nine on the side, relatively easy. Yeah, and then if you get bad on it, you can play it in the corner, right? Yeah, I so like. I like that option. So did he. It looked like it was the easiest out, and he made it look that way. That'll get him on the board. Yes, sir. And that's going to make it 2-1. We got Jack with the lead coming up to hit the break. Man, it's so cool. WSPA underway. I mean, I've been looking forward to this event all year. Um, always a lot of fun. And uh, we're in the thick of it now. I mean... And the next hour, we'll have the Masters Division and the AA starting as well. And then we're full steam ahead all the way through Sunday. Yeah, so. it's a full house, you guys. It's a packed building. Come on down and watch some pool. Yeah, be careful. I guess the roads. I don't know how the roads are doing, but we're supposed to be getting a lot of snow tonight. Um, or today. I don't know. I haven't. Man, I've been in the booth all day. I haven't even looked outside. Right? Really. It was just starting to snow when I was pulling up. I got here about 1 o'clock. All right, so Jack hit the break pretty solid last time he, he was up. Let's see how he hits these ones. Hits him a little off center towards the middle and lost the cue ball on the other side. And that's going to give a real good looking layout to Adam. This could be a tie ball game pretty quick. Three to the four can be a little bit of an issue because that five ball cuts off the uh, easy the corner, easy path from the three to the four. So Yeah, if you could get the cue ball up to the top spot there, then the four goes pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Well, you not anywhere, but I mean. want to get close to this three ball so that way it's easy to navigate the cue ball. Any angle, I feel like he can kind of work to get down across that side, other side of the table. You just got to be close. I'll tell you what. I like getting the cue ball maybe to the rail, and that way when you play the three, you'll have enough angle to get the cue ball to come off the rail in between the eight and nine mm -hmm. and work its way back up table. Like straight outside. Yeah, I see. I think that's what he liked as well. He just overdrew it a little bit, but he did open up that pocket real nice. So now this can be a sunshot off the rail. Yep. Yeah, the four goes now. He is a little straight, though, so I'm not sure if that four passes the six, but he might be drawn straight back to the table. It does pass the six, I think. So, yeah, if he drew, he'd be fine. 
Oh, he really drew. That was nice. Yeah, see, he's still not going to get there for the side. But is if that it goes by the six? If it goes by the six, it's half a pocket, maybe. I think that's a full pocket. Yeah, then he shouldn't have any problems here. You just roll forward for the five. Yeah, he's got that. Yeah. That was a complete full pocket. That was a full pocket. Center pocket. All right, so he'll probably just trickle this ball inside. I'll tell you what, the way he drew that, that was uh, that did not look like a B player shot to me. Nah, both these guys are playing pretty that, strong. That looked more like an A player shot. And Jack had a break and run to his, for the second game, I believe. So they're playing strong. They didn't win their first two matches by accident. Oh, wow. You can't. I mean, I see what he was trying to do, like coming off the rail. But when you hit it that hard with that small of a pocket, bad things will happen. Yeah, it almost never goes in, and I know from experience. But I tell you what, he got okay. I mean, nothing easy here for Jack. But, yeah, I mean, if he drills that five, even if he left that cue ball on the rail, he still had a relatively – Decent six ball shot. Right. So there was no real reason to force it off the rail like that. He could have probably just played it nice and easy and been fine. Um, that's what we kind of call playing to get too perfect on a ball. Um, don't think he needed to get that perfect or that good. Oh, he's going to play a kick shot here. He's going to play a one rail right now. He's doubling the angle. I'd almost... I'd just be going for a hit right now. I'd be, I mean, if he kicks just off this bottom rail, he'll send that five up table. This is this is missable. See, that's missable. Yeah. Now you give ball in hand, where and I'll play the replay. But if you just come off the bottom rail, let me see. Yeah, if you're looking at it, you just come off the bottom rail and spin into the five. That five will go up table, you know? Right. And at least you get distance, and it's an easy hit. Yeah. But that's that was a missable shot, and then you're giving up ball in hand. So Adam kind of happy to get back to the table after missing the five in the side. Wants a little more angle. Just float this five ball in naturally to get to the six. Yeah. Just you got to be careful because these tables, uh, they're, they're like brand new. Um, so the cloth is slick, so this cue ball can get away from you. So probably doesn't need as much as he thinks. He hit that good. Yeah, just nice and light, pretty floaty. He's got a little bit of an angle. He'll probably just draw straight down, down the middle of the table. Preferably stay on the right side to get a little more straight on the eight, but you still need that angle to come probably two rails around the, to the nine. Two, maybe three rails. Technically playing short side. So you might have overdrove that ball, and now he's straight. So this shot just got really, really difficult. Yeah, you almost want to play for the bank shot here. Yeah, like a cross bank into the bottom right. Yeah, wherever you're comfortable, you know. You could roll this ball forward or pull back on it a little bit. I mean, you could go, you could bank this. It's almost at the center of the table on the top there. You just got to find out what's kind of comfortable for you. Yeah, I it's think not I might consider the cross bank in the bottom right, sending the cue ball one off the end rail, maybe two. There, It's kind of a kissy shot, but with the slick, sh with slick table, you usually slide through that. See, I'd like leaving the cue ball right where the eight is and back banking it in the bottom left. Yeah. Or um, roll a little bit or pull a little bit back, and then you'd play in the bottom right. But that's kind of how I like to play that shot. Everyone's a little different. There's no easy shot here. There's no there's no easy way out right now. Yeah, and you're on the rail, so that limits your cue ball options. Unless you could super power draw this or super follow. Um, he might be hitting the follow. Look at this shot. Is he going to get to follow. the other side of the nine? Yeah, he... Still Again, gonna... you would need a super stroke for that shot. He did a great attempt. I mean, he's only a few inches short. Yeah, I mean, to, to hit that ball any harder, that eight ball becomes really missable really quick. Yeah, Rush was saying, yeah, he has some angle, but with the angle he had, he had to really force a stroke on it, and, and he almost got there. 
It's all, this is almost cuttable. I just don't like cut. I'm banking this ball right now. Yeah, you have to bank it. The cut's not really there because if you miss it, it's always going to sell out. There's no way to get close to this nine ball and not sell out. I mean, if you cut this ball, you can even end up on like an errant two two rail scratch. Yeah, Rush was saying, yeah, that's the correct shot. I was like, yeah, you're right if he load it up, but. I mean, he did load up pretty hard on it. I mean, I don't think he could have hit it much harder than he did without forcing an error or something. He hit it really well. He just he fell a little bit short. Yeah, and now he'll play this, this uh, straight back bank. Yeah, this is in danger of a double kiss. Got to play it right. Yep. There. He hit a little top spin there, which is why the cue ball died on that end rail. And that also widened out the bank a little bit. So that's why he missed that nine ball. If he played a little low, it would have stiffened that nine ball up a little bit, and he might have missed it short instead of long. So it was a close attempt, but I would probably reconsider the spin I would put on that if I had tried again. And he left a pretty straight in nine. That that shot was much more of a safe shot than a cut but still really hard to leave your opponent safe all right looks like three to one jack on top racing to five yes sir and we are in uh, round three of the b division so and remember when i say round three you got to figure round zero then you got round one round two so now we're into round three uh, so I believe Adam, for instance, he had to play three matches already. He's won all three. Where Jack had to play two matches, and he had a bye in round zero. So this would be basically their fourth match, so to speak, round three. Yep, yep. And we got alternate breaking, so we're going to have Adam to see if he can return the uh if he can force the issue here because you don't want to get away too much if jack wins one more he'll be on the hill and have a three game lead which is a pretty tough fight from there oh you know what i forgot about i don't think this is going to be an issue i think it was a facebook thing when we used to stream mm -hmm. we used to stream on facebook as well so it'd go to youtube and facebook the but now we're primarily youtube but with Facebook at eight hours, they would just cut you off. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think with YouTube, we keep running through. So see how that works. I do believe you're right. We can go longer with YouTube. Ooh, and that's a scratch right, right in the side. That's the second time I would think he's done that. Or it's either one a piece where they kind of scratch extremely off the one ball. Does that torture you? I don't know if I'm saying that right or reading it right. It says uh, you bank the short rail, pocket speed, or pro side, never hit that hard. Yeah, so what he's talking about is just where if you miss it, you leave the cue ball on the right hand side rail up by the diamond by the middle pocket, and you leave the object ball middle pocket or uh, diamond on the left side under the side pocket one diamond and kind of split them so that you don't sell out it's a tough shot to commit to when you're hitting a two-way shot though a lot of the times when you play a two-way you end up going with your second second direction than your first I mean, what's this rack leading to here eight nine combo maybe yeah unless he can he could use the five to bust the eight out if he wants if he gets the right angle yeah that the six is pretty accessible. I don't know because the side pocket's pretty skinny from where he's that six ball lays. So he'll want to get really good on the five. He'll really want to focus on this shot if he wants to break him out now. Yeah, Roger Pregler was just uh, referring to what I was talking about with the time. I think on YouTube we're good. So Ooh, we got Kendall in the house. He's peeping on in. What's going on, Kendall? Yeah. Five to one. Oh. 
This is uh this is really critical. He's if he does want to break that eight ball out, he's gonna want to draw this ball back about half a foot, almost to where the cue ball is now. So that's really good. He's naturally going into this eight ball, still pretty difficult to control. The thing is, you don't have to move that eight ball a whole lot. You just want to bend, bounce it out enough to where it goes past the nine. So that opens up your options. And he came into the middle of them, which is going to trap the cue ball a little bit. So he'll have a tough shot coming up here, but this is the, the shot of the rack now because he solved every other problem. The rest of them are just hanging. So big shot here. He might play in the side, trickle it in because... It's a it's a pretty good angle to just trickle it in the side, but it looks like he's gonna stay away from that side pocket and come off the side rail for the seven. This is gonna be a long, smooth stroke. Yeah, he overhit that ball a little bit, so he got a little funny on the seven. It's still straight in up past the nine, but a little close to his work and a lot of blue between the object in the pocket so this is one of those where you want to hit real center ball and make sure that your line is real good yeah i was just chatting it up with the boss so sorry about that yeah he's got a tough shot here patrick these aren't so easy when you're real close but he drilled it dead center Ooh, so now what this could get a little funny too he's got to play this just right yeah, he'll play. You see, he's playing it with a top In, inside. Inside. To kill. But the inside makes it very missable. And that look, you get on the 50 table. yard line. Is that slick table? It just didn't bite. It just didn't yeah. bite like he anticipated. Yeah, with that shot, it was just like, I almost see that shot unless you play it right. Like you're talking about, it's go, you're going to the 50 yard line because yeah. there wasn't really a way to hold it with the angle he had. You couldn't really stop shot it. I mean. Right. There's a lot of distance between that eight ball, too, so it's really tough to be touchy with the cue ball. Yeah, you can. he can cut this over. You just got to be careful. He's got to shoot it right. The one thing people do, like I do this a lot, when you're making a shot is you undercut it. You're going into the top rail. You know, if anything, you aim to overcut this shot, you know. And there it is. And I mean, I see that all the time, right into the top rail. So whenever you're down on that shot, just think, I'm going to overcut this ball just a little bit. And when you go to overcut it, you just end up making it. At least that's how it happens in my mind for some reason. Yeah, and if you do overcut it, it ends up a little closer to that end rail more times than not to where they still got a really, really thin cut, whereas now even that little bit of a, you know, half an inch off the rail makes a huge difference in making this ball makeable. This is a real makeable nine ball now. You just got to hit it clean. And you got to be careful of that corner pocket because that top spin is going to want to drag the cue ball to that bottom left. So with this shot right here, outside spin all day, and you, you, you can have a lot of air in your shot. Mm -hmm. An outside spin, just a little bit right here, is going to help that ball in the pocket. And I couldn't explain to you the physics of why. It's just I'm a field player. I'm not a – I can explain every shot. There it goes. But, yeah, you see, I'm a, I mean, look at – he didn't hit it dead straight in. No. But he did have a little bit of outside, and that's the correct spin to get that ball just to finish walking in. Yeah, yeah. and and that's that's inducing throw on your object ball. Yeah. And so the, uh, the basic rule for throw is left spin throws the ball to the right. And right spin throws the ball to the left. So he's putting right spin there, and that's going to throw the ball left of his natural angle contact point, which is actually making it a thinner cut with a thicker hit. So that's exactly why that works. Kyle, you make me sound like I'm in physics class right now. And you're, you're, hurting right. my you're hurting my brain. Hey, but, you, <laughs> but your, your intuition is right. That's yeah. just the reason of why. And so that's why if you're playing an inside spin shot, you want to aim thinner because it left inside from that angle, you have to cut it thinner because the left is going to throw the ball right. Opposites are going to always force, you know, you force the uh, opposite spin. Kyle, I think your mommy is on. 
Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> she'll, she'll be watching all weekend. Hey, Mom. No, you have Shout to Shout out to Arizona. Mommy. My mommy. <laughs> That's what we say to my mom. It's mommy. Yeah, the mama. Oh, right. wow, did you see the action on the cue ball there? Yep. I'm going to take another look at that break. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that, that happens when you put a lot of top spin because you get that deflection off the one ball, and then the top spin takes and shoots it right back to the rack. Yeah, watch watch the action on it. And as you can see, he's hitting the top of the cue ball Boom. there. Boom. Pretty crafty. He usually promotes for a pretty good split. Now, he didn't make a ball, but a lot of the times the cue ball kind of go in there and split up the rack if you don't get a good split. So let's look at the overhead here. Looks like you should be able to draw just a little bit and slide over for the two. Yeah, you want to put a little right spin on this one so that if you're coming off the rail, you kind of come back to the middle of the table, not under the two wall. It makes that cut really hard. So he looks like he's putting a little left on it. Oh, he ran into it. That's a That was a smart play. This yeah, is a good, good angle. Yeah, because you can get Two to the three pretty naturally here. Yeah, he's got this four ball down here tied up by the seven nine. So that'll be a pretty big issue coming up here in the next shot or two. He might play play to break that out right now. Unless he gets hooked. That's no good. Now he's got big problems. Oh uh, yeah, that's jail. This is a one rail kick around the five. It's pretty natural. Um the only thing is, is that angle doesn't give you much separation. And really, that's the only angle he has. Um, so he's going to want to hit this one with some speed coming off that side rail. And it's a makeable ball. The only thing is, if you make it, you're probably going to have to play the 4-9, which is not as fun Does as it looks. Does three is makeable? Yeah, yeah. It's well, a every, kick. A kick. Every ball is makeable, but I don't... I think this is a pretty low percentage shot. It is, but, well, I mean, as far as, you know, calling it and drilling it, yeah, but a lot of the times if you hit a good hit with a decent amount of speed in this shot, it ends up at a really straight angle straight to that that corner pocket. Actually, the angle is straight 45 here, or straight 90. You end up hit, see, see how you hit that yeah. ball full, and it always goes towards that corner pocket. Oh, so. look at this. Jack's going to come to the table with a shot. Yeah, and he's got a, I think he's got a little bit of angle. He can cheat the pocket to come out to the floor. Yep. And pop out. It just You don't even have to hit this hard. Just a little bit more than pocket speed, not much. Yeah, just make sure you get out past the seven. You can even take a cut on the four. You just don't want to end up right behind the seven. Ooh. Well, now it's good that he's behind the seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, I think he can get off this top rail here. Maybe. No, maybe not. What, around the nine ball? No, I was looking if he could come off the top rail, but he can't. There's no easy hit here. Even if he comes all the way down, down, down and table. back up, that's kind of like maybe two rail territory. Yeah, and that two rail, that second rail is right around the side pocket. It is. Yeah, so there's so that. No, left side pocket really those points are going to be big if he ends up going up and down the table Let's see what he's looking at here yeah he's going to play it up and down which i think is the only real yep. logical path but watch out for that side pocket he hit it good watch oh. out for the scratch and that was always the problem with that kick. You know, you got to come off and end up real close to that side pocket or you do hit that side of the three where it's really almost impossible to invite the scratch if you hit that side of the three. Um, so, yeah, that last kind of, you know, miscue. He's looking at the three, seven, nine. That's risky business here, folks. That is risky. Yeah, he'll probably play a little bit of a two-way, trying to get the three ball up table out of there if he misses it. Is there a minimum Fargo for the A? Um, or, I'm sorry, a maximum Fargo for the A? They, they don't go by Fargo. They go by the 
Oh, look at that shot. They go based off their WSPA rating, which is usually generated by their league operator. Um, but there may be a Fargo rating. Uh, again, I got to get more educated with the tournament director on how these ratings are determined and uh, if there is a Fargo rating for, like, the A division or the AA division or the, uh, you know, I, I don't know is the answer that I unfortunately have to give to you right now. Okay, and that's going to put Jack on the hill with that three-ball combo. He hit it pretty sweet. There was no two-way shot either. He was always going to leave something on the three there because he hit that three-ball nice and full. You know what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove that instant, instant replay. replay. It gets in the way. So, All right, we got Adam here breaking. He's down 2-4. He needs to win the next three in a row. Alternate breaking, so uh, Jack will have a break to uh, to try and run out if he ends up losing this game. Adam's got to really buckle down here. Trying to make that one ball on the side. It almost went. Yeah, he lost the cue ball a little bit. Is that one ball going to fall? So that's the thing. If, if the one ball doesn't go on the side like where he was breaking from, a lot of the times it will go to that corner. Yep. So it's kind of like a, you get two chances if you hit it hard enough to make it. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, a lot of the times they'll play for a wing ball in the top, you know, on the break, and they'll they'll try to hit that one ball two rails to that corner in, the, in a little bit higher level. So that's how you uh, – that's how they control the, the one off of the break without making it. It's when you see a lot of pros start to break and run packs. And, and so that is a real natural path for the one ball to take when you hit like a little bit of a cut. And He's looking to see if the two goes up past the seven or if it goes past the six. I think it goes past the six. Yeah, it should. Just roll forward here. He's, he's going to get in, fucked. No, he's going to be good. He's got a shot on the three. Oh, wow. He does right between the six, seven, nine. Watch out for the scratch. Wow, nice shot. Oh, the eight just leaked in front. Oh, no, he might have He might, he have, might this. have enough. If he doesn't, we could see a jump, too. It's, it's straight enough for a jump to where you... You it you have a possibility of losing the cue I mean, ball, but look, yeah, he's not. He even, can thin it. I just can he hit it full enough as a question. Like, yeah, he's getting down oh, yeah. on it pretty quick. Okay, and he's got some angle here, I think, to maybe get to the six. This yeah, is gonna be tough. You're gonna want to load up on the outside here, on the left spin. Did he get there? Can he make this six ball? So this yeah. is really touchy, though. You're going to no. want to roll through this. Yeah, he's fine. I mean, there's no chance. He puts some top on this. Mm -hmm. No chance he's scratching. Yeah, I don't just think. don't hit this hard. When you hit yeah. this hard, you get that deflection, which gets you in the side pocket. You so want to hit this really smooth. If he draws, he could scratch, but I think he's going to load up with top here. And he'll be fine. Just don't hit it hard. If he hits it hard, it's still scratchable. Yeah, nice. He hit it real smooth. He's got a clean looking run out here. A little awkward to get to the eight here, maybe, but mm -hmm. if he rolls forward, he should be able to bypass the nine. You got to make sure you come off that side rail if you're going that way because yeah. that nine ball is a beach ball. The, the key is to roll all the way to the rail and a little bit past it because mm -hmm. otherwise, that nine is you're going to get hooked. You got to go more forward than you would think here. And there, you did not get it's there. It's close. Nah, he didn't get there. You're right. Now he does have a cross cross corner in the top. Oh, he missed no, the seven. No, he missed the seven. We both thought he made the seven. No, I knew I, I knew that he missed, but either way, if he made it, he wouldn't have gotten to the eight. Yeah. All right, so we got Adam. He's not out of it. That's good speed. That's really, really good speed there. And he'll just float this eight ball in. He can pretty much... Anywhere from contact to the eight, it's going to get you to the nine in the side here. Just don't Joseph, overstroke it. Joseph saying they're not playing like pro cuts. Well, these pockets are uh, they're pretty tight. Um, I'm saying four and a quarter is what they're at. Yeah, they're four and a quarter. Yep. 
uh, the thing is, is that the rails are brand new, so yeah, every they're, bo- they're sliding in. Yep. The rails will not grab the ball hardly at all. So any angle that you have coming off of that yeah, slipping, rail, slipping in, it'll still slide in. Yeah, brand new felt, brand new tops. So. And it's kind of hard to understand if you've never played on a brand Ooh, new table wiped like his that. Feet wiped. It. See, like that shot right there, slid right in. I'll tell you what, that shot has. Almost no chance of going in on Sunday. <laughs> the banks are closed. I know you've been dying all day to say it. It's Sunday. It, it, it is not Sunday. It's not Sunday. It's that's our, that's our Sunday. But on Sunday, <laughs> that ball that he hit today won't hit, won't yeah. go because the rails will tighten up. The tables will tighten up over the weekend, and the the cloth will get worn in. And you know, I'm sure that we're going to see a lot of action. So. They will tighten up by the end of the weekend on Sunday. You'll see a lot more balls starting to hang up. So, yeah, Roger Pregler um, kind of answering one of the questions up earlier in the chat, like what's the minimum or maximum Fargo for A? Um, how do you, A good starting point to compare it, uh, I guess, is you can look up uh, Fargo BU rating. Um, it lists a chart with different ratings comparing Fargo – to the WSPA ratings. Yeah. It's kind of like a starting point, I guess. Okay, so that's a solid break. He got the cue ball to the side rail there. The six ball is not going to fall, so we think we're looking at a dry break. So if you guys want to know the rating system, there is a C, a casual division. Uh, From there, it goes up to the B division. From B, it will go to the A division. From A, it goes to AA, and from AA it goes to the top division, which is Masters. So all in all, five divisions. Uh, but not every discipline has every. Uh, level, I guess, uh, rating. So, like for example, there is no casual division in nine ball. See, there is a B. It starts at B, um, but there is a C division for eight ball. Yeah. So the nine ball division is probably a little smaller than the eight. We got a little more variety coming with the eight ball division. Yeah, and and like nine ball, let me see here. Like nine ball, there is no master's division. It goes up to AA for nine ball, I believe. But there is a ten ball master's, right? So there's mixed AA ten ball. There's mixed Masters 10 ball, and 9 ball only goes up to A. It goes mixed B, mixed A, and then you got women's B 9 ball, and then women's Masters 10 ball. So that's what you get for rotation. All right. Is he going to kick here? He's got a push out, but we don't see a lot of pushing. Yeah, I think he was trying to play aggressive. He always had a kick. I mean... uh or, I mean, a, uh, a push, but that was an aggressive kick to maybe maybe uh, get lucky on a ball or play some kind of lucky safe off a kick. So, Rush, technically there's five divisions. You got C, B, A, 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 and Masters. That's going to give ball in hand to Jack for the match. He's got a chance to run out to win it here. See, what is, uh, I'm colorblind, is that the two ball above the nine there? Yes, sir. So it's a little tricky. Is he playing safe? He's playing safe. Yeah, I like that decision. Yeah, because now it's super, Uh super easy to get to the two from the one now. Well. But he did leave it sitting in the pocket, and when you do that, there's always a chance. Yeah, but that five ball takes the easy cut away. Yep, there's no easy line to the one, that's for sure. So I think he played a really smart shot there. He got a little fortunate because he didn't mean to hang the one ball, but that five ball is is quite the ball to be blocking that one rail easy kick pass. You know, you know what a really fun shot would be if you're good with like Massane is just bang this cue ball off the bottom rail on the screen with a lot of inside left, like a lot of left. Yeah. And almost like where the center of the tape, like in between the center diamond and the diamond to the right, 
and kind of miss it back around. Yeah. I'm not saying I can make that shot, but I, you I see, know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I saw Jason Shaw make that shot in a match one time. It was, and it was tougher than this one. Yeah, where you really got to bend it. Yeah, really bend it off the rail. It's a fun shot, uh, not a reasonable shot to be taking. Not necessarily you know? a state tournament shot. Yeah, no. That might be a... But, I mean, what else you got here? I mean, he could come two rails, maybe between come under the four and maybe squeeze it between the three and the seven, maybe. But that's tough, too. Yeah, he does have the angle between the five nine if you stiffen the ball. You want to hit it with some low. Oh, low left or something? Not that's even nice. left, just straight low because even if you come a little short, you have a chance so off what's, the... What's he doing here? He's going between the eight and the rail. Oh, my God. He's going to make... Oh, oh, he had a chance. Yeah, there, there was a small window, but that was brave. That was very brave. He gave it a ride, you know. I still think I would have tried to stiff that ball past the eight. But. Good to see both players enjoying the match. They both looked at each other, had a little laugh. That's that's what I love to see when, you know, players miss a shot. They don't get upset. Yeah. They don't get mad. They're happy and, you know. I think we're all just stoked to be out here. Yeah. Nobody's. Oh, and look, this is going to put him. That would put him on three. That's, he's on two fouls. Is he on two? I believe, yeah, he. I believe he was on two fouls there, and so I wasn't keeping track. So the key thing to about three foul is you have to notify your opponent, hey, you're on two. If you don't do that, right, you know it's uh, on his incoming yeah. inning. You got to let him know. Yeah, you got to let him know, hey, you're on two fouls. Even if you, even if, let's say you, you, um, you hit a shot. You're right. He is on two. Because that safety he played, he played with ball and hand. Yep. So he's on two. So if he would have locked him on the nine, mm -hmm. that would have been a three fall for the win. Yeah. But I think he can see a piece of the two here. Yeah, yeah, yeah he so. can. Even if he can't, it's, it's, it's an easier hit than he's had. Uh, Adam, Adam's at the table. And he's so, yeah, yeah, he's on two right now. This is for the match, possibly. He's got to squeak by that nine, but, yeah, he had enough to get by. And he's going to end up with a real nice return here. I forgot to mute my mic, but. <laughs> All right, so brings Jack back to the table. Not a very promising out here. He's He does have the two. Yeah, the cue ball might end up getting away from him here if he ends up cutting yeah, it. If he's trying to come under the four, he could end up hitting it. And then that would that'd create some trouble. He does hit it. He hit the bank. He hit the bank. So he used the four ball as a stopper for kind of a straighter angle on the three, but he sacrifices distance here. Yeah, no easy, no easy path. I mean, you could slow roll the three and hold the cue ball here. Yeah. Or I he's going to have to bang it off the top rail and hope he doesn't get trapped behind the five. Behind the five. That's his only issue. I like going forward here with – a smooth stroke, you know, I think the cue ball is going to continue through the line off the... I'm just playing pocket speed and holding the ball and taking the long shot on the four year. He's playing safe, and he's going to get there too. Smart. Yeah, I like his approach. He's on the hill. He's making Adam force the issue. Adam's got to come back and win the match. He's in a real advantageous spot, so... Yep. As long as he's not given any easy runouts, he's still always got a good chance to win the match. Yeah, I mean, five to three, pressure's on Adam right now. Jack's on the hill. And, th I mean, the one thing that Adam has going for him is they're both on the winner's side right now, so. Yeah, they both got one left in the chamber yep, after this, this match. Double elimination. And so, this hit isn't too easy. I mean, uh. I don't think he's got the one railer by the nine, and the one railer on the other side past the seven. That seven ball is pretty big. Tell you what, he can't afford right now is giving up ball in hand again, because um, this table's pretty runnable with ball in hand. Yeah. I mean, yeah, six balls on the table. All wide open. Yep. So this is getting a couple of views. Just want to make sure that. When you kick this ball, you probably want to kick it with a little speed. you got to be careful with that side pocket if you come off the top side of the three. He hit it dead, dead full, so that's a pretty good result. 
He gave away a combo here. This is not an easy combo, but where we're at in the match and where Jack sits here, you got to think that he's he's feeling like it's looking pretty juicy. It's pretty teed up for him, and it's definitely not straightforward. So but there's the overhead view, so. He's a. Uh, He's definitely got a chance here, and there's kind of a two-way shot because the, the cue ball is going to come up and end up at the end of the table so he can hit it with a speed to split the three ball and the cue ball after he attempts his combo. Uh, you don't want to hit it too, too he's, he's, flat. He's going, he's going for this, huh? Three yeah, nine. yeah. I like it. Oh. Yeah, you got to try that. It's always going to have but, that just like oh, that. Oh, look at this. So now... Adam is forced to get a good hit because if he doesn't, that's lights, right? I mean, you got the 3-9 sitting there with ball in hand. Yeah, I might even consider coming by the side with the 8, so that way if I do end up missing it, you... Well, here's uh, here's he, the thing. I mean, if he can't see this 3, do you risk not, get, not getting a good hit, and do you just play the 7 into the 9 and take away the 3-9 combo? I mean, that's well, what he's got to contemplate. I think the play here is it's the safest. It's going to be the safest play is just kick behind the three off the end rail. Yeah, but what I'm saying is you got to kick to the three, right? Which right. is missable. And if he misses it, it's over. It's lights out. Nah, so he must be able to see this. You load up with a bunch of a right spin here and kick behind the three off the end rail. It's pretty hard to miss. Oh, my God. But he had enough of the three to see it and make it. Kendall, check this shot out. We're gonna take a. We're gonna yeah, take a look at the we replay. Definitely want to see that one again. I yeah, mean, that three ball was sticking out. Look enough. at this shot. It three was nine definitely combo. sticking out. Yeah, we got to get rid of this instant replay. It's kind of in the way, but what a what an incredible shot! I'm talking about just hit the three and yeah, he makes a three nine combo. Wow. It was always there if you could see enough of the three, you know. Yeah, that was the thing. I couldn't tell if you could see the three or not. And that's a little risky because if you hit it thin, you're always going to hang that nine ball. But he hit it good. He definitely had enough of that three to attack it. And they were they were wired, you know. Was... All right, Subkiss is back in the house. What's going on, Subkiss? You have you had us on all day? We've been oh. going. We've been going since what time? Eleven o'clock. Mm-hmm. I well, got here at one, but what time do we start to stream? One. Yeah, we've, we've been going for a while now. So. Hill, hill. We got yes, a hill, sir. hill thriller. No, it's five to four, right? It's four to four. Four to four, yeah. Four to four, race to five. It is hill, hill thriller right. on the stream. Adam hitting the brake. The pressure's on now. Yeah, he's had a couple scratches in the side where he's coming across the one ball, hitting a little two on the top side. So he definitely wants to hit these square. There's one on the side. Oh, Ooh. no. So that time he hit too far on the other side of the one ball and scratched in the same side he's breaking from. Oh, and here's the thing. You got an easy run out, or do you risk it for the biscuit? I don't think anyone goes for this 1-9 combo, but... Sometimes you'll see players go for it. I say yeah. no way. You got one to the two is very easy, and he's lining it up right away, isn't he? Yeah, no I, questions. I, I just I don't see this being a good thing. Well, you can always make it. Yeah, you can. I just that is a risky move, man. Yep, and you you tend to see this with a little bit lower rated players. Not that they're any worse, but. Just their percentages of running out aren't quite as high as, let's say, a pro, where they know they're going to hit, yeah. you know, nine shots in a row, hold, seven shots in a row. Hold on to your seats. Oh, let's look at ride. that. Hey, it was worth it, I guess. He it took was. it down. What a match. He what a match. Down. Good match, you guys. Good job. That was a good fight. And uh, All right, so I'm going to put you guys on pause. I'm going to step out for a little while, take a break, but stick with us. I'll come back in and let you all know when the next match is. Um, we should be going one after the other here all night, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know what time the last match. I'm I'm guessing sometimes we're here to like 1 in the morning. I, I have no idea. But uh, I'll let you guys all know when the next match is. should be soon. So hang with us, and uh, we'll be back here in a little bit. Yes, sir.
Welcome back. We are at the WSPA here in Appleton, Wisconsin. We have a ladies match coming up here. So that's going to be nine ball race to four. We have Morgan uh, Kotke and Heidi Ross. I believe Heidi is breaking here. She is, yep. All right. And race we're underway. Four. Race to four. So this is a B-side match. Yeah, Morgan uh, actually was one of my juniors that we had over at the Mad Apple, so she came for quite a quite a few of the juniors, um, and really a good good player. Yeah, we'll see how she does. This is her first kind of big tournament, state tournament. So uh, I know she said she was nervous when I was talking to her earlier, but she'll be just fine. She plays a real nice game. Yeah, those nerves tend to help you if you're prepared. You know, absolutely. Hey, guys, make sure you're subscribing to our stream. We really appreciate it. It's how we're able to go around and do this kind of thing. So uh, we appreciate it. It's just a couple buttons away, and uh, you'll know every time we go live. So, Good look at the one to start well, it off. That looked plenty relaxed. Yeah. Just kind of walked up there, got through her, her uh, pre-shot, and stroked it in. And maybe a bit too relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit overcut. It was not an easy shot. So uh, she, uh, we got Heidi here. She's got the 2-3 carom if she wants it. Two ball is going to be tough to negotiate for that. Carom to the three here, I'm assuming. Yep. yep. And where does that two ball end up? Not very good. Yeah, I'm not even sure she can see an edge. It looks like she might have a real thin edge, but it's tough to work with. She's got down on it pretty quick, so I've got to tell her she's got some kind of look at it. Oh, yeah, she had plenty. And that's going to unfortunately give a shot to Morgan, so this is going to be a good chance for her to set up and really relax, get in good rhythm to the match. Got around that six ball nicely. Yeah, a little too far though. She yep. needed to play forward. So that's a good safety. safety there. Didn't quite get there, but she is up over the top of the ball, so and there's some distance here, so something to be said for both of those things. Yeah. I'd rather be on the other side of the six ball, obviously, but <laughs> Still no easy stroke to to make this for. I think she was trying to make it. How is this going to come off the six? Oh, pretty. Oh, that's pretty fortunate there for Heidi. You probably see a kick, two, maybe three rails. Or like one. She's going to yeah. kick one rail. She'll, I don't know if she's going to kick for safe or if she's going to try and kick to pocket this ball, but I think. Probably safety would be not the worst idea. Yeah, it's definitely a higher percentage, a little easier to judge. And you can kind of kick and stick the cue ball. Well, she's going to come off fortunate, though. That's not too bad for what she had. Absolutely. And uh, that's one of those shots where you, uh, you kind of get fortunate going uh, half and half where you play a kick safe or a kick attack. <clears throat> All right. So this is going to give a just look. got a bear down here. This is a little bit uh They're both coming out a little quick. A little bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, almost got a good one there. It wanted to go. A little smile out of her there. She knew that was close. Yeah, and she didn't leave anything easy, so. I like Heidi kicking under this four ball. One, maybe two rails if she wants. Yeah, try and stick it on the eight ball here. Just kind of roll forward, I think. Try and hit middle ball almost on the four. Now she came behind it. Still going to be. Well. Oh, and that eight ball trickles could've in. Could have been worse. 
So she'll have a bank at the side. Coming out aggressive here early. Both players. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Look at that. One catches the point and misses, and one catches the point and drops. So Morgan going to be looking at... Uh Looking at this ball in hand, four ball out. Two of the balls go directly into the same pocket there to finish it off. So if she can get a good angle on the seven off that six, it becomes pretty easy. Yeah, and I like this. If she plays a stop shot on the six, just like that. Yep. That's a real nice angle. All you really have to do is center ball this. As long as you hit it hard enough to come out, you'll have a nice little cut on that eight, on that nine. Or... <laughs> Or you could play it off the nine, repositioning it to a perfect shot on the nine. Yeah. Bear down and take the first game here. Puts it in. That's a good shot to finish things off. That's a real confident stroke on that nine ball, too. That's what we like to see. You get down there, you don't let up on the stroke. A lot of the times you'll see a, uh, players who are a little nervous when they get into that stroke let up on it, and it ends up a little thick. So that was a real nice, clean stroke to finish off that first rack and take the lead. All right, well, let's, uh, let's take a real quick look again at the instant replay here. Shoots that ball off that ball, comes up, ends up in pretty good position. Yeah, and look, she hardly waits for that cue ball to end before she's ready and down. Yeah, so good work there. So. Those nerves are definitely working to, to her favor to where you feel like she's pretty prepared. We'll see how she hits her first break. Real square, real square break. She got real heavy on the cue ball. Not the biggest split, but it's going to work out in her favor here. That five ball came to her grace and it's kept kind any of kind of messed shot. Messed up table though, up top there. Three mm -hmm. and the two, all that's kind of jumbled together. It's going to make for an interesting rack. Yeah, we might see a little bit of a battle here. Can she see the edge? Yeah. Oh. oh. no, straight through. All right, well, Morgan with ball in hand maybe be able to make a little sense of this rack. Yeah, it's not straightforward at all. I don't know what to do with the two ball here. You could run into it, but it's always hard to negotiate with all that traffic where everything's going to end up. Um. I, I would probably play for a, a real nice aggressive safety off the two ball where I could bank it away and kind of hide it, use a seven as a stopper and right, keep it right behind the eight. So just roll up here, you're saying, and then play safety next on the two? Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. With this angle, though, she might play an attacking uh, back bank, you know, a straight back. Oh, we're going to see a kick. Oh, boy. Well, she's being aggressive, so. Yeah, they both are. They're both coming out swinging here, which is good. You always want to get out to a good start. I'm not sure where they are in the tournament, but if this is your first match, you definitely want to get those jitters out. All right, just pop out here for the three. The uh, eight ball reply replaced the nine ball there, so it kind of opened up those three balls. Still going to have to get good shape on the seven. I was going to say, it's like a drill here, though. You got the three all the way down rail to a four tight on the rail. Then you got one in the middle, one in the middle, and then two on the rail again that are tight together. So this would be one heck of an out no matter who is shooting it. Yeah, there's See a, where she gets. Absolutely oh. nothing straightforward. <laughs> Caught that ball a little heavy. This is going to be a tough cut for the three. Because where that four ball sits, it's, it's almost you just want to play a safety here. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to get on it. If you could reach this uh, easily, which... It's a stretch, I think, no matter what. But with a bridge, it would be yeah. uh, a tough shot still to get down table. But she ended up okay on that. She just went for the kick. Yep. 
Still um, not giving it straight forward out. You still got to hit this ball real good to even think about getting on the floor. Like even if you get to the last three balls, I don't think you got a straight forward out. Right. We might even see a little fly at the nine right now. I'm not sure if Heidi sees it, but she can definitely take a take a wing at banking three into the nine. You got to hit this one hard. Almost got it two rails to go, and she's going to end up pretty good up behind the five. She gave a piece of this three ball to Morgan, but you got to watch out for the scratch. Yeah, you might be able to cut this, but even if you don't scratch, you, it's tough to get over on that four. Yeah, cue ball's always traveling away from the four. It's the best look Heidi's seen, or I'm sorry, Morgan. No, Heidi has Heidi. seen yet, yeah. Yeah, this is the best look we've seen in this rack. It, kind of been a a tough looking rack until now so it's just got much more doable here okay she's pretty steep on this four ball cut she might have to go up and down the table i think from this angle i like up and down yeah it's real easy to hit that one thick, especially when you're trying to put some speed on it to come all the way up and all the way back down to the middle of the table for the five. The over and under on safeties this match is 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> I like that comment. That's funny. Uh, yeah, but that's what's great about nine ball at, at this level is it is a, a learning game still because you you do go aggressive a lot of times. You know mm -hmm. I mean? You can play safeties. But when you're playing on a on a B level, you're not looking for your opponent to necessarily run out if you leave them the full yeah. table, you know what I mean? So it leaves some room for learning and uh, I don't know. I think it's what makes nine balls so much uh, fun at any level. It does. That's, that's the beauty of nine ball is it's just a game where you're trying to make more balls than your opponent. Not necessarily outthink them, just outshoot them. Right. So we'll see what she does here. Yeah, I think that was a safety. That that might have been a little bit of a two-way where she was trying to bank it into the six. But I think she's always going to get some kind of separation between the five and the cue ball there. So still not an easy run out. Doable. All right. Stood up off that one, going to put a good stroke on that ball. You just had a feeling that that ball was going in after she stood up off the first one and ends up real good on the six. That was a great shot. I like this angle, too. If you cut this thin enough and slow enough, you got a shot. Well, that's another way to get at it. Look at that. Yeah, that's perfect. That's, that kind of came out any better, I don't think. Well, that's kind of trouble. Keep making them. Yeah, just keep gunning. That eight ball might be touching. I don't think there's a bank to her bottom left, maybe to her bottom right. Got to watch the double kiss. There it goes. Yeah, exactly what happened. Just going to hang up here in the corner and give some distance on this shot. Yeah, this is a real Pretty stroke Pretty straight test. in. Real stroke test for Heidi. Never easy. All right, trick here is to either bump the nine over towards the corner pocket or draw it far enough out so that you get a good angle back to the same pocket you're shooting the eight in. Yeah, I she like She bumped that. it perfect. She I like that, that shot. Great. She hit that beautiful. She did. She's looking to go up two to zero in this race to four in her first ever state championship playing. Yeah, that's awesome, coming out swinging. She said she was nervous, but you really can't tell. She's getting down, real confident over the ball. Great shots, sir, great, great shots. And uh, you can just tell she's came to, she came to play. 
Yeah, it's a pretty quick 2 nothing lead from Morgan. We'll have Heidi breaking to the third. We're playing alternate break today. And this is the women's B side. Or, How or big B, that uh, watch is. Can you play with a bigger? Do you play with a big old watch on your wrist like that? Yeah. Yeah, How I do. How do you do that? I don't know if I could do that. Which wrist is it on? Okay, it's on. Which wrist is it on for you? Is that your bridging hand? This is my bridge hand, yep. Uh, well, then it's not as bad, I guess. No, yeah. Hers is on her stroking hand, though. I don't know if I could have something on that arm. It would have to be real tight where it doesn't move. Maybe. My watch doesn't move, luckily. Nice break. Yeah, she hit those real square, and she made the wing ball right in the top left. She shot straight in, just like it's supposed to. I tell you, I kind of like running at this nine ball here. You got a lot of good things that could happen. You play that one five nine. Could Absolutely. go straight in, could go off the eight. There's there's things that could happen. So she's looking at it as well as she should. Yeah, it's a pretty big chance. It's a, it's a pretty big opportunity where you don't really feel like you're going to get a better chance to win the rack off of anywhere else. Oh, wow. Give it a good try. She, she skimmed off the eight. Right in between the two. Yep. Yep, you can't make contact with that eight any any more or less and not make it. She hit that eight ball any other way with that nine. I feel like that eight ball was destined to fall, or the nine ball. So Morgan with this. Oh, nice try. That was real close. Just barely caught the eight on the way by, so mm -hmm. ended up safe behind the seven. Yeah, that was real can aggressive. Can she see the edge there, maybe? Maybe. I think she might have enough to make this. Kind of Just close. passed. But that, that one ball would have fell if that eight ball wasn't blocking half the pocket. Yeah, it was. Yep, I agree. Just barely caught it. Oh, she had plenty there. Oh, wow. Yeah. You got to love nine ball, folks. That's a cheese ball. We love yeah. it. Give it a ride and let it happen. She just came over and said, whoops. Well, that's the best kind of whoops you can have, I think. So. Yeah, that's take, another reason. Take a look at this again. Banga, bonga, boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there it goes. Every ball is a rail and nine ball, too, you guys. Yeah, right. I just, I get a kick out of how many things have to happen right here for this nine ball to go in. Yeah, if you try that a thousand more times, you'll probably make one more. Yeah, maybe. Probably not even like that, huh? But nonetheless, we got a 2-1 match here with Morgan breaking in the four. They're both just kind of laughing about it. Yeah, I feel like that's all you can do when that stuff happens, you know, yeah. to anybody for that matter. You, you just laugh about it no matter what, whether it goes for you or against you. You just got to keep trucking. <coughs> Don't focus too much on it. Well, she hit that a little bit light. She let off there so the balls didn't move much. Yeah. May not have had the rack completely tight. Well, nothing easy on the one ball because it's not easy control if you do end up playing a real thin carom. I'm not even sure it's there. Um, we'll see how. There's also a safety if you want to play the other side of the one. I think she played the combo there. And that would have controlled the one ball very really nicely, but it makes that four ball real tough. So we'll probably see a fire at the bottom right here. There it goes. That's a beautiful shot. See the 2-7 combo possibly running into the 5. The only problem is you don't know where that cue ball is going, and that 3 ball is pretty tied up. I kind of, if this was me, I'd be playing the carom off the 2 into the 7, trying to roll the 2 over kind of to get past the 8 or into the 8. But Yeah. Gave it a run. This is a much more makeable combo, and you want to hit this one with really light pace to just leave the cue ball in the pocket. You can pretty much leave the cue ball anywhere as long as you don't get hooked. So the middle of the table is a good target for the cue ball. Just don't hit this one too hard. See, that was really nice pace, and she unfortunately... Uh, 
just hit that one a little thick and actually somehow found the side pocket off that end rail, which is pretty hard to do. Not the biggest biggest pocket off that angle, so it's usually pretty unfortunate to scratch there. But nonetheless, we got Morgan coming with ball in hand. She's going to try to run these out. That's a good starter. Is she going to bump the nine a little bit? She does. Jacked up over the nine a little bit. Always tough when you're jacked up over a ball. Kind of causes you to play a little bit of a pokier stroke. So you got to be a little more accurate. But she didn't sell out anything easy. It doesn't look like this cut is on. Oh, but that cut was on. You can see the three ball banks in the uh, left side pocket. All right, so we'll, we will see a bank. I'm not sure. That might have been a fly at the nine. We're getting, that three ball did find that bottom left corner and she's got great shape on the floor here to run them out so to get through this one it's all about holding your nerve that's a good smooth stroke from Heidi it looks like she has a good chance to work through the rest of this rack just make sure you don't overrun this six ball you're a little thin on the five but you got a a uh, lot of area to work with so you just want to make sure you just touch this in or double speed and come back out for the six she might end up under it but have a decent angle at the side yeah it looks like she's got a shot in the side but these are never the easiest shots you definitely got to treat these with a lot of care make sure you don't overroll it can't do too much with the cue ball here Oh, she played the corner, and she hit oh, yeah. great. Hit that ball perfect, and it looks like she may tie things up two to two. She can roll this in. Nine ball, same pocket. Yeah, I'm wondering if she'll play this two I'm rails. I'm nervous how she's hitting that. Okay. Yeah. She did slow it down. I. <laughs> she looked like she was going to crank that yeah, ball getting a little bit. <laughs> getting loaded up for one there. Yeah, but then she calmed it down right at the last second. And hit at the speed we would have thought. So a good job there. Two to one or two to two. Yes, Ties sir. Ties things up with a legitimate win this time. Tie tie ball game. Yes, sir. No uh no fortunate rolls there. She did all the work. So yeah, we got a close match here for our first ladies match of the day. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share. Thank you guys for the support what keeps us going for free and uh any donations we do get go to goes to our junior program which um mr cook here was telling me that morgan came out of she yeah. was a junior yep she was one of our juniors she still is a junior so she's uh, still a young lady i think she's under 18 yeah so she's pretty still, sure she's uh, 16 17 maybe Oh, she just go. got her license. I know that. So. Oh, okay. So 16, 17. Yeah, that's yeah, about right. Right in that neighborhood. Watch outside uh -oh. pocket. Oh. It's unfortunate. She hits him pretty square, just loses a cue ball to the right. So. Well, this is all part of handling the pressure of the match, too. You know, you started off with a nice lead, and uh, now you find yourself tied back up. you got to refocus. You've got two games to get back here. Yeah, it's a quick race to two from here, so mistakes are definitely multiplied. That's a great stroke, though. That's a good stroke to start off this rack. I'm not sure if that three ball passes the six. It's real tight. Uh-oh, get off the seven. Oh. Well, she almost crept out enough to see it, but she's going to end up having to kick at this ball. Yep, one rail right by the seven here. So has a chance to go in the... I was going to say it has a chance to go in the bottom right or bottom left if it goes by the six. 
she just uh -oh. I think she hit that one a little quick and that made the ball come off the rail a little bit a little bit sharper so we got Heidi back to the table with ball in hand no real problems on the table maybe the four to the five even the four right here though just getting on the four I don't believe it go maybe it goes past the eight yeah she doesn't seem too concerned so it might That angle, that that leaf tells us that it does. So she'll play one rail back to the middle, off the side rail for the five. Don't let up on this. The seven ball is a big ball if you let up. So I'll have to disagree respectfully. That angle only tells us that she believes that it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean it does go. Right. Well, she obviously has the best look at it out of anybody. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just, just... yeah that one, that stroke kind of tells us that it was a lot closer than maybe she anticipated as well. Ooh, she gave it a chance at the side. but That was a tough scratch in the top left. And that's going to be another ball in hand. Uh, Morgan might be on two. I'm not exactly sure. If she fouled her last stroke as well. I think she did. She missed the kick. So, not that the the three foul is necessarily there, but always got to remind yourself in the back of your head that you're on two when you're coming back to the table. Or if it's going your way, you got to remind your opponent that they're on two their next trip back to the table. Play a stop shot here for the five. Oh, boy. I think she just forgot to cut it because she would have slid over just a little bit if she would have actually cut that ball. She would have slid, giving herself a little bit more room on that five ball. Yeah, that way you kind of drift back to the middle. Well, yeah, if it wouldn't have hit the nine, that might have came out nice for her. She would have almost got her tucked in behind that 7-5, but now Heidi's got another opportunity at this 5 again. Just roll forward here, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely need to catch the top of the cue ball. Good speed. Really hit that nice. Yeah. Left yourself on a, on a pretty good angle here that you can get outside the 7 without too much work. A little bit of inside just so you don't get too wide. Right, she don't flirt like with that gonna side hit. pocket. Yeah, not too hard here either. You just want to float to the top rail, and yeah, she tried to force it maybe a little more than she needed to. Real she fortunate roll there. Came out smelling like a rose. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real fortunate roll. It looks like Heidi's uh, just overstroking those last couple balls, you know, probably trying to do a little too much. Got to take what the table gives you, relax, and take it one ball at a time. Not try to play too perfect for your next shot. I think Morgan could play this two rails, a little bit of spin, right around that seven ball. She's going to play one rail with a lot of bit of spin. She can play two rails under the five between the seven, eight. Just a little too much speed there. Shorten yeah, I think you're right. I think if you slowed it down a little, you'd get that uh, to spin a bit more. Yeah, the spin will take off the rail nice, and you got a good smooth pace coming at that five. Easy to judge. All right. Pulling this back with right spin. Oh, no, she played it top and played short side for the six. Well, and I know sometimes they just there's the comments about the skill levels here, but uh, I mean, the one thing that I'll say is you can still learn from this. <laughs> when you when you watch these games, regardless of the misses, you still can learn uh, if you're paying attention. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes that changes your <laughs> mind on how you would play it afterwards. You know, and sometimes it's brutal. I mean. You know, it's hard to watch sometimes. Nobody wants to uh, miss themselves, much less watch a bunch of misses. But you learn from them, and it's all part of how we get better, you know. And this young lady here, 
has not been playing that long and uh, really has a good game going. She's got a nice pace to her. I, li I like her stroke. You know, Morgan can play a real nice pool, so she's improving. And rotation's tough, too. You know, you put any rotation B player down, and they don't look so hot. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, you, you can really. But then if you get them a nice open table where it's comfortable shots, you know, you can see some nice uh, strokes at the same time. So. Where that skill is really starting to develop, you know. Right. Oof. Played that about as wide as we could go. Squeaked but, that uh, one in. Wiped its feet, as they say. But good job there by Morgan, taking game number three in her very first ever state championship. Yeah, she's on the hill first. She's got yeah. a good chance to win it. Just got to stay focused for this last rack, potentially, and move on. Take your first win. How about that? That'll really get you going, huh? First big tournament, first match, first win. I'm just not sure how to take this rush and crush gaming. No, it's a nice four ball out. <laughs> you being sarcastic. No, no, they meant it. Was, it was a nice four ball out. So good job by Morgan. I don't know. You guys probably watch me play. I probably couldn't do it. Well, they were watching before. <laughs> yeah, so they know. <laughs> they know. Oh, that's a really nice break on the hill. Holy cow, she'll take that one all day. Can you see that A little that backwards one? on the one, but tap it in to next. A yeah, couple things go right here, and it could go. Yeah. One or two good strokes left, and she has a good chance to break and run. Great and that's one there. of them. Come off the eight real nice. She tied yeah, up the like five ball. Shot. Tied up the five ball, so that's going to be a problem later on. She's probably not too worried about I'd it. I'd show you a replay, but we don't get the time. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> But good shooting there. Morgan's starting to hit a little rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... You got to avoid the scratch here. and No easy shape on the four. Make sure you she roll She knows this it. shot, though. She hit this earlier. Yeah, good shot. She hit that one great, too. She hit both those to the outside of the pocket, the hard side of the pocket to make the ball. you try and get between them or play the combo next? She'll probably play the combo. I'm trying to get between them. Well, she's kind of midway here. Yeah. So they got a little further. The five ball is on the rail, it looks like, and the eight ball is just off. So Can this is an interesting caramel? shot. No. Oh, she's cutting it up, yeah. Tough ball. Yeah, she tried to pull it off the rail a little bit too much, you know. She knew it had to come away a little. Yeah. So just over overcooked it. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of an overstroke again. Just when those situations come up, really smooth your backswing out, promotes a good smooth stroke. It really levels out your speed and your spin. Well, we saw a go for it. And is Morgan going to pay for the go for it? Yeah, this is this is pretty straightforward in that top le top right corner for the five ball. And then you got to cut and take a cut on the eight. <clears throat> and then she'll be deciding if she wants to hold or not. But she's got to make this five. Get in there. Oh, boy. Just undercut it. Yeah, it was a little off angle where that cue ball was running away from the eight. So you either had to put a real good stroke on it and put some power on it or really try to kill it for this for that eight ball. is never well, easy I think to Heidi's going to look back at this and see herself kind of standing up in the middle of some of her shots there. Yeah, hopefully she does. Uh, I think she'll get an idea of how to, how to improve her stroke a little bit or, you know, her touch. So two balls for Miss Morgan to take her first win. Don't overhit this one. Nice shot. She hit it good. Good off the rail. She can see enough of the cue ball to be comfortable. It's a good line for her. She'll like this shot, I think. Yeah, this is almost like a practice spot shot. 
like in the uh, World 10 Ball or the uh, Predator 10 Ball. How's your spot Puts shot? Like what that. a great shot. Match. Good job there, Morgan. Yeah. And, uh, good luck to Heidi as she moves into the one loss side. Yeah, that was a great, great match. So I'm looking forward to seeing some more of Morgan play. First well, let's game. Let's go back, take a quick look at that nine again. We'll watch it one more time. It was such a good shot. We'll let this roll on through. Yeah, that's a good, really good start to her <laughs> state tournament. So looking forward to see how she continues to compete. Yeah, she gets comfortable a little bit. You know, I mean, nerves on the, on the stream table, the first match. Brand new cloth, all that good stuff. Yeah, you can't uh, really put more pressure on her. No, you know, it's a good job by her first match off. That was a great match. And uh, good luck to Heidi as she moves on. And we'll be right back with you guys.
All right, everybody. Hey, can you hear me? Check, check. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Oh, he's not plugged in. His headphones weren't plugged in. All right. Now you can hear you. Well, I can't hear. I got to figure something out. But, uh, yeah, we are starting our next match. We're in the first round. So we've had round zero. And we got, uh, see, we got Spencer. He's in the blue shirt. And we got Jeff Lindy. I'm sorry. I think Spencer. I, I have to go and figure that out. Um, who's who? But we're racing to seven. AA, second or er, first round here. I have to take off. Kyle, you can hold it down. You know it. All right, so I think we got Spencer breaking right now. Yeah, that was Spencer breaking. We got Jeff coming to the table. Jeff is in the blue, and Spencer is in the black. So that was a dry break from Spencer. Nothing too apparent here. I'm going to scoot over to the other side. Got kind of a weird situation in the booth here, but I'll make it work, you guys. Okay, so we got Spencer at the table here. He's got to look at the one ball. You can bank it cross side. The two balls pretty tied up, so not a whole lot of fortune in that play so he chooses to bank it away he's got half the one ball hit by the five here probably be see a safety i'm not sure if he can hit enough draw to kind of hold the cue ball there between like the the nine ten and bank the one ball away off the end rail if not it's a real hard safety i don't see anything real easy Yeah, I wasn't sure he can make it, but it looks like from there he had a chance. Now, I'm not sure if they're playing early 10 balls. But if we if they are, we could possibly see something. Although I think the the rack is going to look quite different after this turn, but we might see him call the 10 ball now. It's a weird kick at the one. Anything could really happen. I mean, here you might want to just call the 10 just to be safe. And still play like the outside of the one. And not try to hit it too full and kind of leave the one there. Always going to leave a little bit of a cluster. And with that 10 ball so close to the side, it's always a, always a uh, risk. But he did call the 10 on the side. Oh, I don't think he caught caught the one ball there. But as I did predict, that's going to change the layout of this rack pretty heavily. So now there's no early 10 at least. And uh, him calling the 10, I just think that probably does mean that they're playing an early 10 ball. Even if they're not, if you do call the 10 ball and make it and you're not playing an early 10, usually the 10 ball is going to spot up on the spot and you'll continue to shoot. And that's kind of the, the same principle as if you accidentally make the 10. The 10 ball is going to spot, and your opponent will have the option on the incoming shot. And so that's going to be a foul for Spencer. And it looks like uh, Jeff is going to try to tie him up once again. I'm not sure he got all the way there. He might have left an edge. Let's look at the overhead. 
Yeah, he's got an edge of this one ball. So he can really clip this one ball, send the cue ball off that side rail that it's closest to, uh, and then off the end rail and out back to the middle of the table, probably past the side pocket just to get back into traffic and kind of leave it higher percentage of getting some kind of safety safety out of it. Let's see. There it goes, one, two. Yeah, it's tough to control that one ball because it's tied up against the 10, so when they're tied up, they tend to really separate, whereas if there's any kind of space, you can really kill that one ball, but because they were so tied up, tough to hold the one, and you're going to get a look. All right, so we got Spencer here. Can he play the one nine? Does he like the one nine? Yes, sir. Kind of bumped the two ten out so that looking pretty good. And that really opened the rest of the rack up. This is a nice angle to come float down for the three. You probably want to come run one rail and all the way back out just to ensure that you're not moving away from this four ball. And I believe that seven ball has that short side of the four ball blocked up. If it doesn't, it's really close and you got to get real straight on it. So I like him playing for the four in the same pocket as the three. And this is a nice angle. Yeah, just to stun out. That's really, that's actually probably a better shot. You're always going to stay on top of it. So yeah, just a little draw. Might come into the four. You don't want to come into it heavy because that's going to cause you to stay blocked on the seven. But he's got plenty of angle to work to that side of the four. Comes into it nice. He just kind of lined up the six, seven. So he's going to want to be careful of the cue ball. He does have a little bit of a problem here in that he's straight in the four ball. And the angle from this five to the six is very determinant on how you're going to hit that combo. So you just got to roll this four in, really. Take your medicine. Oh, he played real first to get a little closer. He gave himself a little bit more angle than he wanted as well. So he's got, let the cue ball go a little bit on this shot at least. You guys can all hear me, right? We had a issue with the mic on the other side, so I uh, I had to move back over. So I'm kind of reaching across the whole counter back here, trying to work, get everything working. That's a good five ball, but that cue ball is going to end up pretty close to that rail. So this is going to be hard to control the six and the cue. It's one of those where the uh, cue ball wants to end up on the end rail and the Six ball wants to bounce off the seven and come back towards the middle, kind of leaving you in a 50-yard line, no man's land. So he might hit this real hard, or he might really try to slow roll it and leave both balls on the end of the uh, on the end rail. But from that distance, is definitely not easy to control. Yeah, see, he tried to hit it all the way out so the six would come all the way out and. Usually you end up with a shot like that, but there it's just that distance is hard to pinpoint where you're making contact on that six. And rolling through, obviously, he did scratch. So it's going to give a real good opportunity for the first rack here. Let's look at the duo. And probably just stun this six ball back up to the middle for the eight in the side. Nice and straight on the eight is what you're aiming for here. Any kind of little angle and you got to end up moving the cue ball because of how lined up that eight ball is in the side. So you want to end up good and straight. Yeah, see, so yeah, he it looks like he does have enough angle to kill the cue ball and to just stop it kind of there and maybe draw an inch or two. But this is another one of those where if you hit it bad and you're floating for the 10 ball in, in no man's land. So he just decided to run with the cue ball and not have to worry about holding it. Coming off that end rail real nice and just cream this 10 ball in and hit it real smooth for the first rack. 
And that first rack is going to go to Mr. Spencer. We'll have Jeff breaking in the second. We're playing alternate break here. Ten ball on the double A division. Race to seven. So a little bit longer of a race. If you guys are new to ten ball, it's just like nine ball. You're playing the uh, one through the ten in order. You must hit the lowest ball on the table first. And in ten ball, as opposed to nine ball, you have to call your pocket. So it's called shot in 10 ball. If you accidentally make a ball in 10 ball, it's going to be your opponent's option, meaning it's not ball in hand. They play the ball where it lies, or they can give you the, uh, the shot to play back where the ball lies. So that ends up anywhere, you know, kind of rough for the incoming player on a, on a fluke shot. You can give it right back. All right. Oh, there is a 10 ball break. I think this table has a leak. We might need to see a, uh, an engineer about that. Have maintenance come look at this because it looks like he made one, two, three, four, five balls on the break. Four balls on the break. Yeah, he made four balls on the break and that 10 ball is going to come up. So real, real strong break. He's got the two ball that's tied up though it's the only issue with this run out and that eight ball is blocking i mean he might see enough at edge of the two to cut it at the eight but obviously no no reward there with eight ball blocking he can bank the two if he still wants to be aggressive but i think the play is to just take the one ball and play a real simple safe to try to break him up with with uh back and forth oh but look at this he's gonna end up on the wrong side that was a good effort but when you go for those kind of risky shots where you don't know whether or not you're gonna get shape and you got to hit the ball is a real precise going up and down the table a lot of the times it doesn't work out in your favor it's one of those where you got to have it really dialed in and these new tables with the slick felt and the new new tabletop always going to be a little hard to judge so it's just a tough play right there all around he he really got the worst of it now he's got himself in a little bit of a uh, tough situation yeah i don't even see any really easy kicks let's see I mean, you can play off the end rail furthest from you all the way up and down the table. That's the biggest ball in the two ball, making the two ball hit. Still no guarantee you're getting a hit or a safety afterwards. Yeah, he's going to play this two rails at the two. Don't overspin it. Oh, he hit this good. He hit that real good not to sell out a straight in shot. I'm not sure if that two ball goes in the side past the 10. On the overhead, it, it's telling me that it does. He'll be able to cut that in and might have to play a little bit of a run through. Yeah, you just want to hit this ball real smooth to uh, end up on that side rail for the four cue balls. Come in a little close to that side rail next to the four, so your speed has to be good as well. Yep, that's good speed. You don't uh, you don't overhit that ball to come real really thin, and you don't want to end up dead straight on it and play short side for the six because that makes the six or the seven real tough. So he ended up playing that really well how you would ideally like to play it. And he'll get under the six to come one rail for the seven. Just like that. He's on the correct side. A little straight, but he definitely has enough to cheat the pocket here and just kind of stun down the side rail. You want a little bit of an angle on the seven, nothing too straight. That's perfect. Now he has an option. He can kind of just uh, stun over to the middle of the table or play a top spin with a little bit of outside left. He's just going to stun over. I always like to minimal, uh, minimize your cue ball movement. Anytime you can 
kind of control the path of that cue ball and make sure that it doesn't have to roll around the table, the easier it is to control your touch and speed. So he's got a decision to make here. Does he draw it back or does he play with top spin? Nice draw stroke there. Overdid it a little bit. Wow, he overdid that a little bit more. So he's he's thin here. This is a bit of a tester. Obviously, you got to watch out for that scratch. Just hit this real smooth. Just like that. Yeah. You never want to roll that ball harder than you have to because that you kind of end up scratching in that top right corner whenever you do. So he hit that real nice and smooth, not too hard. Cue ball ended up dead center of the table. And that's going to be 2-0 for Spencer. And Spencer's going to be breaking this one, playing alternate break. Pretty good day so far. We've seen some good matches. Everybody's having a good time out here. And we got a full house, you guys. If you're interested, I come down. It is a little snowy out, so be careful. But we are definitely out here having a good time. Okay, we got Spencer Bolt here hitting the balls in rack number three. Breaking from the side a little bit, whereas Jeff broke head on and dropped four balls last time, including the 10. Solid pop, he makes the one ball on the side, gets a couple friendly bounces to open up the two, but the cue ball is going to end up behind the seven, unfortunate. Pretty solid snap, call it successful. It's just let the cue ball get away a little bit. It gets, uh, I don't even think it got kicked. I think it went side rail to side rail to end up there. So he's got an aggressive kick shot. You uh, don't want to hit it too hard, though, if that's what you're thinking. He also has a push if he wants to push. But he's going aggressive. He's going to call the two ball here. Don't overhit this ball. Yeah, nice pace. Don't end up behind the eight. That was the only thing. You had to hit that two ball really, really full in order to not scratch and not end up behind the eight. That ball always wanted to float over behind the eight. Whereas if you were planning on running into that eight, you'd definitely hit it with some more speed to get it out of there and play the cue ball to the middle of the table a little more. Great swerve, though. Wow. What a great mass A shot there. So We're going to see if this four ball goes in the side. It's tough. I think it'll squeak by that eight. But I think that eight ball is kind of cutting that first, that closest corner to the four ball off. So kind of half of the pocket to the side where uh, you really don't want that pocket any smaller than it already is. You can't necessarily cut the four ball by the five. Another attacking option is to cross bank it, but you're letting the cue ball go. You're running into the nine, kind of, or maybe the six. So kind of hard to determine whether or not you're going to come away with a good shot afterwards with that option. And, of course, you have the safety. You can kind of play the four ball into the seven, try to hook them on the ten ball with the cue ball. Yeah, he played the four ball into the seven ball. It was a really nice shot and just held the cue ball behind the nine, not going for too much of a hook. That's a real solid safety. It kind of gets you out of the inning, and you're always hoping to just come back with a better look than you had on your previous inning and kind of force your opponent into in, into forcing the issue you make him kind of open the open the rack and give you the easier run but nonetheless Jeff does have a pretty easy kick shot off that side of rail close to the four ball and uh, 
If he's planning on making it in the bottom right, that's not the worst idea either. Could come out with a shot on the five. And if you miss it, you could get safe. Ooh, and that seven ball is going to hang up for a carom if, if Spencer wants it. So that's definitely an option here. The only thing with that is where does the four ball end up? You know, you kind of got to hit that hard and leave the four ball up by the 10 ball almost to get enough speed off, of, you know, because you got to draw it to really flatten the cue ball off of the four. There it is. He overdrew that ball, and that four ball is going to come right back up. So real good opportunity for Jeff. Luckily, that four ball doesn't stop in front of the five for him, and he's got a good look at this four seven and a good chance to get out here. Just got to make sure you don't end up behind the five here when you, when you play this four. He made them both. That was pretty fortunate because if he didn't, he was looking at a hook. But nonetheless, he's running the balls. He's straight in on this. Well, fairly straight. He could come off the end rail probably and play out to the middle of the table where the six goes in any pocket that he really wants to. Just wants to make sure that he's floating towards that eight ball. So that's pretty nice. But if he wants to play the side pocket, that the cue ball is flowing towards the nine, which is going to be difficult to come up with a you know a preferable shot on the eight ball so here you're going to see him play the six in the corner just to get better shape on the eight because if he makes it in the corner he's got a good chance to get out if he makes it in the side his chances of getting out are still pretty small tough shot he hit that real smooth you guys notice he didn't even put much power into that cue ball at all really he just just let the six ball do what it needed to do to get to the hole in the cue ball. That's why he played it in that top corner because the cue ball was always going to end up good for the eight. So this is the shot to get him out. You make this one, the rest are connect the dots. That's nice. It's real nice. So that's going to... I'll knock on wood, but I like Jeff to get out here. Here we go. Yeah, he hit that six ball really good, and he played the tougher shot to make the rest of the run out easier. That's a veteran play, and that's what you got to do to run the racks when you're, you know, kind of on the 50-yard line. Always choose the shot that leads to a better shot, even if it is a little more difficult because... If you don't know where that cue ball is ending up for the most part, you're kind of in a path to nowhere and you leave easy runouts in the late in the rack for your opponent. So he played a great shot there and and brought it within one. It's two one. Spencer's in the lead. We do have Jeff running. He'll break break the balls and look to run out as well. Tie it up. We haven't seen any break and runs yet. Hopefully we'll see our first one in this match. I like our chances. These guys are pretty pretty skilled. And Jeff hit a really good break last time. See if he can keep that going. Another real solid pop. Cue ball gets kicked to the end rail. But this one's going to come up dry. So we went from making four balls on the break to nothing. And he doesn't leave a shot on the one, so that's good. We're gonna, probably going to see a push here. I don't see an easy safety, so when that's that's the case, you don't really want to force the issue on, on a safety. Just kind of put it somewhere where it's 50-50 for both of you, and you might know a shot that he doesn't. He might know a shot that you don't. This is one of the bigger chess plays and rotation pool. Because, you know, you might play around on the table one day and kind of figure out a reaction that doesn't really happen a lot. 
But if you can play to push to that, you can be really, really kind of sneaky and sneak up on them and play a shot that they don't know. You don't see that a lot, but there's always a shot next to the obvious shot, you know. That's the beauty of pool is that there's more than one way to do the right thing. It really comes down to player preference and skill level and what you're comfortable with. So We'll see what Spencer does with this. It looks like he might be kicking at the one. Ooh, he completely missed it. So that's going to be ball in hand. You saw Spencer beat the one ball away and give it to Jeff. So we're looking at the problems on the table now. We got the 8, 9, 10 tied up. That 8 ball is going to go past the 6 ball. The 6 ball will be gone, but just for a reference, that 8 ball will play short side. and You know, as long as you're not straight in, you're on the correct angle, you're going to get a good spread between those balls if you can make the 8. So that's going to be the real issue, is working from the, the 7 to the 8, getting a good angle. And we'll see how he works through this rack. This got a little funny. He's going to load this up with right hand spin, trying to come around the table. Probably the issue is, is that 4 ball is big. You don't want to run into the 4 ball here. There it is. Uh, it's one of those things where that four ball is sitting right in the path. He's still got a cut on this three. It's a very cuttable ball. You got to let the cue ball go. Um, and that four ball, where he moved it from, is in the way of breaking out the eight, nine, ten here. So you're probably going to want to try to avoid the four ball altogether here. I think you'll come out with a good shot to on the four ball if you don't hit it. Just like that. It's beautiful. It's going to come up. And he's even going to have the right angle to flow down to the five. Oh, and now he has a good angle to go into these balls. It's just tricky to run into this side of that cluster because you can always get stuck if they don't spread really well. If you don't get a good spread, you can end up hooked on the five ball. And really, really not know what you're doing after that. Oh, he hit that real nice. Now he's going to get down on this five ball. I'm pretty sure it goes. So, um, this is not, this is still not straightforward, but he got rid of the big problem in the rack. Stun around the 10, come back to the middle, or draw it straight back for the 6 in the side. That was a good stroke. And um, still running the balls. He's on a good angle here to float over for the 7. This is going to be connecting the dots for sh uh, Jeff's second game. Oh, wow. I thought he had enough to come short side so actually now this seven ball is not makeable he's got to kick at the seven ball to make it where that seven ball is it's always going to be a scratch uh, so this is this is big decision time whether or not you want to kick off the end rail or just kind of beat it away you can always play a safety like play it up near the ten ball and just kind of leave the cue ball where it's at. You're going to leave kind of a thin cut, but that's kind of pushing in traffic. Not always selling out a straight in shot. Or you can play this and try to get them on the, the uh, eight ball or the nine ball. What's up, Kyle? I'm back. <laughs> yes, sir. You got it figured out? Yeah, technical difficulties. I was trying to a soundboard, and I guess the headphones were unplugged, but I figured it out. Somehow I ended up in the uh, our shuttle. I had to drive that down to the Apple and back. Um, you were in the shuttle down and back? Yeah, yeah, I went down to the Apple and came back. 
Wow, that was not even that long, dude. We yeah, only played three games. Yeah, it's only five minutes away. So, but uh, yeah, picked up Fong. He was down at the Apple. Brought him back. Um, yeah, they only, yeah, it was zero zero when I left. So, unless it was really long games, I don't know. Nothing too crazy. Okay, so we got uh, Jeff is in the blue. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, well that matches his shirt, and then we got so Spencer's at the table. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right, and we are two to one, race to seven. Sweet. Yeah, Jeff was running out, and he kind of ended up on the wrong side of the six and uh, tried to get straight in on the seven. Didn't happen. Played a real good safety with only three potential blockers. Well, really two with the angle that he had. Okay, and uh, I know we are on the winner side right now. We're in round one. One of the players had a bye. I can't remember if it was Jeff or Spencer. Um, but nonetheless, they're both on the winner's side in round one. A little ways to go in uh, 10 ball. Uh, did they say this was the AA division or yes. the A? We got the double. We got two A's down here. So Yeah, I think it was A. I'm going to go double check that. Well, they're playing like double A's. Well, well yeah, it's got to be double A because there is no double A nine. So, yeah, this is double A mixed. 10 ball. Um, yeah, race to seven. So, absolutely AA. That's a good shot there. He's not too, doesn't have too much angle. He can just float this eight ball in and get good shape on the nine. You just don't want to under hit this. Yeah, it's almost automatic. You, yeah, you don't want to come too far down the table because then you got a weird angle. You almost want to, like, hold it. Just passing like that. Well, That's here's the work. issue. This is this That's, is moving away from the ten here. So yeah, he's gonna, oh yeah, you're right. He wanted to come a little farther, I guess. Uh, I didn't realize it was gonna come that close. So yep. This is yeah. one of those shots, though. It's really fun once you learn it. You really load this up with draw and try to miss the side pocket. But the problem with that shot is he was coming across his line, right? He wasn't rolling in line to his ball. He's yeah. coming across. So there was actually a really small window where he would have been good. So. Regardless, he's going to have a tough shot uh, probably 90% of the time here. I, I like this shot a lot, though. I mean, you just load this up with low, and if you miss a side pocket, really low left outside spin. And uh, if you miss a side pocket, it's going to come down here to the bottom right corner and shoot out to the middle of the table. So what we got going on in chat land, we got uh, Wally playing snooker. Oh, playing snooker for... Four hours. I'm gonna stick on the stream for a little bit. Appreciate you. Where are you playing snooker at? I've never played snooker. Snooker is a great game. It's a game I have not. I watch a lot. You know, I watch some snooker. Like I, I love watching uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Jimmy Judd, White. Jimmy Judd. White. Yeah, Judd Trump. Some some fantastic players. Yep. See so here you go. Here's this loaded up draw. Oh no. Oh, I think he miscued it though. Didn't leave a easy shot here, though, for uh, Spence. No, this is nothing straightforward. It's hard to hold the cue ball for the 10 ball if you decide to bank this. And really, you can't back bank it in the, in the corner by the 10 because it kind of cuts off half the pocket, so it's not a very big big pocket for that bank. Was this mine? That's you know? Kendall's. Kendall's. Dang. Uh, not mine. So this is a this is a deci decision shot. Do you play safety? There's a pretty good safety here. You just clip the nine and run the cue ball two rails, or you uh you. I'd, I'd call the ten ball myself. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'd come back to the ten. That's and call what he the did. Ten. Oh, you think he did? He did call the ten. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I mean, you, you're gonna leave a a pretty tough shot, and you got a chance. You know, go for it. There wasn't a whole lot there. I mean, that came off the rail pretty natural to the 10, so. Yeah, I think there, if you're coming that close to the 10, there's no point in not calling it. So yep. I think it's kind of a mistake not to call it if you know that you're going towards it. And that was a good shot. He had a, a lot of things that could go right where you kind of end up behind the 10. This is no gimme. Really, you just got to make this nine, though. Automatic shape to the ten. 
And that ball slides in really nice. Yeah, the the pockets are playing big today. Obviously, it's new new uh, tabletop, new felt, so yeah, the so rails are I think slick. I just found out that they're not pro cut, so they are a little bit bigger than the four and a quarter. Um, I think like four and five eighths or something like that. Or, oh, okay. Yeah, so they're a little bit bigger than four and a quarter. Um, maybe five, four and a half. I was out there, man. They don't yeah. really feel like they're four and a half, but you never know. It's usually pretty standard to go from four and a quarter to four and a half. I'll have to double check and find out exactly how big the pockets are. Yeah, we can talk to, I believe his name is John from Diamond. But we got Jeff coming back and tying it at two, and we'll have Spencer breaking in the fifth. 2-2 two -two match, guys, is close. Nothing too straightforward for either player so far. Still no break and runs. Might put a bounty on a, on a break and run. So far, it's been a pretty even even match. Nobody looking too too much stronger than the other. Yeah, it's going back and forth, it looks like. I think uh, Jeff is probably shooting a little stronger cause, just because he's made a couple more hard shots, but still, it's still early, and both these guys have a good chance to catch a rhythm. Let's check out the break in action here. That three ball. It wants to go. Yep, it slid in. It's the cloth. He's got a nice angle to come off the rail if he wants. You gotta, you gotta force this ball to the rail and down to the two. I don't think. I think you just leave the kind of a tight angle on it because that way that if you're cutting the two over, you got. Well, it depends on what pocket you want to play this two in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I th or he might even be able to draw it straight back and miss the six. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He's gonna get, shoot in between the six and the five. That's gonna be trouble. Right. Yeah, he needed yeah. more of a stroke than that. He, like I said, he needed to force that ball to the rail if that's what he was going to do, which yeah. I like that shot. You just got to make sure you don't let up. He's kicking at it. Got a good hit. Looks good. It's going to go in. That was a nice shot. All Take right. another look at that shot when we get a chance. This is going to be the shot of the rack, though. If you can make this four ball and get a look at the five, the rest of the rack looks pretty nice. Yeah, and with the, the cloth, you know, it's it's really going to be tough. Yeah, this is a tough shot. I think you almost, ooh, I'd be nervous shooting this one. Yeah, I watched the scratch in the top right. He avoided it. Oh, but, side but, pocket. Yeah. Let's take a look at the, the kick shot on the two. Really nice. He hit a good speed. It always had a good chance to go in at that speed. Yeah, I think that he did as much with that two ball as he really could. You know, you could try to hit that harder, but a lot of the times you bobble that two at that point. So we got uh, Jeff at the table walking around trying to figure out what to do. Um, let's go ahead uh, the dual camera here. On the five ball. And the six blocks the obvious, or the nine blocks the obvious pocket for the six. Well, I think you just play the five, and then you don't like to, but you play the six all the way up in that corner or the side and just float forward to the seven. Yeah. Um, or you could draw on the five and play the six in the same pocket. There's that option. But then it's going to be a little more difficult to get to the seven. I think you just kind of leave the ball kind of where it's at. I mean, come down a little bit, right? Get on the right side of the six ball. Yeah. So you can go up to the seven. Just yeah. don't keep it complicated. Anywhere straight in on the six up table is okay. Yeah. But, you know, when you get to this level, you really don't want, you don't see a lot of these guys like it to shoot up table if they can get away from it. Yeah, so he was trying to play it in the same pocket. Got a bump. He's got it in the side. Actually... He might want to contemplate and playing this off the seven and sending that seven up to the top pocket, playing the six in the side. Yep. He could do that. Or he could play the small window 
shoot between the eight and the rail, play a seven all the way up. I don't like coming out because then there's a scratch. Yeah, two mm -hmm. racks ago, he had the seven ball in basically the same position where it was at, and uh, he had a chance to play it in the side, but he ended up going three rails and ended up straight, a little straight on the seven, but to where he couldn't make it. You know, he ended up on the outside of the seven with an angle to where he couldn't make it. Let's see what he does here. So Looks like he's going forward here. I can't really tell. This is another touchy shot. Get between the eight and the rail. Yeah, and that's always that was, a big ball. That was a, such a small window. So I was wondering if he could have played that six off of the seven, if it even went. I mean, you can't tell from this vantage point if that would have went or not, but it would have shot the seven up a little bit. He might have yeah. had a shot. Yeah, and you can play that, that shot with a little more speed that way, too, and get your kick, cue ball he's out. Got, he's got the right angle to kick on the side. I mm -hmm. mean, hit it nice and soft, and he'll have a shot on the eight. Play oh, it two wow. rails. Or play it like that. We're going to take another look at that. He got a little tough on the eight here. Yeah, and he got real unfortunate that he made the nine because now the eight to the ten is really difficult. Yeah. You can play the cut on the eight in the top right, but that lets the cue ball go back to the middle of the table naturally two rails. Well, he could cross bank this on the side. And yeah, roll up. but with that speed, you're coming up and down the off of the end rail next to the 10, coming away from it. So there's no easy, easy path to the, to the 10 ball here. The 8 ball is very makeable, though. And he did make a cut like this with the 9 ball a, on a previous rack. Real, I mean, if you choose the top right corner, you got to hit it almost one, two, three rails side to side, and that's quite the stroke. You got to hit that eight ball real pure. It looks like he's aiming for the cut. One, two, and look, see where that cue look ball at ended that up. shot. He hit that excellent. Played short side. Yeah, yeah, he put a little inside spin to get the cue ball down down table as well. He got to where he needed to. Yeah, if that eight ball goes in, he's out. But it was never an easy shot to make that eight ball and get to the 10. That was the problem. I want to see the, the kick shot that he made, you know, to get here. It was nice. Nice kick shot. We got... Spencer going to clean out this one. Yeah, there's a good stroke on the eight. Good clean stroke. That was the one he needed to focus on. He did, and he, he drilled it. So he's going to come out with rack number five. And I believe he'll be, oh, no, it'll be Jeff's break in the sixth. And uh, you missed it, but with Jeff, Jeff's first break, he made four balls, including the ten. So that ten got respotted, but he uh, had the table leaking there for a minute. Yeah, we'll go out and measure that. Um, Lance talking about the size of the pockets. Um, basically, if you can take two balls, uh, put them in the pocket. If they don't go to the back of the pocket, they're pro cut. If they go, they're not pro cut. So I don't think these are pro cut. Maybe go uh, check that out after the match. Let's see how he hits this break. Nice control of the cue ball. Seven's going to go down. Mm -hmm. Nope. Is that two ball going to fall? Nope. No. What is he hits this? real square. Yeah, there's a shot on the one, a path to the two. Yeah, this is a good chance. Uh, does And it looks like that four ball will go by the ten. It's close. Yeah, it's a tricky rack. I mean, two to the three it could even be difficult here. Yeah, that three ball's hanging, so as long as you get a little bit of an angle on the two, I which like is going to be hard to negotiate from where he's at. That's a, I just like getting on the two and kind of doing a super draw all the way to the bottom of the table. Yeah, you can also play a rail first shot on the two ball, come out around yeah. to the middle. Well, the reason I like the draw shot and then come all the way back to get to the three in the side is then you can play this three in the side and float right up to the four. Yeah. You know, now this is going to be tough to get to the three here. Yeah, he'll. I think he'll have to play this rail first, yep. straight top, heavy top. 
Uh oh, and a scratch. See, I almost like getting the cue ball like right next to where the six is at after the two. Yeah, drawing it all the way down. Well, you don't even have to draw. I mean, you could do anything you want really to get down there. Now, now you can. Yeah, you got ball in hand. Yeah, that, I think that's what he'll do. He'll float between the nine and the rail. It's a real natural, good, you know, uh, stun. Yep. Yeah, between the nine and the rail, and then get low enough to play the three up to the four. Looks kind of like the path. Yeah, you don't want to. You, you don't necessarily well, want to come off that seven with the three. He's lining up something different here. I don't see what he's thinking about. He's looking at the three to the four. The f Is he going to? No, yeah, he did it. Yeah, but, it, oh, and he's got really, he got better than I thought he was going to get. Mm hmm. Yeah. He hit the six ball, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, he literally, you said land near the six. He, he hit it. Yeah, I was like trying to say, like right next to it, but yeah, he hit it. Oh, uh oh. And there, he came off the seven. Oh, he was, I think he was playing for the 410 combo because it was wired. So if you look at it, it, I don't think it's wired now, but it he was playing for the 410. It was wired until it got that bump. Like, here, let's look at it. Like, look at that 410. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's actually really good, but that 9, it just so slightly bumped it out. That would have been nice. Yeah, now he's in a real sticky situation. Yeah, now it is not wired. He's probably going to just play safe here. And even that, you know, it's kind of a weird cluster. So Unless he could probably still force the 4 into the 10, but then you're he's got to slice it so thin. You're risking hitting the nine first, so see see what he does. It oh, he does, got. Oh no. no, he didn't get it. Wow, he he was able to overcut it. I didn't think that was going to be the case. So there was room for it to go. Yeah, and he he uh, played a two way shot there. That was good speed to end up behind the eight and leave the four in the in the open. So this is not an easy kick. So let's uh, reach out to uh, our viewers at home. Let's see who has been on the stream the longest. We've been going since about 1 o'clock. How long have you been on the stream? Just curious. I think, Kyle, are you, no, I got here before you did, so we're probably yeah. about the same. We've been, we've been in the booth all day, so just curious. Who's got more than a two hours screen time? Let's see, let's see what we got. All right, he's kicking past the side, so he'll hit this with a little speed to shorten it up a little bit. Or he, he should have. Oh, man, do you even risk? I don't think you try the 410. No. You just run it out here. Yeah, that that's too thin of a cut from the four and hard to determine, you know, where everything's going to end up afterwards. So it's like it's a huge gamble. He's just going to find a good angle. It looks like he's going to play the 5-6 combo. So you know what that is? No. So I got a, a GPS tracker in my pool queue. So anytime I walk away from it from more than like 10 feet, I get a notification on my phone. You left your pool queue at. <laughs> Gives me a oh, location. That is sweet. Yeah. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, that was well hit. I think he got a pretty good. Ooh, 7-10 is probably the play after the five. Yeah, the only question is, can you hold the cue ball, or do you have to run it two rails? No, he's just got to roll forward here. He just rolls forward, and that's going to shoot out to right by the eight or towards the middle of the table and up. Oh, he hit it too hard. No, he's going to have it. He's going to have it. Yeah, it's tough, though. It's off angle yeah, now. Off yeah. angle. Yeah. Going to be tough. Killed the cue ball off the rail a little too well and and uh, hit a little bit outside to, to do so and kind of gave himself a, a double angle on this back cut combo. I think everybody at home put us on mute. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just going to watch. All, All right. right. Here it is. Good shot. Nice. Nice shot there by Jeff. And he's going to take a 3-2 lead. I believe he won the last three of four. 
Let's take a look at the 710 combo here. Another nice look at it. Yeah, I hit it real clean. Never touched the side. Yeah, I hit that 10 ball real clean. Yeah, see me, I, I probably would have scratched on that shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he hit that really nice. Yep, and we got Spencer breaking. Still no breaking runs. I might start a bounty if we don't see one by the end of the day. Who can break and run on the stream? I had one earlier against you. You're right. <laughs> Just a warm-up game, but. Yeah, I racked the balls perfect for you, though. That's what happened. All right, so we got Spencer breaking. He's breaking from the side. It looks like he's moving out to the side a little more than he has been. See how the lefty hits him. He oh. popped him, but he missed the uh, missed the cue ball dead yeah, I'll center. Tell you, that's a solid break, though. Look at everything just roll. Oh, the cue ball rolled in. Oh, the cue ball shot straight into the side. Yeah. That was a bad break. It was one of those things where it's like, you know you hit him bad because the cue ball goes straight in the side. Yeah, look at this. This is a runnable table if there's a runnable table. Yes, and sir. No, no real problems. I mean, five to the six, you need a good angle on the five. So, really, this is the key shot. You end up good on the four, you're going to end up good on the five. And a lot of the times I do say that the first shot in the rack is the most important. I mean, you're trying to start your run. Well, he's got to get, what is that? Is that the four, two ball? No, that's, that's the, the four, four ball. So, yeah, one to the four pretty easy, and then four to the five is easy. I mean. Watch out, eight. He's going to get by the eight. He's going to be perfect. Yeah, this is looking well, real good. Not perfect, but pretty close. Yeah, he can make make this and play to the uh, right side of the five that we're looking at right oh, now. No, I'm sorry. He is perfect. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. good. Now that I look at it from this view. Really, he can get straight in on this five. You don't want to be floating towards the seven, though. That's going to make the five ball tough. So. Yeah, I would roll up just a little bit here. Just perfect. Or roll over to the left. That works, too. Yeah, so he can roll forward here. This is all See, speed. the thing is, if he rolls forward, does he get really close to his work? Can he spit out to the right side of the table at all? A little bit. I'd like to be able to get a little to the right of, mm -hmm. you know, where he's going. He's drawing, it looks like. It looks like he's drawing. Oh, okay. So he's playing He did the have the other okay. side of the five. He did. It was a little straight. Gotcha. This is fine. You can just roll this six ball in and come off the rail for the seven. Very doable. He's a little straight here, too, though. He might want to pound it, you know? I want to pound it. Or just play for the seven in the side and just kill it. Oh, that like was a nice that. shot. He killed that. Kind of killed it. He killed it real well. Yeah, that was nice. Now everything's pretty easy from here. Yeah. He's back in line. So this will be a run out off the ball in hand. Yeah, ain't nothing you can do when uh, you scratch on a break with that open of a break. Right. I mean, at this level, it's almost like uh, selling out, you know? Yeah, I mean. You got to control the cue ball. No problems on the table, and you just got to make sure you don't let that cue ball go straight into the side pocket like it really wants to. He ended up on the rail. See, like, in that shot right there makes me nervous a little bit on these tables because they are rolling quick. This is bear down. And that's there we go. four out of the last five for uh, Jeff. Spencer won the first two. Jeff came back and battled it. And then it's been 3-2 Spencer, and Jeff has been out since then. We got Jeff breaking. He's hitting a big break. Last time he broke dry, but the time before that, he uh, came up and uh, just sunk four balls off the break, including the 10. So 
he's got something figured out, but not quite consistent. He'll see, let's see if he can dial it in. Breaking from the middle as opposed to Spencer. Okay, he let the cue ball get away from him. You saw he caught the little bit of the right side of the one ball there. So if the folks at home want to check out the schedule, this is what it looks like as far as what's going down on Thursday, what's going down on Friday, and then what's going down on Saturday. So we got a big portion of the tournament started today. More yet to come. Okay, that's a dry break. We got Spencer at the table. Nothing real clear at the one. It's going to go in that bottom left pocket by the five. So, and that does afford shape to the two. So this is a, a fairly good starter. You just got to make sure you get, get down and roll it true. Cue ball's a little bit close to the rail for comfort, so you still you got to roll this ball real sweet. He's really eyeing it down. I'm not sure he likes it. Yeah, I think the only path is what you said to the side pocket, but you're running into traffic and... No, we don't. You don't think that five, that one passes the five in the corner? I don't think so. He's been looking at it too long. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I feel like if it went, he probably would have shot it. Yeah, it's a, if it goes, it's a really small pocket. But I mean, we'll see. He might be able to throw it in, possibly. I mean, he'd have to really slow roll it, and he's jacking up on this ball. He's just playing safe. That's good. This is good touch oh, behind the five. I mean, it's not makeable from here, I don't think, but it looks like Jeff will be able to see it. Yeah, if he can see it, he can play attack in the bottom right and cross bank it. Um, but that's letting the cue ball go. You're going to shoot along two if you don't run into the five correctly. Yeah, possible cross bank here, but I think you're just play safe. Get that cue ball coming around the two. Oh, the cross bank was there. Watch yep. out, 10 ball. He got by it. That was a good shot. So cross bank was a shot. Yeah, that was a good ball. And now he has a good angle to just kind of roll through this two off the end rail back up to the middle of the table. Yeah, two to the three is pretty natural here. And you don't want to get straight on the three. Angle on the three is good because the four ball is out in the middle. Yeah, getting straight on the three would not be favorable right now. Oh, he spun that nicely, and he's got some angle, I think. Yeah, he's got enough to work it, but he's going to have to punch this three ball a little bit more than run it, yeah. or he could work a bunch of inside spin and go around the, the corner. I think he's going to be drawn bottom left here coming around the seven. Oh, yeah, I like that shot too. Yeah. Got to really dig into it here. Oh, no, he did something else. He <laughs> held it. Yeah, I, I he don't took know. This, the simple way out yep. and kind of just taking what the table is giving him to get to the four. So this is a big shot. Uh, you probably just want to stun over and stay above the five. But that brings the side pocket into play. You don't want to over, over uh, draw that ball. So this is, takes a really good touch from distance. Get the cue ball back out to the middle. Oh, nice. And Comes that's beautiful. That's great touch there. Yep. But what's he doing with the six? Is he going to play for a bank shot? Is he going to be able to get above it and play it down? I don't know. Like he has enough room to roll, to roll it through and go two rails, but it's going to leave you a pretty tough cut on the six, and working back to the seven is going to be difficult. This is tricky. I mean, to get above, like, you know, ideally you'd like to be shooting between the eight and the nine and maybe playing the six down. But then that is tough to get to the seven. 
I think the best play here is to play for the bank. Yeah, I and agree. The bank offers you position on the seven. Yeah, I, I agree with that. There's no easy way to get into the seven with that eight ball block in the obvious pocket from the six to get to the seven. See what Jeff figures out here. This is there's no easy out here. I mean this is this is thinking time. So there it is. Now he's got the bank, the cross bank in the side. And that's a real good angle to yeah. kind of to uh but the nine might kill his action. Have a nice here. draw. He can draw out of this cross bank. Maybe. He's got to miss the nine here. Yeah, and if he does draw out of it, you got to be conscious of that top left pocket. Top left pocket comes into play, trying to miss. He could he could nine. play safe if he wants to. He could roll up onto the nine. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. That's a real safe, uh, pretty high percentage shot. Yeah. See what he decides here. I think he is rolling up onto the nine. Yep. He didn't get up on the nine. Yeah, he was trying to roll up onto it. Um, I like I like the choice. I mean, the the cross bank was one a tough shot, and getting right on the seven was tough. So the probabilities probably just weren't there, and the probability of the safe was much higher. Yeah. Um, he just kind of mishit it, misjudged it. That was the right shot. You just don't want to stun that ball. You want to roll it. It's playing a little bit of inside here to. Get it over, and that makes that shot tough. Yeah, that's going to give Jeff a good angle to get to the 7 here. He can come up well, past the 10. He's going to have to play again inside. It's almost almost a similar shot. He can um, play short side for the 7. Well, that's what I'm saying. Inside to come in between you know, the 8 and the 10, but you're, whenever you're using this much inside with this much of a cut, like you generally want to shoot this outside spin, right? Because it makes it easier. It makes the pocket a little bigger, yeah, like what we were talking about with the throw. Yeah. See, now he gets in between the 8 and the 10. That was nice. That was very good touch. With the inside spin. Get off the rail. This will be a stun draw to the middle of the table for the 8. But some people, they don't understand how hard that shot is when you're using inside like that and cutting. Because it's always easier to use outside to make the shot. But he needed to get that bin to spin an unnatural way in between that eight and ten to get on the seven so yeah he came with the stroke there oh he got a miscue there yeah it came a little short but he's okay he has a shot yeah he got he really got fortunate there to come away with a good shot on the eight this isn't too difficult one of my favorite players man the lion alex peggy lion Still shooting. I'm still shooting. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't matter where the ball is. As long as you're at the table, you got to be excited. You got to be happy because you're still shooting. And look at this. Very nice. Now I can just a little uh, bit of a draw right onto the 10 if he wants. Yeah, he's got to make a decision here which side of the 10 he wants to play. I think you just draw this, get on the right side of the 10. I mean, I don't think there's a chance it scratches, do you? No, I I yeah. think I'm playing in this ball on the side and kind of just letting it float off the end rail. Oh, I'm playing this ball all the way down and drawn. I'm drawn right to the rail, like right to where that diamond, that diamond above the side pocket. I'm drawn right to that diamond and getting it in line with the 10, just like that. That's beautiful. Look at that. It's almost like I saw it. Oh, you saw it. You <laughs> saw it. He hit it. Yeah, he hit that really nice. Yeah, that mo minimize, minimizes the cue ball movement there. And Well, that and the best part about shots like that is your cue ball is going in line to your shot. So you could be off by almost a foot, and it's not going to matter because you're going in line to your shot. So Yeah, and he controlled it really well. That shot can get away from you if you don't kill it off of the rail enough, you know, and you can end up real close to the 10 ball or real on top of it. But he hit it real nice. He got into it real nice. Yeah. Andrew Bundy, he stopped in earlier, said hi. Yes, sir. He yes, he nice, did. Nice shot. Nice to meet you, Andrew. I always make a comment. Um, did you shake his hand? Yeah. Did he crush it? 
No, he didn't. He was oh. a nice guy. Man, first time I shook his hand, I was like, oh, my God. And he wasn't even trying, but he's got one of those handshakes that it could fracture your hand in 3,000 different ways. <laughs> That's a good tragedy for a pool player. <laughs> All right, we got Spencer breaking. Drops the one right in the side. Cue balls in the center with a shot on the two. Yep, that two ball is going to dress up pretty nicely. and He's got some issues here with the six, the four, the ten. The four is a good breakout ball for the six and the ten, though. So getting shape on this four ball, which will be the next ball, is very key. And he doesn't have the best angle to do it. This is going to be a tough decision. Tough Ooh. decision to, to, to shoot here. I'm not sure if he can stop the ball there and see enough of the four to make it and go into the six. Either way, this is a bit of a tester, you know. Mm -hmm. Never a fun shot to be taken. I mean, where's, he's got to get up to the four there. Right. Yeah. And the four does not go by the six, so what is he going to do? Uh-oh. Well, that was not on his list of things he wanted. Nope, nope. That's about as unfortunate as it can get. So decision time here. I mean, you got the four with ball in hand. You could possibly bust out this ten right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and these... At this level, they like to play aggressive when they can, so I like them. I I do think he will try to break it out. I think you got to because, I mean, otherwise you got a path to nowhere. But you know, that six that, ball. Yeah. That or you play safe. He's on one foul already, so if you can put that four ball somewhere to play a safety after this one. Oh, he could park that, that four ball up at the top rail and park right behind the 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be a good safe if that's what he wants to do. Yeah. But this is a runnable table, right? I mean, he plays the four and just bumps the 10 out, you know, and then he's right on the five, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I so mean, how he's, comfortable he is with that. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I'm not comfortable. I mean, like, if you're playing that four, sh that four ball to bust out the 10, um, you know, things can go wrong real quick. I guess he's saying that four does go by the six. Yeah, I was thinking it had half a pocket by the six. That or is he is playing a safe and trying to lock it up on the ten. Nah, he'll make this bump. Okay, didn't really get a good bump on the ten. Nope. No, now he'll have to bank that six, huh? He's going to have to draw it mm -hmm. and, yeah, play a bank on the six. I don't see, unless he can get above it and place, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think you have to play for a bank shot here. Yeah, he does have an angle to get under it, so if he likes that combo, he'll end up under it, but I don't like that percentage. It's just a tough shot. They're a little off angle all the way down the table. Dirty Dumper is asking, is Andrew related to Ted? I don't know. Let us know in the chat, Andrew. Uh, Ted who? And Dirty Dumper brought up a comment earlier. I guess I guess our sound was out. I hope the folks at home are hearing Oh, this. yeah, yeah. I think it was because I was trying to talk into your mic while I was work, 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 working the computer. <laughs> and then I stretched this guy all the way over there, and I was all oh. over. I was all over the place. Oh, well, I think we're good now. I mean, yeah, it's showing good. good. Getting green lights on the board, so. Yep, yep. I think our sound is good. All right. I, I just missed. Yeah, looking at the board, I just missed the shot, so. Looks like Jeff is kind of locked up on the six. Yeah, he made the five and came under the six ten and just clipped the ten out and ended up on the six. Ooh, I think he got a little protection from no, the six is there all day. Yeah, I was looking at the overhead. I was like, is eight and away? And I'm looking down the line. Six is there all day, but this is a fun shot. I I like to draw here. Um. Because the balls are drawn nice. Mm -hmm. You know, they are drawn nice. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, tough, though. You don't want to overcut the six. You can still make the six and drift over to the middle and get hooked on the seven. Players were just having a conversation about something, so they seem to be having a good time, and they're laughing, and that's good to see. Yeah, you love seeing that. I mean, this is a big stage for most of these guys, and 
they're still out here not taking it too serious. Still out here knowing that they're having fun. And hope you guys are too. I know I am. Wait, they were talking about Ted Bundy? Yeah. Like, Ted Bundy was adopted. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Andrew was uh, watching this in person earlier. What's the score? Do they play to in this format? So it is a race to seven. We're playing mm. ten ball. And right now the score is five to three. Jeff on top of Spencer. Yeah, so if you guys notice our uh, scoreboard there, the race is going to be the closest number to the the uh, pool balls there. We got the division right next to it, and hey. the score is on the outside. Oh, nice shot there by Spence. He's going to get under the seven. Hey, at least one person thinks our commentary is okay. Says we're doing a good job. Thanks, Lat. Appreciate it. Hey, nobody said we're doing bad, so that's one for one. <laughs> Why do I hear it clicking? That's the song. Oh, this is me. Okay, yeah. Uh oh. Hey, folks at home, can you let us know? Can you guys hear music through our stream? I hope the music ain't coming through. That's always kind of a a no go for us. Yeah, YouTube will will uh, flag that pretty quick. All right, we we got a floaty seven ball that was a really good seven ball by spencer but he's still not out of the woods he's got to hit a good eight ball here draw back just a little bit that's a great shot Let's see what did i miss andrew bland put something down uh thanks man sorry for being ignorant it was a lot of fun to check out even though i'm not what is he talking about sorry for being i, don't, I didn't see anything Oh. Caught that ball thick. And it's pretty straight. This is drifting over towards the 10, though, with a draw. So I guess the music is coming through a little bit. We might see a short side 10 ball here. Or you can roll this ball and go one rail out, out to the middle, maybe two for this 10 in the top right. Well, as long as, ooh, man, that's, that's not good. Tell you what, it's not an easy shot to get to the, well, no, you could draw this pretty decent over. Yeah. yeah it's not, this is not a tough shot. It's a tough shot. The shape, is, the shape is there if you make it. It's still not easy to draw this ball with a back cut towards this blind pocket. Oh, he's lefty, so he can see the pocket. But it's still, you got to put a good stroke on this ball. Oh, hey, Andrew, don't worry, buddy. Um, any question you guys have, don't worry. Just throw it out there. We're, we're, that's what we're here for. If you got a question about the match, the format, um, anything, just throw it in there. We'll be happy to answer it. That's what we're here for. Yeah, we are here for you guys. Yep. All right, Spencer hit a great nine ball there. He drew it real nice, good touch, got through the cue ball real well and ended up good on the 10 to pull within one. Man, you're right. It's been a back and forth battle here. So, yeah. might have another Hill Hill Thriller. We got here a match. on Mad Apple Extreme at WSPA. And again, we're coming out of you from the Fox Valley Expo Center in Appleton, Wisconsin, 2023 WSPA State Championships. So, it's pretty exciting. And yeah. holy cow, we got a lot of viewers it's getting pretty late. So, we're going to be here for a while, I think. I mean, I, I haven't got to, I, I don't know, man. I just have a good time watching pool. I'm um, talking about it. I get to play tomorrow, so I'm excited for that. So maybe I should go home and get some sleep. Huh? I don't know. Uh, we're getting into the pool player hours, man. I expect our viewers to go up. Oh, yeah. This is true. about the time the pool players come alive, you know? Yeah, it's like insomnia nation. <laughs> exactly, dude. I mean, you're already inside. You don't see the sun, so you don't know what time it is. And you just kind of stay there all night. And... You don't really see a lot of pool players up before 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, tell wow. you that. Check out what Andrew Bland has to say. I can't agree with him more. Um, some people have different opinions, but he says he doesn't really play pool maybe a few times, three times, but watching this stream is insightful and very enjoyable broadcast. I mean, I love watching pool. I could watch pool all day long. Um, 
you know, I just, I love watching it. Yeah, and when, when you don't really play a lot, it's hard to enjoy it when you don't really know what's going on. It's a lot like a lot of Americans watching soccer, you know. It's hard to yeah. get into it when yeah. you don't know what's going on. And I'm glad we can give some good insight, but again, you know, uh, me and Kyle, we're not master level players. We're just your regular average Joe, you know, so take Speak for yourself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know. I think I know more about the game, like, than I can play, I guess, you know? Yeah. Like, I can see the game better than I can play it for sure. Look at that touch. That's a beautiful touch just to roll up on the seven, use the five to stop the one. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention, though, so if uh, – does Jeff have a foul on him right now or no? No. Coming into this with zero, so – wants to get a hit on this one. If he doesn't get a hit, I think you might see another save coming. But it's pretty pretty high percentage you get a good hit. And this is going to end up okay, too. Yeah, tough shot for Spence coming up. I yeah, think. he did leave a cut in the side. How do you get to the two ball here? See, Trent is asking a question. Is there a schedule of who's playing on this table throughout the weekend? Or is it next available game? So, Trent, to answer that question... Um, this is kind of like a luck of the draw until we start getting down to the final matches. It's kind of at the tournament director's discretion on who comes to the table. Um, so we don't know who or when, but typically they're trying to line up match after match. Um, we, we shouldn't have too many big intermissions. I mean, I think the longest break we had was 20 minutes today. Yeah. Between matches. There. Yeah. 20, maybe 30 if they're a little behind. But they do a good job of keeping it moving. We got a lot of matches to get through. Uh, Andrew Bland's kind of got a cool idea. So we got Jacoby Custom Qs here, and they brought their lathes. So they're doing Q repairs. And he's saying, like, get a camera out there, put it on the lathe work. Oh, there you go. And uh, it is interesting to watch guys work on Qs, you know. Um, Especially actually, if you've never seen it. That's actually my next uh, endeavor in life is to learn how to make a pool cue. Right now I do like um, I do woodworking, but it's mainly like furniture as far like a, a coffee bar, or end table, or a bookshelf. I do stuff like that. I would love to get into turning and um, with turning transfer into learning how to make a cue. Maybe start off by doing tips, you know, like a lot of people do. Yeah. And working my way with cue repair, and then eventually one day building my own cue. I think that would be awesome. Keeps you busy, I'll tell you that. I gotta have hobbies. I, I think that's my problem. I got too many hobbies right now. I know, right? <laughs> it's hard to stay focused on one. Well, he's looking pretty good here. Four to the five is there. Five to the six, seven. He's probably out here. Yeah, just no silly mistakes. Yeah. It's just do you want to roll forward on this four? Like or a do you want to roll? Or do you just want to stop it? Right. I Which side of the nine do you want to end up on? I think he's going to roll forward. Or no, he's going to stop it, draw back a little bit. Oh, he did roll forward, but not far enough. Yep. Yeah, he, he needed to come a little farther. And that's one of those where you're uncommitted. He didn't really know what side of the nine he wanted to get. You know, if he did, he didn't really have a, a good idea of how hard to hit that because... He definitely ended up right in the middle where you don't really commit to either stroke and you end up exactly where you don't want to end up. Yeah. So Nick is asking, is there a bracket online? So I've been doing this about every few hours. I'm going to go ahead and share a link for you guys down in the chat. Um, got to go to uh, my phone here to pull it up. But uh, if you want to go and download the app, it's called CompuSport. Uh and you can download that on your phone or your laptop, and uh, that will uh, have all the brackets for all the divisions. Um, and to give you an example of what the divisions here are, uh, we have our casual division, our C division, our B division, A division, AA division, and then above that, our top division is Masters. Um, but not all divisions are in every discipline. So, for example... There is no Masters 9-ball division. It's just A and B, I think, or AA. Yeah. Or is it A? 
and B for nine ball. That's it. For eight ball, you got casual B, A, 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 and masters. Um, but uh, let me go to my phone and uh, get that website for you guys. Do we have a B division in the 10 ball? Uh, let's look. 10 ball is we got AA and we have masters in 10 ball. And so that, that, that would be, be it. Then we, we do have the women's A and the women's masters. masters. Or it's actually masters and A combined for women's 10 ball. All right. Meanwhile, we're back to the match. He's pretty straight on the six. Want to pop off the rail a little bit for the seven. That was a good shot. Now he's going to draw it straight back. I like to call this 10 ball a beach ball, so you definitely want to hit a little bit more stroke on this draw than less. So I did just post a link down in there. That's a copy sport link. You can go on the Internet, go check it out. They should have the brackets there. And along with a list of all the players in each division, you just got to learn how to navigate it. But, again, uh, the cool thing about CompuSport, if you download the app, you can actually get live scores on any player you're tracking because on their phone they're updating their score every game, and you can track a game. So you can go to a bracket, and if you want to know if they're playing, look up the score. That was a really nice touch on that draw with the seven. He ended up with a real good angle just to roll that nine ball in and end up pretty good on the ten. So he's going to pull this one back to even at 5-5. Five, five. I believe he won the last three. Yeah, that's a big game. We got a match, folks. It's a race to seven, and they both have five. Yeah, Andrew Bland was pretty impressed with, uh, I think, Jacoby's uh, cue sticks display today. They got beautiful cues. I don't know if you saw. They got a, it's like a yin-yang cue where it, Mirrors the other cue. I think it won cue of the year. Uh, really beautiful cue. Yeah. They got it on display. Yeah, Jacoby, he, he does great, great work. They do great work over there. and You can always rely that their sticks are going to be really, really pretty, and they're going to play well. The cool thing they do that I like about their cues, um, their low deflection shafts, it's a little bit, I think, there's more in it than a lot of other low deflection shafts out there. So they got over, I think it's 127 pieces of layered wood. So what they do is they put very thin layers of wood, um, and they'll cut it into like kind of triangle type pieces, mm -hmm. and they put it together kind of like a almost like a stop sign, but just more intricate than that. I I don't know the degrees, you know, I don't I'm not an expert. They put all that together and then they lay it down, and basically what that does is when you got layered wood, it makes the wood stronger, less deflection. Like if you just take a piece of solid oak or uh, solid maple, uh, ash, whatever type of hardwood you're using, you know, if it's just one piece, there is going to be a little more deflection. It's going to want to bend and warp more. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like plywood, right? Plywood stays a lot straighter than like an actual piece of hardwood because it's all layered. Ooh, we got a good looking break here. He's going to get a shot, though. That nine ball's creeping. Andrew Bundy said he made a pool. I think he meant to say Q in high school, and he still has it today. Andrew, next time you come up, bring that pool Q. I want to I wanna see what you made, man. Interested. I'm always interested in that type of stuff. There's a lot of people that actually play at the Apple that they do. They make their own equipment, mm -hmm. um, even turn in their own um, carbon fiber shafts, actually. Yeah. You know, I've seen that. All right. Can you see enough of this one to play it off the three? I don't think so. No, he's going to play a safety here. And he's not going to necessarily sell out anything easy, but he is going to get a look at the one. Kind of unfortunate for Spencer that it hit that side of the nine. They ran into each other pretty, pretty face on, and if it clips the other side of the nine, it becomes a much tougher shot. To this is not the right shot to take, but it's a fun one that I like. It. <laughs> Super draw on the one into the 10 side pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think it's possible. I mean, it's probably possible. Oh, it is. But it's just, it, it just looks so fun. I want to shoot it right now. It's one of those where you're not going to get close to making the one ball and the 10 ball. Yeah. I mean, you don't play the shot, but I mean, you look at it and, man, you want to 
You let it ride when you're playing with your friends. Yeah, exactly. I would go for it. <laughs> you and I were playing. Well, I'd make it on you. Yeah, probably, <laughs> dude. <laughs> All right, so he just played safe. Very smart option. He might have tried to make that ball and get. Might have left a little bit of a look at the one. Yeah, I think he can see enough of this one ball to make it off the overhead. Also, let's take a closer look on the overhead. I don't know. That two is pretty big. It is. It's really close. He's getting down on it pretty well, early, though. Well, side view is a little bit better here. I think, yeah, you can see it. He might just have to spin just a little bit, a little mm -hmm. bit of right. Ah, uh, he had to kick at it, so. And this is going to end up okay. It's a good pool. They're trading safeties back and forth here. Yeah, I think that's kind of the same situation. He left the one ball out, but I'm not sure you can see the le the correct edge to make the one ball in that top right. Which will, you know, I think you can see enough of it to bank it, but then you're running into the four with the cue ball to stop it for the two, which is hard to hard to manage. Oh, man, they're playing one of my favorite songs from when I was a kid, Twisted Sisters. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good, 80 Rock, you know? Yeah, that's my kind of music, too. I play that music on, on my guitar a lot. That's why I play classic rock. Oh, you play the guitar? Yeah, I've been playing for about 10 years. Okay, cool. Man, I should hook you up with uh, Rick Spatula, man. He plays in a band. I yeah. think he's a drummer, I think. I know he plays something. He's very musically inclined. Yeah, I would love to. Is he going to bank this ball? No, he's playing it safe. All right. This is the best look anyone's had at the one, really, but unfortunately not a good path to the two. This is a tough rack. Yeah, I mean, there's kind of that cluster up there by where the rack would go yeah. with the six, seven, eight, all blocking the two ball. I mean, this is where you got to have the vision on the safe if you want to play safe. I mean, you could go for the one here. Um, can you draw this enough to get to the two? I mean, you'd really have to. It's close to the rail, so probably not. I don't. It's that it would be tough. It's like a Shane Van Boeing type of shot there. Yeah, this is one of those where he I was, might try to. Uh, he's jacking up on it. Looks like he's going for it. Yeah, that's aggressive. He's going low on the ball, so see what he does. Now he's hitting about middle ball. All right, so maybe he sees a safe after the two. Well, he yeah. can also cut this two in the in the top right. Oh, yeah, and then it's perfect for the three. So, that, yeah, you're right. I like that. That's a double shot, too. Your cue ball is getting distance. You want to play to overcut this ball, and if you miss it, you leave it on the end rail and no shot. I mean, he could play safe if he wanted to. I mean, there's a lot of safe options here. Yeah, but I think he'll be aggressive. He was definitely aggressive. Yeah, yeah, he was not. I don't think that was a, a safe. I think An he just missed a shot. Safety. Yeah, I think if he was playing safe, that two ball would have been down lower, and that cue ball would have been up, tucked on the top rail or yeah, behind the four, behind the six. He came out of it good though. Not sure that four two's got a chance to go if you hit it right, but I don't think it's dead. So you got to like really shave the backside of that two. Oh yeah. Is it wired? Maybe. I don't I'm know. thinking not. Let's it look looks like view. it's aimed a little to the side rail. Yeah, so you can yeah. see there it's aimed to the side rail. Yeah, not wired, so you're right. But, yeah, like I said, if you shave that backside of that two with a bunch of bead, you've got a chance to make it and separate the balls if you feel comfortable with that. It's just you really got to let the cue ball go, and you're guessing it at that point where they're all ending up. Let's see what he does here. Decision, decision. He's calling a ball. What did he call? He called a ball. I didn't see. I think he pointed to that upper right corner. He might play the combo bank, too. Oh, yeah. The, four ball. He was playing the four ball in that right pocket. Yeah, the top right. Yeah, top right. Okay. But I just didn't think they were laying right for that. They got to relay super good for that, whereas... Yeah. I think it was, yeah, I mean, I think it was there. Um, you just got to hit that two ball in the right spot, you yeah. know. It wasn't really wired to either either one of those options. Um, but he came out he came out pretty good, didn't give anything too crazy attacking here. Pretty good safety opportunity. He can get that two to the left side of the table, get that cue ball, you know, behind, 
there's the uh, the mess that the four seven six, you know, just hide behind all that. Yeah. Or get or get it on the top of the table. That works too. Did he leave a keyhole? Can you see the left edge of the two here? I don't think no, so. No way. Yeah, no. Oh, the only path to the two here is off that left side rail. Yeah, past the nine. Yep, you got to go. That is the only path. Unless you could miss say around the four, maybe, and get you a could. hit. But I, you know, I don't think you're creating any distance. You kind of want to smack this two ball, leave the cue ball there. There's another the way you can hit the two. You can really draw it out off the rail by the eight, but that oh, or you made could it. just make it and call it he like called. he did. Yeah, that was the that was the prudent play. That was the the obvious shot. We're taking um, another look at that. He hit it real well though. That's really hard to judge off two rails like that. He hit it really good. Yeah, he hit this uh, about perfect. I think he he came two rails right off yeah. the top. Yeah, he came off yeah. the end. You see Efron do that all the time, and that ball was. A little ways off the rail, too, you know. Not an easy shot by any means. Yeah. So Jeff down on the three. Not too bad to the four here. This is a big game there at 5-5. Five, five. The winner of this one is going to get to the hill first. Yeah, pressure's on after this. And so really here you just really want to take advantage of this opportunity that you have and make oh, all of them. Randy was asking about the GPS tracking system I got. So, I, well, yeah, I'd say I don't care. I mean, I'll tell people because I just don't want, I shouldn't even say anything, but I think it's just a cool feature to have in, you know, your pool queue. But so Apple sells these little trackers that you can put on your keys, you can put on your dog. Um, it's just a little. They call them air tags. Air tags, yeah. That's what it is. Um, and you can hide them in your pool queue case, you know. It's not in my queue, my actual queue, but it is in my case, you know. And generally when someone steals a case, you know, they're keeping everything with it. And it's kind of hidden in the case, so I can, I can get it down to within, like, uh, it's cool. Like, I try it at my house. If I'm in my house, it's got little arrows that kind of points or whatever. Yeah. Like, you're getting hot, you're getting hot. And it yeah. gets you all the way right on top of it. That's pr sweet. Pretty, pretty cool. It'll also give you an address to, like, where it's at. Um, so if you like, if you're at a gas station, you get out and pump gas, it sends me a message. You left your queue at, and then it sends me the address. Pump five yeah. at the Exxon. I mean, it's kind of annoying. I bet you could shut the alerts off because I am tired every time I walk away from my pool queue. You get I, it? You get it? Yeah. It's like, hey, you left your pool queue at. <laughs> like Half the time you're like, I know. Yeah, but I think it's always safe. I mean, is you know, I go on Facebook and I see you know, pool cues getting stolen all the time, and it drives me nuts. Ooh. Um, especially if you're in a venue like this and somebody steals a pool cue. Like, these are all pool players, and if there's one taboo thing, you never steal someone's pool cue. As a pool uh, player. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what's going on there. That's an unwritten rule we all know. Yeah, I mean, this is horrible. Speaking of horrible, this could be real tough. Yeah, Might where's the scratch? Where's the seven going? No, that was never easy. Oh wow! And look at, look at this. Yeah, that eight ball ended up kind of funny, but yeah, he's, he's gonna have to come off the seven here. The, there's no guarantee, but he's got enough of this seven to really work. He could go around the nine if he wants to play short side with a heavy, heavy draw. Um. Randy's asking, uh, what's the distance? Uh, I think you're referring to the GPS thing, the air tag. Uh, as long as there's cell phone service, I think it's, uh, you know, it'll let you know. That's the one thing. I don't know if the air, I, I don't think it works off the of actual GPS. I think it works off like cell phone service. Oh, watch out top left. It's not going to scratch. He's okay. Do you know that? You what? Those air tags, they just work off cell phone towers, right? I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, like if you were in the middle of Montana with no cell service, yeah, you're probably not going to send out a signal. Uh, just look into it. Apple Air Tags. I mean, you know, I'm not a techie guy. My wife was the one who actually she got it for me. She always thinks of these really clever gifts. You know, just really clever stuff that I could use. That's really useful. Yeah, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I would have never thought to get something like that. 
All right, that's a good ball for Jeff. He's got a good chance to get out here. This is a good shot. You just want to stun to the right side rail. Oh, yeah, that's the fun shot right here. Mm -hmm. Come off the side rail and back. Let your stroke out a little bit. Make sure you hit it real good. Yeah, you feel good. Yeah, you can hit this, and it doesn't matter. Speed does not matter here because you're going to be good either way. Boom. Perfect. Love yeah, that shot. That is a great shot, and that's going to give him a good chance to get on the hill first. Taking his time, lining it up, gets down on it well, should stroke this ball in. All right. He's going to see the hill first. It's a good out by Jeff. It looks like Jeff will be breaking in this next game as well. So, so neither player will get eliminated. Both are on the winner's side. Oh, look who we got playing uh, two tables up from us. I'll see if I can go to the uh, the whole room view. We got Ray. Yeah. Skinador. Skinador. He's in the red. Two tables up from us. Oh, it looks like he's just practicing. There's Susie. Susie's playing with him. Mad Apple regulars. All right. Oh, no, Ray's playing a match. He's playing against that that ball guy in the red. Oh, we, oh yeah, Susie's on the table in front, it looks like. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, Susie must be playing a match right now as well. We are full underway here. We got all the action. You guys come out and watch. Yeah, this place is packed, man. It is fun. Just love seeing it as a pool player. All right, Ray scooting the cue ball out from the middle a little bit. Oh, nice looking break minus the pop off the table. I mean, balls are flying, opening up. Two balls sitting in front of a pocket. The three ain't bad. I guess getting one to the two is, is the mission right now. Yeah, everything else is sitting pretty good. Oh, that five is just irritating the one ball right now, you know? Yeah, where it blocks a nice, easy path to the two. Now you got to go kind of around the table. It almost blocks it in each pocket, you know? It's that funny little angle. Yeah. Let's see. He's, he's looking at it. God, I, I encounter this all the time, and it drives me nuts. You got ball in hand, and your object ball is just, it's in no man's land. So he might have to play a safe here, you well, know. Well, have to is a is kind of a big word because Jeff is already on one foul. If yeah. You hit, if you hit a good safety here and put the one ball somewhere you can save for a, oh, again, yeah. you Three. can win the rack. Yeah. So really, this is not a bad play at all even if you know that one ball did go and the rest of the rack doesn't look that good yeah what about sending this one ball right to the left rail and up table and locking them behind the five just lock them on the five yeah lock them on the five and then man if you get a good opportunity yeah you could three follow them here just don't want to make sure you want to get that one ball away from the four six because if you make that ball and 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 Mary, See, it doesn't look like he's trying to send this one ball up to. It looks like he's trying to make this or something. I don't see him. The way, I don't know what that was. See, he had too much angle. Too much angle. He needs to be straight in on that one ball off the rail, I mean, so he, that the cue ball stops. He did get safe, but I'm thinking, like, why not lock it on the five? Yeah. You know? See, this is a possible hit now, whereas if you really get them close on that five. Well, look at it, though. I mean, what do you mean? This is a tough hit because there's no easy path. I don't think he can see the one. No, he can't. I think you're right. Can you see? I, you might be able to see. Let's see if we can look on the overhead here. Can he see the one? No. No, you can see that, that the whole ball is going to be cut off here. Yeah. So you're right. There is no easy path. So that actually might work out to be a good save. I mean, I don't see a really good kick. The good kick here is between the 8-9 by the 6 with the outside. The, you're saying kick the cue ball to the left side rail with In between right the spin. 6 and the 9? No, no, no. Between the 8 and the 9. I'm sorry. 8 and the 9. What, and come two rails to the 1? No, no, no. One rail. You got to no put way. outside spin. No way. Before the side. There's yeah. no way you're getting that ball. Go back to the side view. I'll show you. No. 
I'm sorry. There is no way. It's there. It's there. You can hit about the diamond. Oh, now that you're at this view, you're right. But you got to put outside spin on it. That natural is going to bring you towards the eight. You got to put oh, no, outside. So you're saying kick off the rail, then come in between the eight nine. Correct. I thought you said come in between the eight nine and then kick. Over. No, no. I was like, that's impossible. No, I, yeah. I, I see what you're putting down. That's where he's going. If you guys look. Yeah, you're gonna put right on it, and you're right. Juice it oh up, and he drilled it. What God. a shot! Did he call that? He called that ball. Man, I don't know if you saw it, but Spence <laughs> just stood up to get ready to shoot. And he had to sit back down because it was just an amazing shot right there. Yeah, that's not expected at all. What a shot. Oh, yeah, we're taking a look at that one again. Right here, Jeff standing up, and he's sitting right back down. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just a great shot by Jeff, man. We call that jaywalking when you stand up early. Write him a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> he's jaywalking. But look at, look at the reward he got. I mean, just... Not a whole lot of reward here. Nope. You got almost got to kick this two in, right? Man. Back to back kicks. Yeah. That's what that's what it's all about. <laughs> and this one's harder to control the cue ball if you go the easy way around the ten to the left side like Looks this. like he's gonna come one rail and mm -hmm. he's going yeah. right at the three though. Hard to come out with a shot. Oh, he's gonna leave the two ball hanging. All right, so now Spence can stay standing and come to the table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he might think twice of, about standing up early when Jeff's kicking again, right? Yeah. That's always like the, the cream of the crop as a player. Like when you go to take a shot and you see your player standing up, getting ready to shoot, he's coming back to the table, and then you just drill an amazing mm -hmm. shot, and then they're just like, oh, I'm just going to sit right back down. Yeah, you kind of bury it in his <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah. Yep, no Jay walking. You see, it, you see it happen to everybody, man. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been in that situation too many times where I get up. I think I hit a good save. All right. Spence has a pretty decent table here. He's got to take advantage of it. Yeah, he really wants to uh, determine what he wants to do with that five ball, whether he pop out past the six or go pat, um, like between the six and the rail. Yeah, five to the six could be a little tricky. Well, the four to the five, just because of how much of the path of the. Well, I think six, if he just blocking. just low roll this three in, and then you can hit this four, bounce off the side rail, right onto the five. But you, you're right; you got to get the right angle to get from the five to the six. That's where he's going to run into any issues. Is going to be from the five to the six. Three to the four, I think, is pretty pretty easy, and same with the four to the five. And, you know, look at the seven. Does the seven go in the side pretty easily? I think so. Because where that nine ball sits, it's going to be tough to get to that seven ball, you know? Let's look at the overhead. I think the seven's got plenty of room to go. Maybe not. It's closer than it looks, you uh, know? I mean, it's one of those where it is pretty easy if you're good and straight and you don't have to hit it hard. Whenever I look at a ball and I'm questioning, does that go on the side? It goes. It goes. <laughs> Learn that from you, Patrick. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, I just for some reason lately have been learning to just slice the eyeballs off of things into the side pocket. And yeah. I don't know where I picked it up from, but I'm liking it. Because I'm learning you can drop a lot more in a side pocket than you would ever think. Yeah, and it's a really useful tool, but it's it's a risky tool. That it is. Oh, what was that? He was trying to break it up right there. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because the six, like we said, was going to be tough. But he got in jail. Yeah, this that's a big mistake because Jeff's on the hill, and he really got himself in jail here. Yeah, no easy path here to the five. Not at all. You got to kick just You got to kick just right where next to the side pocket here and put it with some speed and a little bit of low. See, he's hitting top. This is going to come wide. Uh, we call that rut row. This is a big opportunity for Jeff to put it away. So, I mean, this, the issue still remains a little bit, right? Five to the six. But Absolutely. It's much more manageable right now because he did move the nine and the six a little bit. So, Still, that nine is blocking the path to the seven ball. So you got to real end up real good on this six ball to get to the seven. Yeah, that's another issue. 
you know. I mean, you might even contemplate and playing a safe here and getting clever, right? I mean, unless you feel the feel that you can get out, it is a little tricky. The problem with rearranging furniture here is like you're going to the six ball, and you never want to break out the ball you're shooting next because that gets really touchy and iffy, and where where it just complicates the equation. It's hard to predict, you know. You don't yeah. know. You don't know if you're going to get a shot. Unless you, you're really feeling it. Right. And you really got that cue ball on the string. But I don't think anybody's really played to Efren's speed yet. So still, still difficult breakout if that's the route you're looking at. Kale Brunig said it's 1230 p.m. Is he... I wonder if he's answering that question I asked a while back, like, how long you been watching for? Um, I'm not sure what 12.30 p.m. is because it's only 9.41 over here. Okay, so he got a shot on the six, but look, he's running dead into this nine ball. He can go forward and try to try to creep up past it, but he's pushing that nine ball into the line where the cue ball is ending up to end up between the cue ball and the seven. So that nine ball is going to always be be a big ball you really got to either power this one in or almost draw it out but if you draw it you don't have a shot on the seven i mean cutting it with follow mm -hmm. uh will it can you get the cue ball down far enough to play the seven as around a, the nine because yeah. you're moving the nine towards that direction i mean or do you just play safe here you know there is a, there is a safe option it's uh, a tough safe. Just like roll up on the nine. He'll make it. He oh, got out. He got, got off of it. Got really good. I mean, you could not have gotten better. Yeah. On the seven ball. Now he's got options. He can play this all the way up, and roll forward, or he can just dr trickle this seven ball in. If that goes in the side, I'm probably gonna play it there. I yeah. can't really tell. I'm not, not at the table. I think it goes. Oh, it. I'm looking at it right now. It does go, and he can score it out for the eight. I mean, and play the eight right in the corner or even the side. Like, if he slow rolls it, he could play it up, too. Thing is, he'll have to put a little more of a stroke on with top if he plays it up. And if he puts the draw on it, the, the problem you run into is if you're putting draw on the shot, is that seven hitting the nipple? Yeah. I mean, that, that'll get you every time. That point sticks out a lot. Yeah, that point gets pretty big. So, so he's got some options. I mean, he can play this a few different ways. Yeah, and you can tell because he's really taking his time on something that looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, not, not the easiest of decisions, folks. You can't just dead roll it because the ape doesn't pass the uh, 10. So you want to do something a little more. I think he is drawn here. Yeah, he'll play this in the corner. God, he did it nicely. <sighs> Almost too much. Now you got to worry about the side pocket. No, he's good because he could just oh, roll he, forward. He, yeah, he's straight enough. Eight, yeah, and the eight ball is a, it's right in line. I mean, it's right above the nipple. So he does got to cheat this ball. You're right. A little bit, yep. yeah. He's got to put follow on it to make sure it doesn't go in. He, put, he puts any middle or draw, it goes in the drink. Yeah, looking at it at the overhead, it looks a little straighter than it does on the on the behind view. So it looks like he can hit this ball a little fuller and not not even worry about the the side pocket. You do want to come off it though and get a little angle on the nine. He doesn't like it. Stepping back, take another look at it. Yeah, I think he's just sizing it up. The thing is, I mean, he could super drop, but then you're losing shape on the nine, right? Right. So you got to go, I think, forward here. And he this is, is queuing float. up a little high on it. So Good float. Got to float above the side here. Just miss it. Yeah, and at this speed, with the conditions of the tables, it's a big pocket. Oh, yeah. So he was he had three inches to play with there. Yeah. And then, he hit it well. He hit it real well, stroked it well. Now you draw it back for the 10, I think. Yeah, yep. he's putting a lot of draw on it. Just make sure you get through this smooth. You tend to want to overdraw this ball. Oh, perfect. He hit it great. All right, this is for the match, you guys. This is a good match, so Jeff definitely fought hard. I think he lost the first two and came back and won it.
All right, there you have it, folks. Jeff Lindy on top of Spencer. So Spencer will go to the one loss side, um, and Jeff will move on to the winner's side to round two. And uh, we will be back shortly. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, go get something to drink, uh, stretch my legs. But I think we still stand, plan on staying here for a while. we got a lot of pool left. And we will be back tomorrow. I think we start. Let me look at the, let me look at the schedule here. Tomorrow is Friday. Um, I don't know what time the first matches start, but uh, we do have all the eight ball is starting tomorrow, um, so we look forward to that. Um, and we do have some master matches coming at you soon. Hopefully, we get a masters match tonight because they are playing the masters ten ball. Yeah, a lot of phenomenal players here from all over the state. So look forward to seeing that. But thanks for sticking with us, folks. You guys are awesome. Um, we'll be back shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and we will leave the stream run. I'm going to go ahead and put up the uh, the whole room view so you guys can take a look at it and just uh, watch what's going on in the background. And I'm sure we'll have a match here shortly. So see you all in a bit. All right, folks, be back in probably just a few minutes. Uh, we do got our uh, Masters 10 ball. I think uh, we got JFED coming to the table, so it's going to be an exciting match. Please stick around. should be just a few minutes.
Okay, guys. We do have another match coming to you right now. Getting them started. The names are not updated yet, as you can see. I, being from out of town, I'm not too familiar with these players, but if you are from Wisconsin, I'm sure you guys do know. They're saying this is going to be a big match. We got Chad and Jeremy. And we got Chad at the table here. That's a good three rail position. Falling good line for the three. Let's see, he's playing three to the five here, so he'll roll forward here. Uh, trying not to clip too much of the eight to block the five. See how he hits this ball. Just trickles it up real nice. Really good angle to just draw back here a couple, maybe half a foot for the six on the side. This is a big pocket. You just got to make sure that you play this one off of the side rail a little bit. Make sure that you make it. It's pretty straight so he won't float too close to the six here. Just like that. Overdrew it a little bit, but he's still straight in on the corner here. Uh, probably want to stray away from the side and run it into the eight ball. So this shot actually just got a little tricky. It looks like the cue ball is going towards the eight either way. See how he hits this. He's trying to negotiate what he's going to do with this eight ball, I think, if he can get through it or if he's got to run into it. And so he chose a real nice slow trickle ball. Well hit there, well hit. So he's got a cut on the seven. He can play this in the top left corner or in the side, the side promotes a little bit of traffic with the 10 ball but the uh, top left corner is probably a little mo bit more of a difficult shot yeah he's really worried about how that ball is coming off the seven towards that 10 if you clip the top side of that 10 you got to worry about that scratch up there He hit it right between the eyes there, between the 10 and the pocket. I found the two rail position very nicely. Still not quite out of the woods, it's still a tough shot. Come one, maybe two rails to the nine in the top left. Okay. Try and get this oh, he, he had enough angle to just stun it. That was a really clean shot. You guys saw he was flirting with the side a little yeah, bit there, but he was able to dig into the cue ball and really pull it back and kill it for the nine. So this is just a nice, easy roll. He hit it a little hard. Watch out, side pocket. Can't say he doesn't didn't flirt with it. Let's charge right now. And he'll take the first game. Give us one second on the uh, score here. We're, we're uh, switching tablets. He likes the rack. It looks checking how tight it is. It looks good. We'll see how Chad hits these balls.
interested to see where he breaks from. Real good pop. Gets a good pop on the cue ball. Will anything find a pocket? I don't believe so. That's going to be a dry break. He got fortunate here because there's no look at the one ball. You can't see it. So we might see our first push of the match. The only question is where do you push to? Yeah, you guys can see you can't see the one ball. There's no real easy push. The two three is pretty playable. All right, I'm back. We had a little technical difficulty. Our scoreboard went down, so we're getting that back up. Get you guys updated. I think uh, Chad won the first game. Yeah. So it's one nothing right now. Yes, sir. Chad's in the gray, and we have yeah, J Fed sitting down. He's actually going to be playing uh, King of the Hill against our current King Robbie on the 24th when we come back. So I think it's one nothing, Chad. Yeah, the score is one nothing, Chad. Yep. Wow, that was a great safety. That shot is really hard to pull off because a lot of the times you see a double kiss there and they kind of kind of sells out. Sometimes you even scratch off the double kiss, but he avoided it altogether and ended up real snug behind the three. There is a one rail kick between the 10-7 here on the right side rail. Probably want to play it about an inch or two below the middle diamond. And yeah, we will get that score updated. Right now it says 5-6 for some reason. I'm not sure why. But uh, we are in 10 balls Masters division. So Jeremy, very high level player. Same with Chad. Not familiar with Chad. I've not seen Chad play yet. So kind of excited to watch his game. Yeah, we're in the Masters division. These are the best guys out here. So you guys are watching what Wisconsin has to offer. See how how well they come come together and put it together. That's a good shot. He's got a good good shot to just draw straight back for the three. So Randy is asking, can you change names? I don't know what he's talking about. I, if he's talking about uh, the names we had up earlier, yeah, we got that taken care of. We're trying to work on our scoreboard right now. Um, should be one to nothing, Chad. He's kind of on a tear. He's got a pretty good-looking table here, huh? Yeah, no problems. Yeah, four to the five, no problem. Five to the six. See what he does. He could probably get, you know, a little straighter, just close to the rail and just draw back to the six. This is a good angle to work two rails towards the five. One, two. Needs that come out a little bit just so he can stun this five ball in and make sure he comes out past the seven. Yeah, still trying to work on the scoreboard here. Don't know what exactly is going on. Hit that with a little speed like he does. Comes out nice for the six. He could just roll this in, play the seven in the side. Probably wants to roll it a little bit further so he can draw off the seven to get to the eight. Eyeing his angle that he wants on the seven right now. No problem, Randy. Yeah, we're still trying to work through a little bit of a technical issue with the scoreboard. So we got a wireless scoreboard where the players keep their own score and it transfers right to our stream. And anytime there's wireless anything, stuff goes awry. So we're trying to fix that as we speak. 
And Chad is playing pretty strong right now. Yeah, he's really taking advantage of the opportunities he's had with so far. He might have ended up a little straight. I think he's got the correct, correct angle to just draw for this eight in the bottom left, though. Okay, bumps the nine, so he's good. Yep, and he'll put a little bit of draw here. He might be flirting with the uh, side pocket. I don't know. I think you just go almost like middle ball and come back and forth and play the nine all the way up. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. It takes the 10 ball out of the shot. Yeah. Ooh, he came a little short. Well, he'll cut the nine on the side here. Yeah, that's just, you got to thin it though, right? Yeah. And then the cue ball's flying. Not too much, just top, it'll float off the end, off the side rail, end rail, come up to the middle. He'll, he'll hit this real smooth. Oh, yes, indeed. And he's pretty straight in on the 10 here to go up 2 nothing. So was this a break and run here? No. No? Nope. All right. Yeah, because I kind of came in in the middle of the match, so. So we are at 2. Uh, should be 2-0. to zero. Should be 2 zero. I'm going to have to go out and see what's going on with the scoreboard. I'll be right back. All right, so we got Jeremy breaking here. Yeah, keep saying five for Jeremy. There we go. It got it, it updated there. Okay, there. Jeremy's updated to zero now. Yeah, his name also disappeared. Everything's zero now. All right, so we're still working on the scoreboard, guys. It's two nothing, Chad. We got Jeremy at the table. Yeah, we'll get the names back up. Some really weird stuff going on with our scoreboard, but we'll get it back up and running. Real nice split there. It lost the cue ball a little bit, and it came up dry as well. So this is another good chance for Chad. The way it's acting is just like wagging. The only thing, the one ball goes, there's no super clear path to the two. The seven and the three are big balls for a clear, that would be a clear path to the two. So we'll see how he negotiates those and gets around it. Yeah, score looks good from here. Yeah, we got the scoreboard all fixed up as, as of now. He caught the seven, but it ended up really good. He didn't block the three ball. He's got a good cut on the two. This two naturally leads to the three. You just float this two in and come to the middle of the table. Looks like we finally got our scoreboard figured out. Don't let this one get away from you. Very nicely navigated. Almost clipped the five, but obviously nothing to worry about here. Stop for the three. Ended up pretty dead straight. Stop for the four. Five in the side. This is a nice open look for Chad to go up three nothing. Okay, so sorry. I had to run back out again. Fill me in on what did I miss? Has Jeremy been to the table yet? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeremy broke the balls. Okay. And what happened on the break? He, he broke dry, and Chad... Okay. Played a good one ball and and then now he's gonna run he's, out. He's running out since. Yeah. Well, the good news is for Jeremy, it's race to eight. Anything can happen. I mean, at this level, I mean, almost any open table you get is is pretty close to gonna be in a run out. You know. Yeah. These guys, they don't miss a lot. You know, they get they well, get out not, of situations. Yeah. It's not just that they don't miss. It's that they find a way to solve all their problems. They always get. You know, they, they stay in line with their pattern, and they don't get out of line a lot. So. Good touch, good feel around the table. Ended up a little bit on the wrong side here. Yeah, see, and that's what, you know, like for me and you, maybe, 
But I bet you Chad finds a nice way to the seven. Right. You know, just, just like just that. kept it simple. Yeah, kept it simple. He's not afraid to take the long shot on the eight or the seven. Yeah, he'll get a good shot on the eight here. He's got enough angle to just float forward off one, maybe two rails. Yeah, I play this really soft and see how Chad plays it. Oh, uh, Yeah, this is a good angle. You just want to make sure you get past the 10 ball here. Yeah, that's the, yep. there's that beach ball you're always talking about. There's always one on the table. Always a beach ball. Just wants to stay in the way. Yeah, he hit that so good there was no way that 10 was going to get in the way. His stroke is looking real pure, real compact, not doing too much with the cue, keeping it straight, really under control, you can tell. I'll tell you what, I watched uh, Jeremy play, man, it must have been two years ago, I think. It was uh, at the State Invitational, um, all master level players, and I believe he was playing Sergio Rivas, who's a a pro player, mm -hmm. really great player. And uh, Sergio was up by quite a bit. I'm going to say it was like, I don't know, call it 9-2 to two or something, right? And race to 11 or race to 10. Yeah. And Jeremy just fought his way back and came out. And uh, it was the final match, too, and ended up taking it down. One of the most – it's one of those incredible comebacks. That you, at this level, it's like – Really hard to see or hard to do. and Yeah, you don't see it ever. Yeah, it was one of the coolest matches I've seen. I mean, even watching a lot of pro matches, it was one of the funnest, most exciting matches I've ever watched. You get so emotionally invested into it about halfway through the oh, comeback, yeah. you know? So it's a quick 3-0 lead for Chad. He's not missing, though. I don't... I don't think he's missed a ball yet. If he has, it's not nothing easy. Oh, the cue ball got kicked, and don't think he was happy about it. The break looked good. I don't. Nothing see, went. Nothing went. He made a bunch of noise there. I uh, see Jeremy come to the table, work his magic, and Jeremy's a fun player to watch. So, yeah. Do you like playing the combo here? You gotta let the cue ball go. The combo, what combo? Are we talking one seven combo? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yep, thinking the combo is going to be it. It's just you got to settle that one ball down. Yeah, it's a thin, it's a thin slice. So he followed it in. That's going to work uh, out. I'm almost wondering if he played to make the one as well, knowing he get on a two. Right. That that's a high possibility, and uh, he hit it with a little power, like he meant to make the one as well. So two to the three, no chore here. Hey, Rush says combo it up, combo it up. The, he did come between the eight nine, real nice. Yeah, so really confident coming back and forth. I might have to put a little bit of draw on this one. Yeah, this is a stun draw. Yep. Keep it above the four. And kill the cue ball a little bit. Don't let it get away from you. Just look at, like look that. Look at that speed. He's a little straight. He might have to go forward here two rails. Yeah, but he can afford to have plenty of angle on the five, you know? Right. So he could just draw out of this really easy. Draw back basically to where he is now, maybe a little farther back. Um, He's going to be good because the five goes, you know, the cue goes around the nine. To real the six, real natural angle to the six here. Yeah, two. You could even go all the way to the third rail here, and use that rail as a stopper. But then, what are you looking on the eight ball? Are you looking at the eight ten combo here? The eight, the eight's going to go on the side pretty easily. So if he gets shaped for if, that, he'll do that. If he can get there, right? I mean, you almost got to be thinking about eight ten. But see, see if he gets above it. He's playing top, so he might be playing the combo, but you got to end up real straight on this. Yeah, oh, he had wow, look at that. See, that's a creative shot. I mean, you see how much English he had on that? Yeah, and he cheated the pocket a little bit. He came out a little unfortunate. He might. Yeah, he's he's over the top here. This is not easy. you got to let the cue ball go if you want to play the side. So we'll see how he controls this cue ball. I say he's 99.9 .9 to make it here. Does it slide in? It does not. Yeah, we've seen a lot of those balls go. But look so at the shot. Today. I mean, look at how much English. He, 
how much right English he's putting on this to, to get that ball to spin above the eight. Wow. He just got a little much. unfortunate getting yeah. jacked up, you know. Yeah, you almost put too much spin to end up on that 10. And that's going to give a pretty pretty easy out to Chad to go up for nothing. Stun follow this ball or draw it. You like letting the big draw stroke out. Torture you was saying better off leaving the bank. I mean, I was thinking about maybe even the eight ten combo wasn't horrible, but you know, getting way above the eight, that was that was a very high level shot. And Jeremy's definitely capable of it. Just got jacked up. Chad uh starting off uh on fire here, four to nothing, race to eight. And again, we are in the Masters ten ball division here at WSPA. We are in Appleton, Wisconsin at the Oh my god, I'm having a brain fart. Is the Fox Fox Valley Expo Center. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> too much time in the booth here. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I forgot we're, my own name. We're not at Fox <laughs> Valley, dude. We're just in the booth. <laughs> so that's a quick 4-0 start for Chad. We're gonna see how Jeremy fights back. We know that he's not gonna give up. Like you said, you've seen him come back from this. Rick said Jeremy played it right and no doubt that he did. Um, I'm no one to argue with the way Jeremy plays. He plays four levels above what I can play. So, Real square smash there. Cue ball jumped up. He almost made it back to the uh, break line before the top spin oh, bit. Oh, man, this could be an early game here. Look at that 210 just sitting there. Yeah. We might see a, a real lockup safety here because there's no obvious shot on this one ball. You know, you could there could see a push shot. You might want to contemplate pushing that ten out of out of two ten contention. Uh, he's got to be really sure you get safe. You don't want to. Yeah, it's all about how aggressive you want to be. If you feel like you can really lock him up and not give him a good chance at all to hit the one ball, then you do that because then you you take the one and then the two ten is sitting. But if you feel like you're going to give him any kind of shot to hit the one, that's going to kind of negate you from playing the save. But I think he will play the save. And there you go. He left it out. This is a possible carom combo. Uh, no, I think you're just going to see Jeremy play safe here. Unless he comes up with something creative. Yeah, clipping the one on the right side and sending the cue ball towards the 210. Well, yeah, I mean, he could send the one right behind the five in the cue ball up table and call the 10 yeah i mean you could call it why not but and then if you miss it you're still having your opponent shoot away from the 10 yeah and if you miss it you're taking it away from him too probably that's what he did he had to have yeah. called that ball it's just one of those just in case calls but he got a really good safety out of it. There's no obvious easy hit. He's gonna hit. You can hit the side rail closest to where you are, and play between the two nine at the one. Other than that, I don't see anything that I really like. There's nothing yep. easy that's not gonna sell out. This is a good shot. Torture, you were saying exactly what Jeremy did. One into the five, and then uh, cue ball into the ten. Okay, ball in hand coming up for Jeremy. So, I don't know. I mean, I've been in and out, right? So, I don't know if uh, Jeremy's had a really good look at the table other than the last out where he was jacked up, right? Yeah. He had a good look at the table, got jacked up, got a little out, played it right. So, yeah, I really think that was Jeremy's first good look at a nice run out. Yeah, so see what he can do with this. I mean, this rack is a little tricky, you know. I mean, do you do you try to play for a two ten here? I, I don't think so. I think Jeremy's going to definitely try to run out. But uh, does a two go past a ten? I can't really get a good look at it. I think he'll still play a two ten here. I mean, you could play for the carom too, the two ten carom. 
Yeah. Now he, I think you got to yeah. play the two ten combo. Or the I think you're right. The two ball will go as well. Does so the he two might go? Play the run. Jeremy can see better than us here down on the table. So. I think it goes. Oh, he played it off the ten. Uh oh. No way. That's no good. How unfortunate is that? I mean, he played it right. If it goes, you play it. And it did go. Yeah, he had no intention of all clipping that 10 ball. Kendall brought us all pizza. <laughs> all right, Jeremy did get a good hit on the three and left it tough. Does yeah. it go? Can he see it? That's questionable. Let's get an overhead. Maybe we could see it a little better. Yeah, let's look at the overhead. Good idea. Chad's getting down looking at it. I think you can spin into this three ball off the end rail. Yeah, Chad is getting back up. We're in the bottom left table close. there. I definitely, you can definitely spin into that three. Whether you want to do that or not is the question because if you come under that three ball, it's not easy to uh, keep it safe. He's calling it. He, we saw him call it. Uh, what, so, I'm sorry, what, a, what am I missing? What's he calling? He's calling the three ball. I think he's going to try to either kick this ball in or sa uh, mass A it. Probably come off the rail. Yeah, yeah. He, he tried to mass A off of the rail almost. Yep, come off Heavy, the heavy rail. spin. Ooh, pretty good bank shot here for Jeremy. Yeah, yep, this is a pretty good straight back, and it leads the cue ball two rails back to the middle of the table if you want to hit it that way. The four ball is blocked by the seven, though, in the bottom left, so the shape to the four ball is no no gimme. Yeah, and the five is, I mean, this, yeah, this table is littered with problems here. Five is locked on the eight. Three to the four is not the easiest. And just making the three, you know, you got to bank it. Yeah, off second assessment, I would probably think about trying to lock him up on a safety here. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to clip the left side of the three ball here and try to put distance. Don't let this three ball leak out. It's always going towards that corner pocket. Nope. So he's okay, but he did leave a piece of the three so Chad can return here. But it is a little funny because if you're then in this three, you got to be careful for the scratch. Easy ball to miss when you're trying to hit it this thin too. It's real, you know, you, you don't want to hit it thick. You might even consider just playing a side-to-side -side safety here and try to try to kill the cue ball a little bit and not not worry about distance too much just make sure you can't make the three ball I'll tell you this is the toughest rack i think these guys have had right now can you see enough of the left side of the three to sneak it by no he's gonna leave a shot here for jeremy unless it gets under the seven. Oh my god he did i think it's just enough yep there, just they're straight enough. on view. It's telling me that it's that it is enough. I can tell just by the way Jeremy's looking at it. It's just enough mm -hmm. to keep him from making it. He can probably definitely get a good hit. Yeah, but then maybe he misses around the seven here a little bit. The problem is because the cloth is brand new. He's coming off the rail first, so not taking any chances here. And he's gonna sell out. Well, let's look at it. He'd have to play this three all the way down. And that's making it tough to get to the four probably. See how Chad handles this one. Yeah, he can cut it in the side. Obviously, the issue there is holding the cue ball. It, it really depends on how comfortable he is with taking a real thin cut on the four as well. And with the five balls tied up, you know, I don't even know if that five ball goes in the side by the eight if you get under the five. Man, I got a lot going on in the chat. Everyone's talking about we're just trying to keep up with the game, but um, we torture you and Rick. Everyone's got a lot of good things to say here. Um, does the five go into the right corner? Let's take a look at the overhead. I don't think that it does. I think that five is locked on the eight. Yeah, it's so, not going to pass the five, the eight, ten. Not does, a chance. That does not pass the eight. I think they're married too. You know, they're so yeah, close. They're, they're locked. 
He tried to go into the four ball, I believe. Or is that a safe? It's tough to say. Both players playing a game of chess here, man. This is this is a tough, tough table. Yeah, and that's one of those shots where you feel like you're not going to get shaped, so you don't mind putting your opponent back to the table with not not nothing offensive. You know, you want to get out of the inning. You don't want to give anything away, a run out. And you want to you want to force the issue on your opponent and make him play a good safety or a good attacking shot. Play the you want your opponent playing the lower percentages as much as you can the whole match. So Jeremy's got a good look on the three. I mean, do you think he could just push this three to the bottom of the rail along with the cue ball and use the four as a blocker? Yeah, a floating shot, real floating shot. I don't think he's going to do that. He went full offense. He called it. He called that shot. Unbelievable imagination there. Yeah, that was really creative to hold the three ball with the four there. I mean, you can make that seven 100 ways off of that three ball and not come Let's up take with a shot. Look at it. So he played, he played and called the seven. Karim shot, so very nice. Very, very beautiful shot. It was pretty to watch. But he did tie up the four ball Hold a on bit. one second, ladies and gentlemen. There's a full bus going to the Mad Apple, and there's no dr bus driver. I'll go tell Kendall. I'll be right back, folks. Got to go take care of something. Kyle will hold down the booth. Yep, no worries. So this was the issue, what he's going to do with the four ball here. Real. Does he play the four nine? It's pretty lined up, but you're letting the cue ball go, and you're probably running into the five eight there. That's what he's calling. Might play the four ball at the 10. Yeah. Oh, he called the 10 there. He tried to play the 4-10 the, uh, combo. And he came, he came away with it. He didn't give anything attacking. There's an easy one real kick. He's, Chad's got to decide whether or not he wants to play a safety or be really attacking with this four ball. He could play. He could call the four ten and still play some distance with the cue ball, but that's that's kind of a, a hard shot to judge where everything's ending up. He's sizing something up. He didn't. I didn't see him call anything. So it's interesting. I think he's kick safing here. Yeah, he ran into that ball pretty full. Always got a good chance of like making that. So I'm surprised he didn't call the ten just in case. Uh, I feel like I got too many jobs right now. <laughs> I said to go track down Kendall for something. Had the tournament director uh, saying we had something going on and went and took care of that. I'm back. Looks like I didn't miss much. Still a battle here. It looks like. Yeah, this is a good good opportunity though. Wow, That's nice on the five. I like it. He's yeah, that's be, really good. He's going to be pushing this eight, though, I think. Absolutely. Towards a little bit towards the ten ball. Yeah, it's almost going like into the ten, it looks like. Let's see where the eight goes. I think it'll go be before the ten and come back up to the middle, just like that. Oh, wow. Beautifully negotiated. That's not easy to, to predict, and he hit it real good. Yeah, see, that's where Jeremy has a little bit, obviously, way better force eight than I do. I, It's hard to predict where that eight was going, and... He controlled the eight and the cue ball at the same time. Not easy to do. So, again, both players here really putting on a show of uh, knowledge and experience. And looks like Jeremy is going to get on the board. So, like we say, and I think the first game is the toughest game. Once you get on the board, anything can happen. Yep, he had a little bit of a look, took a full advantage of it, and he gets off the mark. And we got we got Chad breaking here, so he's definitely looking. We still haven't seen a break and run, man. I think I'm going to put a bounty out here in a minute. So for our folks at home, if you guys want to keep up with all the brackets, um, CompuSport app or go to CompuSport.com uh, to scroll up in the chat, and I'll put it down there again here soon. Um, you go to that website. You can keep up with live scores of all the players. Um, you just search them or... You can, you know, scroll through the bracket. Uh, if you see someone you know 
you want to check up on them, just type their name in the search. And when the players are playing, they're updating the scoreboard so you can uh, refresh it. And I'm showing it to Kyle right now. Yeah. That's how it looks. Um, so it's kind of cool. You can follow along with all your players and it's really, really neat. Okay, so this is what I was kind of predicting to see from Chad on the break. He hit that first one so good that uh, I feel like he hasn't got another good look since that first one, but this is a very, very runnable table. Rick says, don't call it a comeback, I cool Jay. <laughs> I don't know what Rick's trying to say there. I, I haven't called a comeback or anything. I, I haven't said that. Well, that means that he's saying Jeremy's never been out of it. Oh, no. Not any match I've ever seen him play. I mean, he could be down 9-1, race to 10, and... Still be chilling. I mean, yeah, still put your money on him, you know? And it doesn't even matter who he's playing. This is a real good lookout. Look, look and run, though. He wants to stay above this three or get an angle to drop for the four off but, the three in the top right. But I'll tell you, I've never seen uh, Chad play. and he, I tell you, man, he is playing really solid. Doesn't make very many mistakes. Stays above the three there. He'll go one rail between the four, seven. He just, it doesn't really matter. He can go between the six, seven, the four, seven, and even between the four and the rail if he really wants to juice it up. But I think the natural path leads between the six, seven. Torture, you saying he's out. Rick was saying the LL Cool J song. I don't, I don't know what song he's talking about. Oh, he didn't even mess with it at all. Watch out, 10 ball. He just got oh, a that lovely the nudge there. The name of the song is Don't Call It A Comeback. Yeah, uh, I, I, probably. Yeah. I'm not really familiar with LL. All right, this is a shot of the rack. Wow, hit that nice. Yeah, avoided the side pocket. Man, this rack is low or this match is loaded with uh highlight shots. Well, it looks like I uh I might be able to take that bounty off before I put it up. This is looking like it's like it's coming to an end. He's got three balls left, he gets good on this seven. I like him to get out. This is the last last shot that he has to do any work on, really. Oh, that song, uh, Mama Said Knock You Out. You remember that? I guess there was a line in one of those in that song. This, oh, okay. That song ain't that old. Is it must have been uh, late 80s, early 90s, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty old for me. <laughs> All right, Chad cleaning this one up. So uh, I think Torture You was right. He's like, he's out. And out he got. There you go. There's our first break and run of the stream. And that's going to make it six, I believe. Oh, no, it's 5-1. Yeah, 5-1. Chat on top. Really, really clean run out there. No problems. He, only, he almost ran into a little bit of a problem with the 10 going around the uh, whole pack there. He got a real fortunate bounce on that 10. But So what round? I think I said we are in the second round right now of the uh, Masters 10-ball division. So uh, neither player will be eliminated. We're on the winner's side, racing to eight. So... Whoever does lose will go to the one loss side, still with a chance to work their way back through the bracket. All right, Jeremy's got to answer. He's got to do it now. He doesn't definitely doesn't want to go down 6-1. Oh, look at that. We're about to surpass 200,000 views here. 200K, baby. <laughs> yeah. Just need a few more to jump on. Like, you share, guys, subscribe, you guys. Yeah. All the pool pages. I might have inflated those numbers, but that's okay. Okay, so there's a good break. That's a good break from Jeremy. He let the cue ball get away from him a little bit. But he's got a shot on the one. Shape to the two is definitely no guarantee with the three and nine there. So he's got a he's got a fairly small hole to land in. But 
if he can get by that six or even come off the six correctly, he can get to the two. All right, so I just uh, posted the link. If you guys want to go check out CompuSport, check there out the brackets. It's there in the chat. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the website. But like I said, I highly recommend downloading the app for your mobile device. Works really well. It's free. Yeah, Torchery brings a good point. It is a pretty significant lead with the alternate break. Um, if it's winter break, you know, and you're down, you got a better chance, I think. Absolutely. Start but putting a pack together. We might see another break and run here, which would be a, obviously an ideal answer. Four ball's a little tricky. Oh, no, it's not. He's got plenty of room in between the seven there. It looks great. Yep. And you just float this ball in for the six. I think the six of the seven is going to be his biggest issue, which is still not a big problem. Rick is asking, is it a free app? Yes, CompuSport is free. However, you can pay for, like, the upgraded, uh, I don't know what you call them, features. Yeah. So, like, there's different features you get if you pay for it. But, you know, you can definitely see the bracket. You can check out the players. Um, it gives you an alert if you're actually in the tournament when you're playing, what table. So loaded with a bunch of good stuff. Um, so if you're playing in big tournaments like these, it's a definitely an app I recommend. A lot of the tournaments use it. Ended up real good on this seven to come two rails back to the middle for the eight. See, he played that really safe. Sometimes I'd get bold and I try to like float it above the side pocket and I end up scratching. <laughs> right. But see how Jeremy played that? Nice and safe and easy path. Eight to the nine. Yeah, one rail back to the middle. Oh, he Well, I'm not going to say easy. I mean, he got he had to put a stroke on that one. I guess he had to force a little bit. Don't get too straight. He didn't. He'll pound this off the rail. Yeah, probably play the 10 in the same pocket. All right, so that's two breaking runs in a row. Good answer from Jeremy. This is what we wanted to see. The Masters coming out and not missing. Oh, man, Rick says, appreciate the stream, making my night at work enjoyable. Well, that's awesome, and it's got to be double awesome to have a job where you can watch pool. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's not allowed. He's just getting away hey, with it. Look who's behind you. You got you got Ray peeping on in here. You want to peep on in here? Come on in. Come around that way. If anybody's uh, watching, just peep in here. Just say hi. Say hi, Ray. Yeah, I'm going to give Ray the mic for a little bit here. How's it going, everybody? Mad Apple Extreme. Ray's going to join me here. He's waiting for his master. He's going to pop in here. Yeah, you guys are going to get a master level player in here. So That is true. I am a pool master. No, we said master level, buddy. You're in this, in this division, are you not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we like to hear. Mr. Skin and Door. I'm going to win this tournament. Skin and Door. Yeah, buddy. There he is. I'm on the loser side right now. Uh, I played Carl Zoo Tavern. He pretty much ran out the set. About as good as you can do for alternate break. But, uh, yeah. Other, other than that match, I, I am going to win this tournament. I feel good about it. Good. I probably got to win 15 in a row from here, but let's go. Yeah, man. You, nothing wrong with taking the scenic route. My, my buddy always says sometimes it's easier on the loser side. Yeah, you know, and actually that's, that's absolutely right. You start getting in a, in, a, in a rhythm, and once you find that rhythm, you never really let it go. You never have. You never can. You you never um. Ha you know. You never have to stop. It's You're not play, not play, away play, from play. the table. You're not away from the table long enough. This is gonna end up pretty good. You know what? Actually, he might be able to make this ball. Oh boy. It's well. Um. It's I, close. So to make this, you got to kind of hit this with a little inside, which. Um allows you to hit this a little thinner, but it still throws in. 
I'm playing it safe. I'm just thinning it, overcutting it, bringing the cue ball back up table, trying to ho hope that the uh, one ball is somewhere near the center rail. Yeah, just overcut it. Center yeah. diamond of the center rail. But oh, never mind. Run, he had run enough out. to make it. He had enough to make it. This is not. Oh, this boy. is not a straightforward run out at all. Really, now he's almost forced to play safe. I don't see anything to attacking. Well, I'll tell you something I see. Uh, bank combo the 10 in the side. Yeah, that's wired. Because that 4-6 thing is a nightmare. Yeah, no, that's mm -hmm. too wild. You got you to gotta play. You got to control this game. You're playing Masters. Uh, what's the score here? The Beckham score Hauer. is 5-2. Five, 5-2, uh, five, two. Five, two, okay. 5-2, five, Chad's up. Oh, wow, look at this. I like this. Sit on the six ball. Mm. Beautiful touch. I think he left it. I think he left it. Did open. that bounce off the six? Barely. He can play a carom if he can see the edge of the two. And that carom will lead to a pretty good shot on the two as well. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get an overhead. Oh, it's gonna be on. So there's the overhead. It looks like he might have squeaked out off that six ball enough to uh, to play this carom the two eight. Yeah, if you you can carom, or you, if you can see enough of it, you could play the combo. I like the carom. Yeah, the carom's gonna lead the two ball on, over that top right, pretty nice, or oh, top left, sweet. or bottom right. Bottom right. So he's still got a big problem with this four ball, though. Yeah, how do you attack this four? So me, uh, let's see. It's pretty tough to come off that right side end rail, short rail, to get to the four because that nine ball. It's not too much of in a way, but you got to force the cue ball through that two a little bit. Jeremy has a huge stroke, so he can play this ton of top and try and sw come swing at this breakout. And then if you miss it, you're underneath you're underneath the pack, and there's I think more safeties underneath it than on top. I predict he's swinging. Oh, boom! Shaka laga. What does he come Ooh. away with? Didn't get anything too juicy, but but a uh, lot more options, absolutely safety wise, and um, you know it wasn't risking much there. No, yeah, I agree. It it was definitely a good good opportunity to swing at those, like you said. Um, what do you like here, man? You gotta clip this four ball somehow. I don't really see anything real full of the four ball. Um. Yeah, it's not that good, actually. How about this? You uh, just blast the four ball, four seven bank, seven in the bottom right. Easy run out. So what I'm gonna do probably is I'm gonna play on the right side of the four and play the cue ball one rail down behind the nine. Send the four kind of center table ish. That's what he's gonna do. Yeah, you're hoping the four six lines up, and you're really just hoping to get behind that nine. There it is. Perfect. Every everything you wanted happened there. That was there you go. So I am a master. Hey, I size. guess so. You are right, dude. You <laughs> saw that like a dream. It was a really good shot though, you know. It's really hard to to negotiate that touch when you're going through that seven ball. But he did really well with both the cue ball and the four. Now here's the question. What do you do now? Now where's the grandmaster? Let's get let's get Johnny Fields a peep on in here. Well, there's a there's a kick. He can he can hit the jump. I just don't see much much good that can happen with the jump. You can clip the four ball with the jump on the bottom left side and try to kind of use it as a, the six as a stopper and create distance. Maybe your cue ball comes up behind the seven, like two rails tight. Uh, two to three rails tight, I should say. Ooh, he's just going to push the seven up on the five, looks like. I was thinking about intentional safeties. Um, I was looking, I was thinking about putting the nine, putting that the really nine well. towards the five, but he did it with a seven. It lines up to the hole. Yeah, he, he really had nothing there. He was hoping to, uh, and the other thing is, even though the five, seven lines up, 
um, controlling the five for your next shot is no walk in the park. Right. Do you consider playing a safety here since he's on one? Absolutely. Freaking Lutely, I'm playing safe right now. Yeah, yeah, just stick him on the six, you know? Mm -hmm. Stick, stick him, him on, on the six. six. The, uh, the thing with that, though, you do want to leave the cue ball, or I should say the four ball, you want to leave the four ball somewhere where you can play a third safety if you do get the foul here and put him on two. You don't want to play that four ball too open unless you're going for the run out. Looks like he's going for the run out. I think he'll Playing play the, the four on the side, oh. following up. Then he's going to play the combo. Um, I don't. I mean, love. I mean, he might can see better how the good this combo is. Use the if, 10 as a stopper for the cue ball here as well. We well, don't want to go behind the 10, that's for sure. I don't mind running into it. It's just touchy. Oh, that was nice. Yep, there it goes. Now he's opened up the rack, so... Do you, do you cut this in the side or are you banking it cross side? Nope. Cut it in the side. Come around three rails. You could come two rails and just play the six on the same side. But, um, uh, well, here's the, th here's the thing. Have you guys been talking about these tables? Yeah. Ab oh, absolutely. The tables are slidey. So, Super so, slick. So coming around three rails, your angle is not going to be as reliable and fat as you're used to. Um, he played the bank. That was surprising to me. Um, he's he's okay here. He can roll through. Perfect. He can roll <laughs> through. I mean, he's not he's not floating towards the nine, but it's definitely manageable. You just play this through to the top, saw long rail, and back to the middle. Even hit it with a little right hand inside to get a little closer to his work here. He's not dead straight. I still think he'll draw this ball. Yeah, he's stro he's stroking a draw. And how's his touch? Nice. Beautiful touch. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. And that's going to make it 5-3. A little bit of a battle back here. What do you think, Ray? Who do you think's got this? Five three race to eight, uh yeah race to eight ten ball is a healthy race. Yeah, um, I have had not seen Chad Elston for a long time, but he's always a real good player. Jeremy's just a monster. So I mean, a lot of it's gonna come down the break. You put, they're putting the two three on the corners. Um, that has been the rule for a long time, but I I'm starting to hear. They're put, they want the 2-3 random now, some tournaments, more and more tournaments. Yeah. Increasingly. It's, it's one of those pattern racking issues. I think there's always going to be an argument for both sides in that. But I think it's good. I don't really mind it. It's not like um, you're controlling the 2-3, you know, after really you're, you're not trying to control them too much. He's breaking from completely the side there. He switched he over the, the side. To yeah, makes a 10 in the corner. That spots up. Yeah, because in the nine ball tournament, the nine counts on the break unless it goes in the top two corner pockets by the rack. If the nine goes in the side or the, uh, the corners by the break box, then those count. But in the 10 ball, it's going to spot no matter what. Okay, here's a heads up here. Overhead. This, uh, just uh, heads up, this could be a tricky shot here because you're playing this with left English forward, and these rails are not picking up much. Okay, he, 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 got, out, he got away with it. The, I don't know if you saw, the cue ball kind of jumped back and mm -hmm. just missed the five. If that hits the five, a lot can happen different with that shot, and you can get hooked with the five four. Yeah, instead, really he missed it, and now he's off and running. He's going to draw this because he definitely wants to avoid the 9. You, you also want to avoid the 8-10 here. Um, I'm going forward, and I'm just playing the cue ball center table. A stun. Uh, you, can't you, you don't want to hit the 9. It. Yeah. You just got to avoid the 9 and go forward with the, and get center table. Oh, you went your way, yeah. 
He wanted to avoid everything. I didn't know if he had the angle to do that. Right. Where that um, A-10 was kind of a threat, but he's cheated the pocket to the outside a little bit. Now he's looking. Looking like the uh, J-Fed we all know and love. Absolutely. This is running out like like whale water. There you go. <laughs> He's got no problems on the table here. I think getting on the right side of the six is is the biggest thing. Yeah, you want to get good on the six because the six doesn't have its two closest pockets. Um, that's not very good. I don't think it. I don't think it goes by. You might. Yeah, you might have to play the combo here, and you don't want that six ended up on that bottom point where it doesn't go on the side. It'll go by the nine, but if it ends up on that point, it becomes a really difficult shot. I mean, I'm, if it goes by, that's good. But otherwise, I'm playing the combo here, but now your whole question is where does the six ball go after the combo? Right. And how do you control the cue to get a good shot? It looks like the six naturally wants to drift down towards this <laughs> center pocket on the right side. Ooh. And he wanted it away, so he put some power on it and rattled the seven. Mm. Tough miss. He didn't. He didn't leave anything too easy as a starter. I'll tell you. So that shot, even that shot, looked pretty good, right? Not, uh, not unmissable, but the miss is shocking. So what I've noticed is any time you have caroms or combos in the side pocket, it. I've seen it so many times where, where balls look dead. Not that that one did, but, but other times where balls look dead or caroms look dead, and they just don't go in the side. I'm tired of, of tricking myself into thinking that I got these dead balls on the side with a carom or, or a combo, and I don't. You played a really nice safety there. That was sweet, yeah. Even if even if you uh, don't get a complete hook there, it's, there's nothing really available with the six. So he'll probably kick the easy rail here, the left side short rail, and come at the six, which makes the side pocket a big play. I'm jumping this in. This is in the hole. Yeah, straight over the 10. Oh, you're right. That's what Jeremy's looking at, too. He's pulling out the short stick, guys. Yeah, again with these kicks. Well, first off, if you kick, there's you got to come a long ways to get any kind of safe after after the hit. But second, these tables are amazing, but the the rails are slidey. They're too damn brand new. Watch the cue ball, guys. This could he could lose it off the table here if he gets bad contact. Oh, he didn't get up. All right, good news. You're back. I'm gonna giddy up because I. I probably got to play my match any minute now. I don't want him waiting for me, but, man, it was wonderful in here. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you guys do a good setup here, man. Who, who brought all this down, everything? It was Kendall. Kendall, for the most part, Kendall and this guy right here. Well, I'll tell you what. Hopefully I can uh, keep winning and get make it back to the morning matches. If you guys are here in the morning, hopefully I'll keep winning and just be able to play with these these champions. We got to get you out on this table, dude. You got to keep winning so we can watch you play here. And you never miss from the booth, right? <laughs> I I still have yet to miss from up here, but I'm sure I'll pull it off eventually. Let me, I'm going to stick around just to see how he gets on this eight. So so a big issue here, I don't know if you're talking to the players yet, the rails are slidey, right? Mm -hmm. So that means getting onto this eight ball is not as easy as you one would think. The seven's in the hole. The cue ball is a new cue ball, too. It's not anything that... I, I've never seen this cue ball before. It plays great. I love it. But it's not something that you could say you're familiar with. It's not, uh, you know, grandma's cookies. On a shot like this with a seven hanging, you got to get on the short side of the eight. He didn't even want to try it. He said, "Nope, I'm just going to play to the center table and get and play this combo. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to mess around with with uh, you know, slidey rails, new cue ball. I'm just going to play this combo." Yeah, he, he took the guaranteed a little bit tougher shot there. So, we'll see where this eight ball ends up. I think there's enough space between the eight cue ball to where as long as he hits it at a good pace, he doesn't really have to worry about too much 
getting too funny on the eight. Oh yeah, this is just straight up. If you make it, you're out. If you miss get, it, get good shape on the eight. You probably sold out. And that is selling it all. Sold. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not good on the ones and twos. Sorry for that overhead delay there. All right, we'll see this go back and forth, I think. I want to see he the might sponsor. even just hold it. I want it. to see the back of Jeremy's shirt as he runs out. Well, who's this, The Rock? What is this? Oh, Look at this. Oh, he wait. might he might fluke the nine. He's going to fluke the nine, too, and end up okay on the eight. No, nah, I think this is still cuttable. Yeah, so ten ball, you can't fluke anything in. It's, it's uh, incoming player's choice. Um, and he's going to choose to take this for sure. Yeah, this this eight ball is pretty manageable. I don't want to miss hit this and end up in. Yeah, he's, he's drawing a little bit. Make sure he stays away from those corner pockets. Before I leave, I'm going to give a little bit of excuse to everyone, including myself, if I get into the stream. The tables are a little slidey. Never seen this cue ball before. Um... The tables are great, amazing. I love them, but they're going to play a lot different come Saturday, come Sunday. I did the, the pockets earlier. are going to tighten up. You know, other things are going to tighten up too. <laughs> you get more pressure coming Saturday night, Sunday. But yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna giddy up. Thanks for letting me in here. Say hi. Good luck, Pe Ray. I peeped on in. I peeped on in. Yeah. Yes, you did. We appreciate it. All right, and that was Ray Skinner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see it at home, that's what the mix ma or the Masters ten ball bracket looks like. I mean, you might have to squint your eyes on there. I don't know if they can. Can you read that on the no, screen? No, I really can't. I you got your glasses. Okay, well, you look, we're in round two. So I'm going to go back. We'll come back to it, and I'll try and uh, walk, walk down it. But that's what the bracket looks like currently. The winner's side, anyway, if you're on the winner's side. Big break there. So Three ball. All right. Chad's got Jeremy doubled up here, huh? Yep, yep. It's 6-3. He needs two, and he's got a good snap. It, this one ball is not going to go anywhere, though. He doesn't have a pocket for the one. I don't think he can back cut it into the side. And there's no real future in trying to go crazy and back cut bank it. So, yeah, I was actually just talking to the guy from Diamond who uh, brought all these tables here. He's on the road taking them on the trip. Um, so these are not pro cut. Um, I guess you could call them uh, APA cut is what he said, but they are not four and a half, not four and a quarter. They're four and three quarters. That's a big pocket. I guess so they had to get the deal from Valley, and the Valley, you know, they got big corner pockets. I guess something to do with the deal there. Oh, okay. So they, they are bigger pockets here. Um, but, yeah, and we have 120 of them here. So they're playing – these diamonds are playing a little more like valleys than, than a normal diamond would. So, yeah, if you guys stick with us throughout this match, after I'll, uh, I'll go back to that bracket and kind of walk you guys down, show you where we're at with the matches and everything. Um, but, yeah. Oh. Tried to force that ball in a little bit to get out for the two. Just caught a little thick and rattled. So I got to catch up in the chat room here. I've been out for a while. I'm gonna read through some of this stuff. Uh, see what I can catch up on. Okay, is he gonna? I don't think the cuts there. You got to play a safety and run the cue ball between the two nine, <laughs> trying to get the one ball to the end rail. Like with torture, you said a while back, Strickland had a a pocket made or a table made with no side pockets to get him away from playing the sides. I like the sides on diamonds. I'm a fan. Valley's not a fan of the sides at all. Uh, all right. 15 in a row. 
Um, Rick was talking about 15 in a row. What was that about? Do you know? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Rick, go ahead and remind us. They're yeah, talking about the sliding cloth. Yeah, the, the cloth is a little slidey right now. Very, very slidey. Uh, Tim Clark, Speedy, I believe. He's out there. Combos aren't going in this game. All right, so you're going to try to put this one ball on the end rail. Okay, Torch, you are, he's asking, are those brackets posted anywhere? Yeah, I grabbed that bracket off the CompuSport app. So if you go to CompuSports, and if you scroll up a little bit in the chat room, uh, you'll see me, Patrick Glenn. I posted a link there to their website. You go to their website, uh, you get the brackets there, or you could download the app and uh, get the brackets there. But I will put it back up and kind of walk you guys down because it might be a little blurry. All right, so you can see this one ball. You can see an edge. He can make it. He has enough to make it. It's a real thin cut. And where the cue ball sits is not an easy stroke. Oh, Ray said he has to win 15 to 1. Oh, yeah, he said... He said he's got to, because he's on the loser side, Ray is. So he said he's got to win about probably 12 to 15 in a row. Oh, I don't, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Let's see, I'll go over here. Um, I don't think it's quite that many. All right, that was a great cut there uh, by Jeremy, and he uses the five ball to stop him. It actually makes the five ball, so he's making two in a row, or two at a time, I should say. But he's playing shape for the four ball here. If he's going to hit this bank, it's going to be tough. So, yeah, you'd have to go to nine rounds on the loser. So there's nine rounds on the loser side. And then you'd also have to double dip the guy on the winner's side. So nine, ten, yeah, 11, 11, 11 matches straight you'd have to win. That's a tough order in this division. Yeah, well, Ray thought it was 15, so he's probably stoked. That it's only 11. Well, plus I think you won a match too, so that takes one less round out. So it's probably closer to 10. But, I mean, when you're in this division, it probably feels like 15 for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Meanwhile, we got uh, we got Chad at the table. Jeremy played a good safety there using the 10 ball and to uh, stop the cue ball for the 6 as a blocker. Yeah, Torture You brings up a good point. Losing the first round in a, a big bracket, it's a, it's a long climb, you know. It's like all uphill. And it's all scenic. All right, so Chad is calling a two in the bottom left here. This is going to be... He's kicking past the nine with left spin. He got the hit, but he's going to find the side pocket with the cue ball. Jeremy's going to be happy to see this table. You know, I'm wondering if Chad even likes to jump because that was a pretty easy hit for the jump, and it was pretty safe. And here's another one. You play the two. You got to get the right position on the four in the side, or do you contemplate, again, a tough 4-10 combo? I think we'll see him play for the four in the side. Yeah, I agree. Too, it's too of an too much of an open table to be taking those kinds of risks, especially when you're down three to six. Can't you can't be taking big risks and and selling out games. You only got two games left to give. Oh man, uh, Tim Clark just said John Fields, LJ is on the loser side. That's a shock, but. Absolutely, there is a lot of great players here in this division. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, any player is capable of clawing their way back here. No so doubt. Jeremy did get onto the four, into the side, and nice onto the six. So should be out. Yeah, this is the last big shot. Make sure you draw this down for the eight. Yeah, Torchu is right. Play the two and the four in the same pocket. He's even going to stun to the rail for the eight. Yeah, nice shot there. Real natural to get to the nine. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny that, you know, the nine is right across from the ten. Could get funny. Yeah, you don't want to end up straight on this nine ball. I mean, it's going to be no problem for Jeremy. 
Mm, he's a little straight. Yeah, he can draw back here. He'll draw this all he the could, way to the end rail. Yeah, he could draw it all the way off the bottom rail if he wanted to. That's what he'll back do. Back up to the 10. Yeah, perfect. Oh, over. and, and it slid over. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he loaded up with some spin as well. You can see how smooth he stroked that ball. He didn't have to muscle it to get it back there. It's well, I guess uh, LJ lost to Chad, who's currently playing, and is leading right now 6-4 to four against Jeremy. So in John Fields, actually, he won this event last year, if I remember correctly, right here on this very table, um, on the stream table. Uh, he took it down, so... He will have to fight his way back all the way through the bracket if he wants to defend his title. That's a that's a good run out from Jeremy. He definitely can't lose that one and and uh, be down uh, with three to seven with your opponent on the hill. So if he wins this one, he's right back in the match. And we've seen a break and run for both of these players. So we definitely know it's possible. He just needs to hit a good break here. Yeah, I mean, I could actually, I could just go through the bracket right now, um, kind of tell everyone what happened. Uh, you got, uh, I mean, do I start in round zero? There's a lot of names to go through. Wow. Well, let me know in the chat. If you guys want me to go through the bracket, I can do that. Mm. Um, get a lot of names to call off, a lot of matches, but have all the info here. I think I'm going to kind of stray away from it. Um, what I could do is I'll let you know. Who's into round three on the winner's side? So it's a little bit of a shorter list. Uh, right now we got Duncan Kaufman making his way to round three. Chris Bond. Dave Cools Jr. Oh, look at that. Mason Cook is still on the winner's side into round three. There you go. So we got one, two, three. Four matches left in round three on the winner side. So it's going to be getting down close after round three. And uh, we might be getting towards the end of the night here. Um, I got to go find out how many more matches they're going to be sending over to us. Yeah, it is 11. 11.06 here. So. That's a good question. How big is the field size for the uh, Masters 10 ball? We had 45 entries. Uh, so, Andrew, yeah, putting it up there for us, 45. That's what I got on my sheet here anyway. Is he going to take a foul here? He sure is. He meant to make that one ball. Yeah, because uh, leaving the one ball is going to allow Jeremy to probably find a way out here. Well, with all these, with these four four balls five balls lined up on that side rail it's definitely no no walk in the park not at all i mean right now if you're playing this shot like you got to control the three ball and the cue ball after hitting the one ball or that works. work your magic and just don't move the furniture is the key rule here that yeah. was really clever so he he'll pop out here for a cut on the four yep Does he get out far enough? Enough to make it, yeah. I think so. Yeah, he's good. The key here is the six to the eight. Got a little close to his work. A little close. Oh, is that right? Andrew just said uh, our very own Chris G is leading the bees in the nine ball bracket. Chris was playing I was playing Chris today. He's playing pretty solid. His stroke so, looks good. Yeah, I'll have to kind of update you guys. I don't know where he's at. I'm sure he's still here. But yeah, he he had won his first four matches, I know that much. So he made his way into the top thirty six out of the field of let's look at it. Uh nine ball B division, hundred and seventy eight entries. And I think he was into the top thirty six is what I think I heard. I could be wrong. My mind is a weird thing. Okay, so are these balls touching? They must be. 
Ah, he's trying to go into the 10, huh? Yeah, I think that's not going to scratch, though. Yeah, he leaves it in a really weird spot for Chad. Yeah, I bet you uh, Chad's pretty pretty happy. Looks like he's going to take a quick bathroom break. Oh, man. And Chris is good. I'm kind of happy. I don't have to play until 9 o'clock tomorrow night, so. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I'll probably be in the booth tomorrow. I'll be here all day, guys. Looks like we got a bit of a player break, so what I'll do is I'll bring up that bracket again. See if I can walk it, walk you guys down it a little bit. All right, so if you guys see where the blue and the white is, that is going to be round number two, which is currently the round that we're in. And I'm going to go down that list, uh, which is uh, you got Duncan over J.D. Prestigrand. Pestigard, uh, eight to four. So Duncan moved into round three there. And then below that, you got Tim Leahy uh, still battling against Nate Mindham. Not sure what the score is there, but they're currently playing. You had Dan Moser uh, getting defeated by Chris Bond, eight to four. Uh, Chris Patterson uh, and John Gills still battling it out in round two. Uh, Dave Kossel over John Kramer, uh, Wisconsin Billiards Hall of Fame, uh, eight to three. So Dave goes into round three. Uh, you got Jeremy and Chad playing currently under that. And uh, second from the bottom, Carl, who I don't know if I want to try to say this one, Zoo Tavern. I got to zoom in on the names. Zoo Tavern uh, facing off Tyler. With, ooh, I'm not going to, we'll call it Taylor W. Uh, they're currently battling on table 60. And uh, at the bottom there in round two, you got Mason Cook over Preston Oles Whiskey, eight to six. So that's kind of what the bracket looks like on the winner side right now. And uh, we are currently on a little bit of a player break. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Chad wants to go regroup a little bit. He only needs two games left. So if he gets out here, he'll be on the hill. He knows how important this is. Get that bracket out. Looks like Chad's just getting back to the table. Now, so what does Chad got? He's got, uh, got this the cue ball in the uh, bottom left corner pocket. And he's shooting that six ball. It's just weird. I let's see if we can look at the overhead. Is it like? Do you think it's hooked on the point or no? I, no, I don't think so. Nope, not hooked. If it was pro cut, it might be. But this is no easy shot to the eight. You got to hit this one good. That was not an easy shot. And yeah. now he leaves it pretty simple here for Jeremy. I mean, not simple for me or. A lot of people at home, but probably simple for Jeremy. Yeah, this is all touch. You want to float between the eight and nine and still avoid the uh, side pocket. You still might, I considering a bank for Chad on that last inning, so it's still an option. Oh, check that out. Uh, Jason Gibbs says, Chris is in the hot seat in the B's. So he said, welcome to the A's. So, yeah, if you win in the B's, they're going to just move you up to the A's the next year, you know. So that means his time in the B division is done. I told him Chris should be playing in the A division anyway. He's been playing good lately. All right, so he'll kill this, I think. Oh, he's going to go two rails. Hit it real smooth. Wants to come under it. Yeah, that's real nice. Straight is that, draw. Is that what the rule is, the top three players? I was just talking to the tournament director about it. I know... The winner definitely gets a bump. If it's the top three that get the bump, then, yeah, I guess so. With a field of 176, that's pretty fair. All right, Jeremy Klon is way back into within one. I'm telling you, never count Jeremy out of a fight, man. Absolutely not. That was a big six ball that Chad missed as well. If he makes that, you know, he's got. I feel like he's got a good chance to put himself on the hill. Yeah, no, but that was a tough shot, right? I mean, the ball was like in the pocket. 
And it Absolutely. feels it feels like because it was like kind of on the point. Mm-hmm. It could just make your mind feel like you're hooked and you're not hooked, and I don't know. Yeah, he did overcut that ball too, so he might have been playing away from the point a little bit. Oh, Dave Coles. Uh, thank you, Jason. I'm absolutely horrible with reading names. I, I got a second grade le- reading level, I think. I almost know all my ABCs. When it comes to <laughs> names, man, I, I'm terrible too. Man, was I, when I was in the Marine Corps and I used to have to read off like rosters, like, you know, I'm calling off like 200 names and <laughs> all my Marines knew it. I would just, I would destroy all their last names and it was like kind of a comical thing. <laughs> I would make up half their last name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, as long as I get the first and the last Letter right, it's all good. Big break there from Chad. He's got a good starter on the one. Only problem is the cue ball's leading right to the two. So this is a tough shot. You, p- Well, man, if he cuts this one in the side, I don't know if he's, I don't know if you can hold, can you hold that? I don't think you can. I think he's got to work something else out. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but it's a real small window to go between the 210. He was able to hold that. Very, very nice. Very nice. All right, so what do we got going on here? Uh, Jason Gibbs says he's probably the highest Fargo-rated player in the field. Are you talking about uh, Dave Coles? I know Jeremy's pretty high in Fargo. I think Chad as well. I mean, just I think both these players are 700 rated. I know John Fields is like a 719. That's pretty high. Uh, He's got a good shot on this four ball to draw it straight back for the five in the uh, bottom right. Play a little bit of short side here. So your touch has to be good on this draw. Oh, he overhit it. So he can use the eight ball as a stopper here. Torchy was saying you would need a lot of left and hit the 10. I don't even think Chad hit the 10 and he was still able to hold it. So mm-hmm. unless we're talking about a different shot. But when he cut that one in, I was like, yeah, it's tough to hold to the two. But he did it well. Definitely want to come into the left side of this eight if you if you hit this eight ball two full. And we're possibly looking at what, break and run here to get to the hill, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Chad has broke the balls very nicely this match. But this is the shot. You don't want anything funny happening to this eight because I don't think you can avoid it. Highest B-rated player. I don't know because uh, I know I know what Chris as Fargo is, and there's there's a lot of so that you can. The thing Beautiful. is, these divisions are not based off Fargo, so like you could have a 500 in the Bs and a 400 in the As, you know. Um, and I'm sure there are 500 level players in the bees. In fact, I know there is. So this is uh, mainly based off your like your rating. WSPA rating is based off your league operator and kind of how you perform as far as your league stats. Um, and if there's nothing there, then they will look at Fargo uh, as kind of a, a metric, but it's not the metric that they use. Great shot there to miss the nine. If you clip the nine there at all, you kind of end up real thin on the seven. Okay, yeah, Jason's saying yes. Dave is a 738. That's up there. I mean, I'd say that's definitely grandmaster level, professional level. All right, pound that ball a little bit, get it off the rail back to the other side. He's got a little bit of angle here, too. He probably wanted to be a little straighter on this eight to make Eight to the nine, easier, but... Oh, okay, Torture, you did correct me. I guess he did hit the ten. Oh, he he just bumped it. Yeah, when he hit the one and mm-hmm. did that. Okay, yeah. All right. You got me, Torture, you. I told you my mind is a... Uh, it's a weird thing, man. I, I can't remember nothing. <laughs> okay. Man, Chad's running this like uh, pretty, pretty solid. Now, do you put a, a stroke on this, come back and forth, or do you just roll and hold? I think you just roll and hold with where the 10 ball is. You might want to put a little outside to kill the I ball. Bet you, I bet you he comes back and forth. Let's see. Nope. He pinch drawed it. Yeah, That's a really good touch. That's a tough shot. 
And that's going to be a break and run for him to get to the hill. We got a 7-5 match, Chad. All right, Jeremy needed to win three straight if he wants to stay on the winner's side here. Yeah, I believe he's done it once already in this match, so definitely not impossible. It's something that we've already seen. It really comes down to how well he hits a break, you know. Because Chad's going to have another opportunity to break and run. It looks like he'll have two, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it is alternate break. Unless there's a rule if you're on the hill, you're done breaking, which I don't think there is. Yeah, I've no. seen that before, like, uh, where if you're on the hill, that you know, you're done breaking. It's but like a ping pong rule. Is it? Yeah. Like I've seen you, it in pool. You, like, can't serve when you're on the on game point. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. man, that cue ball got away. I think flew off the table, and I don't know where it went. That's a ground ball to left field. But he didn't leave a wide open spread, so Chad will have a little bit of work here to finish this match. One ball is going to go by the three. Two ball is going to go by the six. I think they both have half a pocket. And then he'll be playing from the two to the four, which is right next to each other. So this is still runnable. It looks like they all have a pocket. It's just a little bit of traffic there in the middle. And the two goes by the six, right? Yep. Yeah, it goes by the six. That's real nice. Draw back a little to get to the three. And then probably going to be playing the four in the same pocket as the two. Unless he wants to open things up here, I don't think he does. Nah, there's no yeah. reason to. You just never know where that ball's going after you start opening balls that you don't need to. Agreed. He'll try to stay away from that if he can. Play this with a little outside to come back to the middle of the table. Mm, he underhit that ball a little bit. I don't know. I think it'll be fine. It'll be on the five. And the five to the six is pretty, I mean, you got so much table to work with, you can put that cue ball anywhere. Yeah, but where you land on the six is really important because of where the seven is. Yeah, that's true. And so he might draw this to the side rail with outside and come up to play the five in the side. Yeah, he's just got to be careful. Like, he doesn't want to get, well, get way above the ten and the nine and everything. I don't think that's going to happen. But, yeah, the angle on the five, like to be kind of straight, shoot it down. I like the five in the side. Yeah, but then you got to get kind of below it. Right. Yeah, so you got to really put a stroke on it for that. I think this angle allows for that. Well, that a much of a draw stroke. That's what he did. Okay, so yeah, he, I mean, he didn't get fully below it, but he got enough to where he can go on the side with it, like you were saying. Yeah, and he'll play this three rails around coming towards the six. So he re he's really going to like this. As long as he doesn't get crazy thin on the six, I think he'll be okay to end up between the eight and nine for the seven <laughs> in the top left. These guys are beating me up on the names. Craig Fowler is saying, uh, pronounce the E in Chris Bondi. So I guess it's Bondi. And he's have to slow up. Yeah. So we got a little more angle. He's going to have to really touch the six ball in and end up with a little bit of a cut on the seven. I think I'm just going to have you pronounce the names, and you can be the bad guy. Hey. I'm just going to say first names. And I'll uh, butcher them on purpose. <laughs> Is he going into these balls? All right. All Torture, that. you said if he gets good on the seven, he's out. And he I did. think think he's – does it go past the nine? It's got to. It looks like it's just perfect, a perfect hole here. And he's got a good angle. It looks like he might be able to avoid the set, the eight. Uh, Tough to see from that angle. And he might be running into the eight a little bit. Nothing crazy. It's going. It goes. It goes. goes. You saying it goes? Let's see. It goes. Dead perfect between those two balls. It's almost hard to miss because if you get it between those two balls, it's got to go. You I, know. I don't want to shoot this shot for the money. I'll tell you that much. This is tough. Yeah. Uh, these guys. I, I mean, know, you know man. what? He could contemplate playing the seven ten carom if he doesn't like doesn't the seven. Like it. Yeah. Let's see what he lines up. 
He's, he's going at the seven. He's lining the seven up. Can he miss the eight? What's going to happen to the eight? He it went it. all day. Oh, yeah. And played the speed perfect. Yeah. This yeah. is looking like it's you, you could put a fork in this one, guys. Yep. A few stop shots here. Maybe just roll forward a little bit. Or a lot. Put a little outside on that ball, too. <laughs> Rick says it doesn't go. Rick, I hate to tell you, it went. <laughs> it went clean. It went all day. It was tough to see. I mean, if you're not down on the table, it's it's somehow it's hard to tell. Well, it's, it's not your eyes. It's actually just, you know, you got to have the right angle when you're watching pool. And, you know, it doesn't matter how good the cameras are or how many you have. Being on the table is always, always telling the truth. Swish. There's the match. Great match by both players. It was a good match for Jeremy to come back and make it a match. Being down 5-1. Chad just played so well. Oh, you know. man. My brother-in-law just commented saying I'm sounding tired. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's time I get rolling. <laughs> it's getting a little late, you know. I think yeah, I, what is I it? still got a couple. It's 11.25. 11.25. Yeah, we're going to go see uh, what time we're rolling to and be back here in a little bit, let you guys know. Um, we're staying up as late as we can, bringing you as much pool as we can. First day of WSPA, so hang out with us. Uh, we'll be back here in a little bit, take a little bit of a break. Um, see you all in a bit. Yes. All right, guys, so our next match, I believe we got Mason Cook. I uh, don't know who his opponent is. Uh, I think he's still waiting on an opponent, but I believe they will be coming to the table next. I can uh, check CompuSport here real quick and see. I'm going to update this real quick. Uh, looks like it's updated. So we got Mason waiting on the winner of Carl Z and Taylor W. Um, so that match should be going here shortly. So just stick with us, and we'll be back in a few.
All right, folks, we got Mason at the table, uh, just waiting on his opponent, who I think is just finishing up a match. Uh, so TBD um, should be anytime soon. And uh, we'll be back with some more good pool. Masters 10 ball. So appreciate everybody sticking with us, staying up late. And uh, we'll be back here in a few minutes.
Oh, man. He hit that ball terrible. Every ball is a rail.
All right, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm back. All right, check it out. Uh, we do got to take a little intermission. We're going to have to shut down the stream for just a few minutes, and we're going to restart it. Uh, and we are going to be bringing you one more Masters match, 10 ball. Uh, Mason is waiting on an opponent. Um, so the current race he's waiting on is tied 5-5. Five, five. Uh, and I can let you know really quick uh, who he's going to be playing the winner of Carl Z or Taylor W. Um, they're currently tied five apiece. They're racing to eight. Um, so we're going to shut the stream down here for just a few minutes. We're going to reboot it and we'll be right back. So please feel free, hop right back on and uh, we'll see you all in a few minutes. Thanks guys. <laughs> 